three, two, one. Hey! And she What's gave, going on? She gave me an A. Greetings. Hi. Derek is regaling us of a story of how he danced for an A. Yes. He really wanted to finish that story. I Holy shit. Well, you could have waited 30 <laughs> seconds for me to say the last sentence of the story, and now here we are. Hello. Everyone's going to want to know how I got that A. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Work hard for your grades, people. That's the point of that story. If you know what I mean. What's Welcome going on? to the jungle. We're doing something a little different today. That's true. Who wants to, you know what, I feel Thank like- Thank you to all of our channel members. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We're, We're here on channel YouTube. Channel members. We're here on YouTube. If you are just joining us and all uh, you know is Chukles Chukles. Well, now you're Sorry. gonna know. Now you're gonna know. <laughs> this is Warham Ookles, Warham Ookles. Warham Ookles. Chukles, old, old war. Oh, war all right, ago. so before we do any kind of announcements or thanking or anything like that, let's set the scene a little bit here, because we have two absolute, complete, utter noobs and two experts at the table. So why don't the two experts who happen to look identically to each other... utter noob. We're, uh, we're, for all intents and purposes, you and I are utter noobs. It's pronounced intensive purposes. Intensive purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Why don't you, the experts explain a little about what we're doing. I'll do some semblance of announcements and then we'll get into it. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about it. And, and, then, and then Derek and I can qualify our experience, but we'll consider us complete noobs. Yes. So uh, Richie and I got into Warhammer Fantasy when we were teenagers. And just like D&D, &D, our teenage brains, were, and us being the nerdiest kids that we knew, we never had anyone to teach us. So our peanut brains cannot wrap uh, our heads around it. Uh, they have just bought, brought uh, Warhammer Fantasy back with Warhammer The Old World. Uh, and there's some fun stuff potentially on the horizon that we may be doing. So, uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So we are going to be painting Warhammer the Old World armies. So last thing I'll say before we move on is that, uh, just as a note to fingers crossed about us potentially doing cool things, uh, when you make cool things your job, then you get to make other cool things also you your job. You do more cool things and more cool things. <laughs> so not it, only, it really is like a snowball Not effect. only do we play D&D professionally, hopefully soon maybe we can play Warhammer professionally as well as extra content. Uh, but stay tuned for that. Apparently both of these were made in the UK. <laughs> I don't know what that means. The yes, uk? they're producing the, it's actually a big problem that they oh. only produce things in the UK. It actually says they yucca. Can't, they can't keep up with demand. <laughs> oh, it says yucca. yucca. Wow. Like, the, like plantains, yucca. Anyway. So, we're going to be building and painting uh, Warhammer miniatures. Um, we're going to really dive into the the difference between Age of Sigmar and Old World and all that shit. Because, like, I was fascinated to learn all this. I didn't know all about it. Um, but basically, Derek and I are here to learn and basically shake the rust off. Derek and I are not complete, like, sh you know, newcomers to the idea of miniature wargaming. But I haven't touched a Warhammer 40p, 40k piece since I was probably... Uh, 10? I mean, it's been that long. Oh, wow. So you were doing Warhammer earlier than we were. I was, I, I so was, that was extremely the young. Yeah. My brother was probably six. Wow. Right? My, my brother couldn't really do it. My dad and him shared the Eldar army and they built it together while I kind of was able to do my own thing with the Space Marines and my dad kind of oversaw it. So hey, we're going to get into all that. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna do real quick announcements, please. Um, so that way we can we can. Keep uh, there are lots of first time chatters, so Hello, welcome. First time chatters, welcome. And we have channel members in chat. <laughs> yes. Channel Thank members. You. For being channel members. You you make it happen, channel members. Gotta give it up for channel members. <laughs> Gotta give it up for the Honk Legion. <laughs> Why do I feel like channel members is the Pee Wee Herman like special <laughs> word of the, like, <laughs> like, like the way you specifically say channel members? I feel like something's gonna happen every time channel you say channel members. Okay. We're Legends of Avantress, and as always, this is a mature stream, what? especially when we start saying things like, oh fuck, my miniature broke, why isn't this fucking working, Pee -pee. and we get frustrated. Poo -poo. Um, but, yeah. Poo if you'd like to support the stream, there's a couple different ways you can do that. We've got a merch shop that features all of your favorite campaigns and characters and a bunch of really great and awesome items. We have Crooked Moon merch. We've got new Avantress logo merch. Oh, you, yeah. you can't get the old Avantress logo anywhere anymore. Those have now become collector's items. In fact, at MAGFest, uh, we signed an old Legend of Avantress logo hat. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah so that was very fun. It was collectors. a sick fucking hat, actually. Now it's a collector's item. Oh, yeah, and it also, yeah. Shit, actually. Uh, yeah, she, she had modded it to have like six spikes and shit. Was, I saw that. It was that. fucking awesome. It was really cool. Um, so, Blackwings, if How you're there, it's good to see you. You can buy a hat on our merch shop. 
Um, you have to speci- he, for you. You have <laughs> you, to buy it. You have to buy the hat. And for you, for you, it costs one hundred and twenty. Um, yeah, we also have twenty dollars for you. We also have a Patreon, uh, which is one of the absolute best ways to support us because you get a lot of really awesome stuff in return. We just recently revamped all of our Patreon tiers, so make sure you actually go check out the tiers and see what we're offering entirely. Look it up. But uh, we have revamped Neon Knights into the Gold Monkey Plus talk show uh, that we're going to be doing once a month, and uh, have you know various different topics that we do right here in the studio and answer all of your questions, and and it'll be very thought provoking and, and really awesome. Uh, we've got a brand new campaign that is Patreon exclusive Oh my only. gosh. It is called Shroud Over Salt Marsh. You have to be a Pearl Dolphin to your patron or higher to watch it. You got um, it. Part one and part two of our introduction to Salt Marsh is going to be on YouTube. Uh, so if you missed the initial, um, you know, Patreon streams, you'll be able to enjoy the introduction to the uh, to the Salt Marsh campaign. But then from that point forward, you will only ever be able to watch it on Patreon. So you got to become a patron to check that out. Then at the uh, the Scarab uh, Plus tiers, you'll be able to enjoy the monthly studio hangout mm-hmm. and the brand new movie night, uh, which is actually going to be this Friday. I'm very excited to, to, to do that. There's so much fucking content. And yeah. for all of the salty, salty Marsharinos... Let us know what you thought. <laughs> Tell everyone else in chat how the People first are already two sessions chilling. are. It's, it's amazing. Tell everyone in chat how how you like the first two episodes, yeah. the first two chapters of Goats of Salt Marsh. <coughs> yeah. Salty Marshio, bro. So I mean Stroud over Salt Marsh. Make sure you go check that awesome uh, the awesome reward tiers and all that good stuff. For the important dates, like I just previously mentioned, the Diamond Scarab plus movie night is gonna be at 7 30 p.m. Eastern time on January 26th. That's this Friday. We're watching Muppet Treasure Island, so make sure you figure out a way to source that movie. Uh, if you have Disney Plus, you'll be able to watch it right through there, but uh, there are other ways to rent it as well. Uh, the Diamond Scarab Plus Studio Hangout will be at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on January 28th. That is a Sunday. Uh, and then the Golden Monkey Plus Talk Show is at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time on January 30th. The topic is going to be all things Shroud over Salt Marsh character creation. Uh, we did not make any workshop videos like we did a la Once Upon a Witch Light for those characters, and we've been getting lots of comments about it, so we're going to do a talk show topic entirely surrounding that. So there is a post on Patreon where you can go ask us questions about the character creation process specifically for Salt Marsh characters. Go put your questions on that post. We're going to be answering as many of them as we possibly can during the talk show. Um, <coughs> and then, of course... We have our awesome, lovely list of patrons uh, that I read every single... We love you, patrons. Every single stream, and I don't know along, if I have the strength to do it. Along with our channel members. I'm struggling at the moment. Give me a moment. Hold on. <coughs> you, so... Do you want me to read it? If you're feeling up to it. I could read it. Yeah, well, here, let me just... I don't know how to read it. No, it's I'll very try. easy here. It's just the Diamond Scarabs. No, I, I'm sorry. It's the Sapphire Eagles. Sapphire Eagles. Let's go. Sapphire Eagles. Alex. Alex, thank you. <laughs> Anna Medev. Thank you. Anthony S. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Cedar, thank Clap you. Cloud, Corey oh M. God, Cosmo Gyral, you. Daughter of Eve, uh, David H. Thank Gale you. B. Ghost Girl Weeb. Home thank Blue you. Hound, Intergalactic Gypsy. Planetary, Planetary James Intergalactic. K, thank you. Caitlin, Catherine C. Thank Terry you. K. Christina thank A. You. Lady Alexandrana. Thank you. Lily R. Logan C. Nitty Cat. Thank Nick you. Del Tufo. Thank you. Del Tufo. Raze. Sarah B. Sater. Cilia a Skittles, Thank you. Snuggy, Solaris, Thank you. Stardust, Stacy P, Thank Teacups you. and Honey, Tegan Tibbets, Thank Tony you. the Tigger, Tyler C, Wishy Wassy, XX Oberon Thank XX, you. Xander one seven seven six you. exclamation point. Awesome. Thank you. Those Thank are all you. of our Eagles. Emerald Lions assemble. Oh, Emerald Lions. Oh, AJB. Oh, Thank Blaze. you. Creeper of Mind. Thank you. Ellipsa. Carly Thank T. You. McLovin twelve fifteen. Thank you. Ruby's Horde. Thank you. And at the Almighty Ruby Dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah. Milo is tired. Thank you. HD Varus thank Knox. you. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you. And thank you, Derek, so for reading those out for me. Much. <laughs> thank you. We thank you, patrons. You are amazing. We love every one of you. Yes. Uh, and and uh, also, if you'd like to further support the stream outside of those things, you can su- you can sub right here on Twitch, or you can become a channel member, become one with the Honk Legion on YouTube. And uh, we'll thank you. Channel personally. members, thank you. Channel members, you of the make Humble it Legion. happen. Someone channel. just became a channel member. Channel members, thank, thank you. you. 
Choo Choo Cat. Choo Choo Cat. Choo Choo Cat. Choo Choo Cat, cat became a join the Honk Legion. I Choo Choo Cat you. Um, and then make sure you join our Discord. It's where we always hang out between streams. We're always meeting and dreaming over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for all of our socials like YouTube, TikTok, podcast, etc., go to Strodcast.com. That's Strodcast.com. Strodcast. Oh, I'm actually going to plug in my phone while I'm doing this too because Please it's do. dying. Um, and then sick. for our upcoming schedule, we've got uh, Shroud over Salt March on January 29th Let's at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's Again, go. Let's go. only for patrons. So if you want to enjoy that, you're going to have yes. to become a patron of the there gold off the tier or higher. Chapter 3 and onward will only ever be patron only. Yeah. Um, then we've got uh, Once Turtle Upon Hunter. a Witch Light on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, oh, yeah. We'll be back with that next Wednesday after we do our mini painting stream tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, then the next episode of Icebound will be on Friday, uh, February 2nd Coming at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's go! And then we've got Stardust Rhapsody on February 17th at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It's I a Saturday. Know. We're going to be playing all day. I may have violent... Uh, Illnesses that day. Why is that? No, you won't. I may get a no. curse of the weed. Are you no, get you're the not. Oh, you are Katsukan. You are not. We're get gonna the be. Fuck out of here. We are gonna be. Well, I will be. I won't speak for anybody else. I'm, I'm sure. Kidding. I'm sure. I'm Rich kidding. and Mikey are gonna I'm try kidding. to do it as well. Uh, we're gonna try to make a day trip to Katsukan at the very day least yeah. uh, on the 16th, which is Friday, the day before we play uh, Stardust Rhapsody. So hang, hang tuned for tight for that. If you're gonna be at Katsu, ping us. Send us a message. It'll be a good time. Uh, for special announcements, if you missed the Kickstarter campaign, you can find us at thecrookedmoon.com. Uh, it is technically, we'll redirect you directly to our backer kit store, uh, where you can still lock in Kickstarter level prices, uh, mm -hmm. because come February 1st, prices are going up. That's right. Uh, we we just can't keep fire sale on this stuff. They are going you know, up. Prices are going up. We've been talking about it since Especially we launched the campaign. Especially on the miniatures, because yeah. we have some amazing stuff in the works, and they keep getting upgraded. <laughs> so what can I say? Uh, yeah, so uh, oh. lock in your Kickstarter uh, level prices right now on, at thecrookedmoon.com because February 1st they're going up. Unless you can uh, beat the piss challenge. <laughs> then you can get a Kickstarter challenge. Uh, what the stop, fuck? Stop. You, you just pee straight up, and if you don't get wet, if you pee straight up, then you get Kickstarter prices. That's I, the piss challenge. My no, it's the chicken nugget challenge. Why? why? There is no why? piss challenge. My parents watch this stream. <laughs> there is no piss challenge. What the fuck is wrong with you? Heard you heard it wrong. I'm so How sorry, Mom and Dad. Uh, I am so sorry. Isaac Telesco, as soon as they heard <laughs> this, guess, they your, became all dad's channel just like, I'm getting those Kickstarter prices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry if you're watching this, Dad. I'm sorry, Father. Anyway. I uh, think I can do it. My son does this for a living. Uh, actually, he told me today he uh, met with an old classmate of his. Um, oh. And they were having conversations. And uh, my dad's old classmates, one of his sons, is into Dungeons and Dragons. And when my father mentioned uh, Legends, the son said, I know who they are. No. So my dad likes to brag. That's bad. So, Let's yeah. fucking go. Anyway, Let's um, fucking that's pretty go. funny. Uh, expect the return of Beneath Dark Wings on April 20th, 420 Blaze It. It'll be monthly. Yeah. And there's about four episodes left, and then it's over forever, so don't miss it. It'll be over for fucking ever. That's right. Forever. We'll have, we'll have another campaign closed in the books. Yep. Then we're also going to be at GaryCon this year. It's in Gary Lake, Con! Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, this year, the con is going to be a huge event for the 50th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons. It's two weekends long. The first weekend is from Friday the 15th until Monday the 18th for Founders and Legends weekend. And then actual GaryCon is from Thursday the 21st until Sunday the 24th of March. We're hosting and participating in a bunch of awesome events while we celebrate a historic moment in the game that we all love. Uh, what that means is that we're going to be sitting in on a couple panels and talking. There's going to be some happy hours, some parties that we're going to be at where you can meet us and talk to us about the Crooked Moon and things like that. But we're also going to be running games. You can sign up for games that Derek and Mikey will be DMing and that Rich and I will be playing in. Right. There's also a chance that you sign up for something that we also just happen to sign up for. And yeah. you may sit down at a table to play some Wuffrup, and I might be there because I love Wuffrup. <laughs> I won't stop talking about it. Rich I, is sick of hearing me talk about it. I don't think they actually have Wuffrup there. Then I'm going to run no, Wuffrup. Of course they do. I'm going to run yeah, a pickup really. game of Wuffrup. Anyway. I'm going to bring Albert Westerman, and I'm going to collect so many taxes. I actually want Rich to run another Wuffrup game. That was he, fun. Richie GM. It was amazing. I did. Warhammer I Fantasy Roleplay. I've play. never DM'd, but I've GM'd You've now. never DM'd, yeah. but you have GM'd it now. It was so... I cannot... 
overstate how fucking good it was. It was so much fun. It was three in the morning at my, and we were in my kitchen, like a true <laughs> yeah, gamer true home game. game, howling with laughter. It was amazing. I accidentally killed an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> an Italian parkour. <laughs> yeah. Hey, parkour. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. I killed no. an Italian. Anyway. Right. Um, so then, we, last thing we have to announce for special announcements is um, Gary Con likes to do a lot of really awesome events as they uh, ro lead up to Gary Con. It's called the Road to Gary Con. It's going to start fe uh, with a, a charity stream for St. Jude's that features us. St. Jude's. We're going to be streaming on February 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. It's a hardcore challenging adventure. Uh, it's for a good cause and to hype up the convention. So uh, we'll make sure we get you the channel that that's going to be on. It might be on the Gary Con channel. I'll find oh, out. Oh, shit. I believe it is. Because we're going to Gary Con, I should play Sarnax. Oh, Garrix. For Garrix. Yeah. You definitely should. I should, for Garrix. Um, I still have to figure out my characters. Uh, I'm gonna, I think we're going to have to double up, but I think what I'll do is like pick... Let's all play clerics. So I was going to pick a cleric. Let's do it. As one of my characters. I've never played one on stream before. Let's be like traveling. Let's do a brotherhood without banners. Uh, cleric. Oh. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Can it. Can I still worship Clangan and Silverbeard? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm in. We, we can all worship gods. different gods. Yeah. Just to destroy the crown. My name is Derek. <laughs> And I'm a cleric. <laughs> I'm gonna contact Gary Con and ask them to uninvite you. Yeah. Can we get him off the website? I'm Derek the cleric. Derek the cleric. That's actually hilarious. Um, I'm even Derek the cleric. That's pretty funny. The God I worship's name is Derek. Are there any other special announcements? Uh, and then, and then we might have to thank some more people. Um, any other special announcements? How have we never done that? Before? I don't know. It just <laughs> it's like came up more We never rhymed Derek with never, cleric. Never mind. I <laughs> don't take this long. How the fuck have we never said Derek the cleric? It writes itself. <laughs> oh, it really does. Six and a half oh. years? Uh, also, we're not doing Patreon questions tonight. I did not make a Patreon question post. We will do our best to just keep an eye on things in chat. Uh, you can do, I don't know, panel, uh, point redemption. Uh, Might be a good way to oh, do it. Oh, uh, mods, can you turn that on? Is that something you can do, mods? Yeah, if you guys can't turn that on, let us know. Let us know. Uh, we'll super it. chats is probably the best way to ask us a question. It's very easy for us to sort of Yes. Uh, Nick Del Tufo. I'm and shouting this one out because I know that he's one of our, he's one of the names that I oh, yeah. every, every fucking week. Every week. Uh, he said, or they said, uh, Wait, what's WFRA, or however it's spelled? What what we are saying is WUFRUP, and what that is is the short phonetic uh, uh, acronym of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Uh, WUFRUP is how they actually in the rule book they tell you that it's pronounced WUFRUP. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's um, nice. it's, so we ass. we have been uh, very much into Warhammer uh, forever, and we'll talk more about the history. But mm, obviously, very recently, yeah. we're getting into Warhammer. We're, we enjoy. Tactical games, painting, all that good stuff. So, <laughs> there is the a war. Us they're saying no, they can't turn that off. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll get to it. Yeah. Anyway, um, then uh, we decided we wanted to learn the Warhammer Fantasy role playing system, uh, which is a 2D10 system, and it is crunchy as hell, but it is clean and elegant and fucking awesome. And so, basically, in a 24 hour period between the four of us, we read the entire rule book. We sat down. We rolled characters. I have the audio for that. We gotta, I gotta clean it up a little bit. But we want to make it a Patreon uh, exclusive content where we share the audio podcast style of us rolling our, our Wuffrup characters. And then Richie uh, ran a one shot adventure for us. And we didn't start until like twelve in the morning. Yeah. Uh, like at midnight, we got started, and uh, it was the most fun. It is. It is gritty. It is dark. Yep. It is deadly. It is a deadly, yeah, I got deadly hit in the thigh by a fucking uh, by a, crowbar, and yeah, it like, right. nearly killed well, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah think about it. Think, well, yeah, think about like think about if you actually got hit in the in the thigh, like full on force with a, with a the iron bar, right? It would break your leg. Yeah. It would it would fuck up the muscles. Yeah. You know, you'd pr if if something goes wrong, you're bleeding out, right? Yeah. Like yep. in, in the worst case scenario. So like, it was very realistic. It was very down to earth. It was very um, common, and I mean that. We were not playing these epic fantasy heroes, which, yeah. which was an awesome change of pace for us. <gasps> and, Better roll for blood clots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I for was a bailiff. And so literally my, the level that I was for my job was tax collector. Yep. I was just literally a tax collector who I don't think I had a weapon. I guess I had a hand weapon. You had, you had a sword. I had, I had, I had a sword. That a I had dagger. Sword. Yeah. Something. I trained with the master at arms. That's right. Castle. So That's right. I was, I was a base born child of some lord. I made up a whole backstory for Albert Weston. <laughs> he's, 
he's he's gone through the process in my opinion. He's ready to ship. Yeah, yeah, he really is. Derek Mom, was like Carl. a paid thug. Yeah, I was yeah. just a paid thug. Just, just uh, and Andy yeah. was like a I was a hedge witch, an Eastern European a medicine man hedge witch. I was like a witch of the woods. That's what I wanted. I know. I, I'm glad I didn't get it. No, I didn't have to read the spellcasting. It was rules. The spell shit. casting was very was a little too com like that was a little too much crunch for us trying to get it all in in one day for day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Uh, anyway. So why don't we talk a little bit more about what we're doing here? Uh, Derek and I have played a little bit of 40k in our Warhammer 40k in our in our past so lives, um, but we haven't done anything like this in a very long time. So I'm gonna unbox my. Uh, I'll talk for a little bit. Yeah, you talk. That Thank sound? you. That sounds good. Um, so for those that are brand new and have no idea what the fuck Warhammer even is, uh, Warhammer is a tabletop war game. It's not a role playing game. It's a war game, and what that is, is uh, to give a little bit of history, um, for many, many, many decades, um, a sort of old and proper hobby for aged gentlemen, particularly in England, was to play Napoleonic war games with little soldiers in the Napoleonic era, and you could play the French, or the Austrians, or the Russians, or the Italians, or, or, the Italians, or whoever else. And uh, you would join a club, a gaming club. And the gaming club was responsible for basically inventing rules for how these games work. Is it kind of like playing Axes and Allies? Kind of, and I don't even know if they use dice or not. Like frankly, I don't know a ton about it, but I do know that the clubs sort of each maintain their own rule sets and they would print it out for the members and they would all sort of, you know, they would, they would balance it and evolve the game. Uh, they had printers? What's that? They had printers? No, they would go, they yeah. would hire printers. It's called oh, Gutenberg, wow. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so back in the 70s, there was a small company called Games Workshop. And they were the UK distributors of Dungeons and Dragons. That's right. Uh, their job was basically Shit, to take, bad. to buy D&D from Gary Gygax here in the US and then sell it in the UK. Um, then they started selling uh, Citadel, or sorry, not Citadel, Chainmail Miniatures, which was the D and D kind of war game. Yeah, and they found that the miniatures sold way fucking better than the books, and so they're like, "Fuck, let's invent our own miniature game, so that we can just sell lots of miniatures." <laughs> uh, and Warhammer was born. Uh, it was a fantasy-based game, heavily inspired by Tolkien. Um, that was basically their take on the Napoleonic war games of the time. Damn. Um, but and with fantasy tropes. With lots of fantasy tropes. Uh, about 10, 15 years later, 40K came out after Starship Troopers, um, which was the primary influence and inspiration for that game. Timelines or the movie? The movie. Really? It was apparently the hottest movie for like boys ages like seven Starship to 12. Starship Troopers? I mean, that makes sense. Starship Troopers. Uh, you no got some way. Denise Richards up in there. Yeah. Business. And so anyway, they're like, "Fuck, we're gonna capitalize on this. Let's make a skirmish version, which is lighter, fewer models, that's sci-fi themed, heavily. Basically, let's sort of take Dune and Starship Troopers and a few other inspirations. Let's make our own fucking uh, sci-fi game." Um, and and it exploded, and it got super popular, and it it totally uh, outsold Warhammer Fantasy after like a decade. Um, to, that's the one that I started with. Yes, that's the one that most people started with. It was the more popular one, it was the main one. And I'm not gonna get into all the legal battles with Warhammer Fantasy, but in 2015 they killed it, they blew up the world. It would be like if, if Tolkien said Middle Earth exploded, and it was canon. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Th and that <laughs> is literally what happened with Warhammer Fantasy. They blew up the world so that they could invent this whole crazy high fantasy new uh, fantasy war game called Age of Sigmar. That's been going on for the last uh, almost 10 years That's now. That's why my box is Age of Sigmar on them, yes. if you've noticed. But uh, on Saturday, they finally released Warhammer the Old World which is basically a re-release of the old Warhammer fantasy game that Mike and I were dabbling in when we were growing up. Um, they looked at all the past editions, there were eight editions total. They found all the best bits and they designed a very amazing, elegant rule system. 
And so we are building models and armies. We're not gonna put them on circle, circular bases or ovular bases. These fuckers are going on square oh, bases. Oh, so I can't use the base that's no, in here. No, Thank do you for not reminding yet, me. Do not, yeah, well, what am I supposed to do with these? Just give them to me. Throw no, them away. No, 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 give them to I'm me. Throw them into the no, ocean. I'm actually, put legs on no, them. No. I'm gonna turn them into pizza bones. Un un unironically, can I keep them? <laughs> yeah, please. I, I was gonna use I don't need them. Um, the, I, I never got to make what I wanted to make. Okay, uh, yeah, please. So I guess I'm just gonna say it right now. Yeah. When, when we were originally gonna have 3D spaceship combat, I bought all the stuff to make uh, uh, Stardust yeah, flight yeah, yeah, mini yeah. stands. Yeah. And I didn't buy big enough bases, it's so I think be, these might be better. Be home world style. Anyway, it's continue. Game, home world. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Nice summary, Rich. This is going well. We thank you. <laughs> thanks, Mike. Uh, <laughs> You're doing great. That's right, Rich. Wow, you Mike. More I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Shit. Um. So, if you're familiar with Warhammer Fantasy, uh, you'll recognize all the factions that the four of us are building today. Um, and we should mention that even though it says mini painting, we're not, we're not doing any painting tonight. Yeah, probably not. Because mini building is just as big a part of the hobby. You gotta fucking put the damn things together. So that's yeah. what we're doing tonight. And so it uses similar principles, which correct me if I'm wrong, to the gunpla hobby. Very similar. Which is the mecha hobby Gundam. Gunpla is like a portmanteau, isn't it? Like a combination yes. of words. Gun, Gundam, Gundam play, plastic is play probably plastic. what I imagine. Gundam play, maybe. Gundam Gundam play. Play. Uh, but Gundam, awesome. Zoids, Robotech. Shit, I need to get a other, Zoid. Other mecha. And, you know, obviously all of that shit snaps together and it's all colored plastic. Uh, and they got like stickers and shit. But, like, if you're a real one, you fucking build it and you, you know. You get rid of all the seams. You, get rid of all the seams. you paint it. Paint are it all up. numbered, and I'll bet you they correspond to the manual. They do. Wow, dude. The one that I have is Old Sprues. It's numbered for her pleasure. From Warhammer fans. <laughs> That's <laughs> old <laughs> Old Sprues. I need. Sounds like old winter splinter. I, I want to make some sprue goo. Oh, one. Sprue. I got a big old bottle of sprue goo here. Anyone want some sprue goo? Sprue goo. Um, and it's one of those things is where like I got really excited when I first mentioned Big Zam, and I'm like, oh my god, people. And it was like, oh yeah, Big Zam, Big Zam. But people fucking remember. That shit, and like I mentioned, like uh, Gundam Battle Assault 2, one of the greatest fighting games ever, in my opinion. Um, and Big Zam was it was a joke character. And apparently, the gr the Game Grumps did a video on it, and that's why everyone knows Big Zam and Gundam Battle Assault. But that's funny. It wasn't because that they searched every single GameStop in the area for for days. Oh man. Uh, to find one that carried it. Okay, I found 38. And played it. I had no idea. All right, so. I have my Soul Blight Grave Lords. So we should we should take a step back and kind of go over yeah, please do. what we're doing. I'm so lost. we all have sprues <laughs> of miniatures. Yeah, we should help Andy and Derek. Yes, that's, that's, Derek's the, next, that's the next step. That's the next step. Um I am playing the Dwarfen Mountain Holds, to no one's surprise. Mike yeah. is playing the Beastmen Bray Herds. Derek is building Warriors of Chaos. To and no one's surprise. Andy, although this says Soul Blight Grave Lords. Yes. He is using Age of Sigmar models for a Vampire Counts army. Boom. I love vampires, um, you know me. Boo! But can I I'm hoping, I'm yes. hoping to be able to switch to Kislev. Yes, so we know that we know well, that, we're that, all that play multiple facts. That Kislev's coming out uh probably in the next year. That would have been my first pick. But yes. you know, I'm I'm never gonna be disappointed with vampires. Uh, vampires aren't technically a supported faction, but if you look at the rules of all of the non-supported factions, they're, they're really, nice. really fucking good they're rules. really fucking good. So they totally designed the game planning on yeah. releasing everybody, and then some corporate suit said, some, no, pull it back. Yeah, there's, an, back. there's a bunch of internal politics. Yeah, we don't have to they, get into that. Yeah, we won't get into that. We don't want but. people to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Why would we want that? <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, Happiness is a sham. It really is a sham. All right, I cut out 30. Um, so. Ooh. Uh, Andy has a uh, vampire lord uh, yes. stand in. Her, her name is Ivia Volga, the outcast. Uh, that looks pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, she's got she a big fuzzy like hat. A bad bitch. She's, she's got, got bats. She's got bats. She's got a fuzzy hat. And so we'll be answering questions. We'll be taking questions in chat. The best way to, to get your questions answered is via a super chat. We're going to be going through the general miniature process. Um, That's why I'm waiting. Yes, I've yeah. So okay. I've unboxed, but I haven't done anything because I I've been watching Mikey sit there and carve away and chip away, and I'm so like I'm fascinated. I'm right. So alone. what I would do, I would recommend 
putting this aside. Oh, okay. And starting and with dire wolf, one direwolf. Dire oh, minutes. you okay? Well, I was gonna. I figured this oh, yeah. would be the better like one to start with. But if it's more complicated, well, because I'll she's do kind of she's fiddly and detailed. Yeah, well, starting, I didn't realize this was gonna be so fucking. I'm gonna right. get my miniature legs, and then I'm gonna do the the big bad one. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So then, let me just tuck also, this away in here. Uh, I have my. Uh, I have chaos my chosen. Chaos Chosen, they're uh, vassals to darkness. Very classical, very classic. And an very exalted classical. hero of chaos whose name is Jeff. Variant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. I don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff the Chaos Warrior. The, chaos the exalted hero Jeff. Good old Jeff Darkness. Mr. Darkness was my father's name. <laughs> <laughs> that business is so important. Um, we got some folks to thank. We got Cedar Raven is a member. Maya Temeki is a you. member. Channel Isaac Tomasco is a Isaac. member. Choo -choo thank Jeff. you. Thank you all of our channel members and everyone else that supports us. I got a uh, bunch of good undead doggos here. So right. Super Chat is done via YouTube. They Whoa. got rid of Hype Chats? No, no, no. That's oh! The Twitch, the, 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 Twitch, the Twitch version, I no. think, is, is gone. Oh, they, oh, they axed it entirely. Thank you, Anonymous Thank Victor. you. Holy shit. Oh my god, this is a Okay, so instead of that, just Holy if fuck. you donate bits, you, I think we can see your question here, maybe. I think so. Yes, you can you can type a message along with your bit donation. I'm just gonna sure. go turn on the freaking channel point thing, because that just makes it easy. One moment. <gasps> channel points are forthcoming. Um, this I is a walkthrough of how to handle each piece as it yes. comes off. Dude, that's what I'm yes. saying. Look at this shit. Class. So, I, 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 I used the god hand to chip out my piece number 38. Oh, you there fool. Are still, there are still You've already some, fucked some up. Shim shambles here. You fucked up? Yes. Just a minute. And there's shim shambles. <laughs> I, I, I could go deeper and I could use this. So, or I could use this, or oh I could god. use this. Either one is of acceptable money. Oh. Um, and so basically, the, the, we have you invest in your clippers, folks. Clippers are really important to get right. So what Derek has are, are very sharp, brand new, flat, brand new flat edge. So what you want to do is you can get it as close as you can. Oh, because you can literally just lay it, go it right down to the yeah, model and right snip there. it off. That's right there. Um, there may still be a little bit, and that's when the hobby knife comes in. Some people will call them exacto knives. Ooh, okay, and now or, I want a place for my garbage. So the first step. Oh, just look into your manual. Uh, hold on, I'm, all right, I'm gonna on. move my. I'm gonna While move we my do box. that, Yami Nozomi and Valentina thank Calgado you uh, for being channel members. Thank you. Yami Nozomi says, "Not a question. I want to say thank you for being on YouTube, so I can watch it work. Okay. I love YouTube." Um, we got Ash Assassin gave out a sub on Twitch. Thank you. Uh, thank Nightly you. Woe with some bits. Dread Queen Cinnamon Roll gifted a sub. I'm thank gonna you. build. This dire wolf first, because he's the first number one, yeah, and he's doing a sweet little ah yeah. Okay, yes. perfect. So you, in your little manual, find the model you want to build. Alpha, if I had to guess, I, I know, know that we're showing rules. off the rule book, but I need to like, I need a little. No, no, bit no of space please. Here. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, I'd like to show. Actually, can we get it showing your yeah. like station? So Absolutely. Like, just move the camera just a little. So closer. let me uh, let me put this over yeah, here. Yeah, perfect. That's safe down there. So if you, yeah, Rich, if you're gonna give the the breakdown on the best steps to take, I would use I would do it on mine, but my hands covered in various wounds from Fight Club. <laughs> wounds. People are gonna see my horrific and then leprosy just hands. Tilt it. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. That's good. How do, uh, how's this look, guys? You see everything? Maybe a little more table yeah, so can, that we can. Yeah. Feel free to move it wherever you want. Hold on. There we go. Let's do that. I All right. Think. Um, okay. So, every one of these boxes comes with a little instruction manual. This is mine for my dwarves. Uh, and so what I oh, do is okay. I like to pick a single model. A lot of people do this in batches. Oh, I'm, I, I'm, a I'm not advanced I'm enough a, for that. I'm a no, I, I think I like single model here. Um, and so he's going to be on this one because this is yes. all high numbers. So you'll see here. Oh, well, let me switch over to this to the battle thing. Uh, you'll see here. It's like one. That these little pieces are one, different two, pieces three, on the four, sprue. Five. And you'll see one and two is the first step. Oh, so shit. you want on your sprue, you want to find one and two. Oh wait, maybe I'm wrong. Mine started with thirty-eight. That's what I'm saying. There's oh wait wait there's a three. I found a three. Eight. I'm getting closer. So. No, they're not in any order. Yeah, there's no like particular. Okay, order. I, I might be wrong. This might be where one and two is then. Uh, flip me yeah, flip over. I forgot how fun this is. It's like five. It's like you know, Lego. Five. For those of you who enjoyed Legos or oh, one. There we go. There we go. So here's Rogue number one. Lincoln Lock, so take Rogue your clippers Lock, or other building. Lego things. Bionicle. Bionicle. The Deep Lore. 
the deep lore of Wyoming. And, and so like all the sprue connection points, you get it pretty close. Chip away. And you snap him out. So you want to obviously not, don't cut into the, to the model. Cut as close as you can without it being like super, super, super close. Mm. Because you can sometimes like chip, like cut into the model. Okay. Um, yes. And I then you just have to pretend I'll, like they got hit by like a. Yeah, it's uh, fine. An and again, axe. you can cut pretty damn flush, and I haven't had any and problems. And you can fix any problem. Yeah, that's true. Um, to welcome to all of our channel members. Thank you. We got a $5, $5 super, super chat, chat, which I'm not sure we'll be able to help you. Uh, actually, I, you know, I can't answer this. Which faction do you all think is better, Dark Angels or Space Wolves? Dark Angels. That's I bad. don't know anything about 40k, the game. Well, I know some things. But I'm we're playing Warhammer Fantasy. I always really enjoyed the um, aesthetics of the Dark Angels. Reed would love that. They're all green. Do you know why they're green? I don't know why they're green. This is a fun story. So when they were releasing the army, the Dark Angels, they wore black armor because they're the Dark Angels, right? Yeah, pretty sick. When they got, Recently. when they did the print run for the army book or the codex, something fucked up at the printer and oh, whatever no. black they used turned out green. It's like Spice no. Beagle's hair. And so they just, <laughs> yeah, they're just like, well, fine, it's fine, it's fine, just release it, sell it, they're green now. So they just let it run. They're green now. Uh, and they're green, they're green now. now. So I can just smooth these out now? Like, these so, little, okay, I got perfect. my piece. So, if you, if I could demonstrate. Please, yeah, please. So, what you have here like now. Space Wolves. I love Space Wolves. I if you like, they're, if they're, you like they're, Viking they're, Space Wolves. Uh, they're, they're very beautiful and cute. So this is... They're green now. That is one half. So this is one piece. So you'll see, I don't know if you can see the it The one really piece well. is real. If you can show off like the little bits yeah. where it's attached. Yeah, I get close. So... It should autofocus, maybe not. The one piece is the friends we made along the way. Get, get it like real fucking close. The one piece is real. There we go. So you see there's like a there's like a blip there. There's like a blip there at the, at the, the head of it. You can see a little blip on this guy's heel, right? Like there's a little blip I have to clean up. Just all the little contact points. Yep. So there's two ways to do this. Um, there's more than two ways. There's yes. a lot of more there's than two ways. To do it, but. but what I would recommend is you take a hobby knife, oh. an exacto blade, okay. and you take this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do it a flat, the flat edge scrapey, right? You basically, yeah, you, yeah. you don't want to like stab into it. You basically right, right. turn it angled and you just sort of very yeah. gently scrape against it until it's smooth. Okay. And then if you want to refine it, you can use one of these sanding sticks or an emery oh, yeah, board. Yeah, that. Um, and then the other thing you want to look for are mold lines. So it's not just these little bits you want to get, take care of. This is a really nicely cast piece, so I don't know if there's wow. any mold lines. No, those new dire wolves are fucking incredible, dude. I'll keep my eyes open Yeah, though. Keep, so I'll, I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'll say, if I think I find one, I can ask you. So see here on the top of the axe. See how there's the little bit, but you see mm -hmm. the tiny little Oh line? yeah, it's, it's like where it was like pushed together. Yeah, and so you can see it goes yeah. down the back of the axe. So you can clean those up. So I yeah, basically I scraped those off too. Okay. Um, yeah, let it rip. That's where the plastic seeps out of the mold. And so you just gotta trim Correct. it up. And newer models that Games Workshop has been doing every like year that goes by, they get better and better and better casts where you have to do less work. A uh, casual monster game says, what glues are you guys using? I prefer Tester's Blue for my Sisters of, Sisters of Battle. Mm. So, I wish we had gotten this question earlier today because I went to the hobby store where we normally get our uh, Tamiya Extra... Extra... Light? Extra Thin uh, Cement. Yes, Extra Thin Cement, and they were out. They so didn't have it. Recommend. I fucking love this shit. And so, I, can drink it. I knew we would need at least two bottles Don't from both sides it. of the table, so that. I Don't found a different brand don't called Mr. It. Hobby, which is similar. It's from Japan. Mr. Hobby sounds very friendly. Mr. The same. Hobby. And so I got two just to see. The yellow one works a little better, but the brush is really big. So on my little dwarves, it's kind of hard to to use appropriately. Oh. I'll but, immediately say that this feels like whittling in Boy Scouts. Yeah. When I'm like shaving this thing away here. Uh, I will absolutely buy a bottle of Tester's Blue. It's extremely and therapy. Try it out. Check out the Crooked Moon for the College of Whittles. Uh, Chloe, for, so for Gary Con, how do the events work? Is it ticket stuff like Gen Con? I want to sneak a spot into one of your games. Yeah, there you do have to sign yes. up. Yes, it, it is up. very, very similar to Gen Con. And in fact, the website that they use is the same website that a bunch of tabletop cons use for ticketing. And it was, in, I believe, inspired or directly ripped from Gen Con. 
Uh, I can say for certain that at our games we have spots for five players because the sixth player will be Rich or I. Yep. Um, and I'm running two different adventures. For yeah, both. I'm running one level three adventure and I'm running one level six adventure. Oh, that's very fun. fun. Just to hopefully corral some more beginners in the beginner zone and some folks who are want a little higher level play. Thank you, Tuna, for the gifted sub, or gifted membership, thank you. Uh, Lover's Rose Ceiling Chicken update. We, they're still up there, we got three. Uh, four. Four? Uh, if you count the one that is still on top of the um, fan. Uh, I, I do, I do count that one. So four. Um, yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know, thank you. Okay, uh, so Maldol, done, I, I want to thank you guys for being a source of joy for me this past month. I lost both my grandmothers in the oh. new year and LOA has been getting me through. Much love. As for a question, what is your favorite bird? Very sorry uh, about very your sorry. loss. Yeah, very um, sorry to hear that. Really hard. Favorite bird? The peregrine falcon. The, gr the great horned owl has always been my obsession as a child, as my special topic. I was very much in owls, particularly the great horned owl. I still uh, want to get into falconry. Toucan uh, is probably my favorite bird. I love seabirds. It's a good pick. Uh, I enjoy all corvids. I really enjoy vultures uh, and condors and the like. Um, I've always been very partial to people like hate on like oh, dirty flying rats of seagulls. I like seagulls. I think that they're very charming. Um, oh, the shit. crow and or raven. I love them both for their intelligence. Magpie sort of fits in that same sort of region of birds. Oh, they're so freaking so smart. It's crazy. Smart and cool. Um, I would love to have an army of them just going around picking up trinkets and across the city for me. That'd be <laughs> charming. That sounds very fun. Uh, and uh, second place, close second place, goes to the silky chicken variety, the monstrous chickens that are covered Aww. in these insane amount of fucking feathers and just look like something from another world. They look fluffy, guys. don't they? Yeah, they're, they're like they, super they, they, they fluffy. like fluff out. And yeah, 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 yeah. They look like um, they're very cute. Uh, the brown furred creature from Sesame Street, whose name I forget. Stuff a lot Yeah. Just, they're just muppety. They're wonderful. I, honorable mentions to uh, kookaburras and kiwis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kookaburras I third fucking on my list. love kookaburras and kiwis. They're so okay, damn I cute. need a 40. Where's the 40? Oh, here's the 40. Um, okay. Real good. I'm going to be real slow. And for the, uh, for, so Andy's working on uh, Dire Wolves. Derek's working on Chosen. Mike, what are you working on? I am working on Beastmen Bestigors. It was the best of gores, it was the worst of gores. <laughs> I got you covered. Funny. I got you covered, Derek. That's very funny. Uh, they are the elite uh, cast of the the cased system oh, they're the of, best. The, uh, of the of uh, the of the Beastmen. They are like the elite warriors. They've got armor. They've got giant fucking weapons. They are the cream of the crop. And usually, it's a Bestigor that is promoted to be a warlord or a war gore or, you know, a beast lord. So, I have loved, if you have watched Beneath Dark Wings, you know how much I enjoy the Beastmen, because I am a hack fraud. Legally distinct. There it is. The Horn Legion was uh, rooted in my love of the Warhammer Beastmen. So here's a question. Yep. As I'm kind of following this guy away, there's still just like a little bit of a spot should I like follow it away so it's like like actually super smooth or like so let me so yeah what I would do is like you can really just sort of get in here and just like the 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 coloration doesn't matter at all so if it's, sure. if it's like so this is almost it's basically smooth I just didn't know if they like if there was like a little dip in there or like no, okay no. all right no that's I mean honestly that looks good cool so these are undead dire wolves yes because the vampire the undead factions uh which are the, the tomb kings and the vampire counts are very much heavily rooted in necromancy so they in order to control them they uh need to be dead and resurrected and so there's a whole fun system of how they work differently than your average uh your average bear or wolf but i don't want to be controlled well we have a solution for you <laughs> we're going to kill you <laughs> oh, that's very oh, yeah. funny. That's very funny. Yeah, you're not a free wolf. Uh, Optin, uh, uh, do we, are we already answered that question? Thank you so much for the ten dollars, the ten pound super chat. Um, this one? Yeah, have you heard it? Oh wait, is a hot dog a oh, sandwich? Oh, sorry. Oh, 
I missed that. Often, thank you so much for the 10 of the pound super chat. Thank you all for the wonderful entertainment you provided me over the last couple of months. Happy to catch a chill Q&A. My question for you all is a hot tag of sandwich. Derek, take it away. Derek solved this question he did. at our, it, it, uh, it's a single our fucking Hellfire question. debate club. He, he solved the question with the question. If you sit down at a restaurant and you ask them for a sandwich and you're starving, and they're like, what kind of sandwich? They're like, any sandwich. Just bring me a sandwich. And they bring you a hot dog. <laughs> Aren't you going to be a little confused? <laughs> disappointed. Are you going to be a little disappointed? Are you be a little disappointed? You're gonna, you wanted a sandwich. Yep, yep, yep. That answers it. That answers it. It is not. Um... Uh, you know how y'all said you'd play uh, clerics? This is a ch uh, a chance for more tank hammerfall. Oh, that's very funny. That's not a bad idea. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna. I think I might do original characters. A cleric of of glitzy. Yeah, I was gonna do original characters. characters just because I did. You know, I was gonna do something original. Well, I was actually gonna play Vander's True Strike until somebody uh, wanted to snag Rogue, and I was like, eh, I can do a cleric or something. And now I really like Mike's idea where we're like a band of traveling clerics, and so we'll see if uh, <laughs> we'll see if they go for we'll that. We'll be like not. the fucking sparrows, man. We just constantly we're trying argue to... about whose god is best. It's where the uh, we're trying to we're the faith militant, man. Question for Mikey. Oh. How does it feel to be DMing again? You're such an amazing DM, and your style Thank has you. swept me away on this salty, marshy adventure, so I hype for more. Uh, it feels really good. I mean, it's been a fucking hot minute, folks. Um, I mean, I think When was the last time you actually, like, DM'd regularly? Regularly? Regularly. Jesus fucking Christ. I think it would have been when we were still doing Beneath Dark Wings or, like, for a couple months. So when was that? So that was very early 2022. Yeah. So 20, uh, yeah, 2022. Wow. All right, I feel good about this piece. I'm gonna find number cool. two. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you cut out the, the piece that you wanna work on, and then you scrape it of the little fiddly bits. Scrape, it's old scrape, lines. scrape, scrape. And you know, you don't have to, but I recommend you'll be a lot happier with yourself if you take care of some old lines. Two. And even if, even if you show, it's not the end of the world, you can very easily get your, your army table ready um, without having to get rid of everything, but uh, that has to be too. I like I to have clean to it say, up. These are a lot easier to work with than the pewter. Yes. Oh my god. So plastic is the easiest to work with. The the Games Workshop plastic is a fucking dream, um, and they are made in CAD. And what is CAD, Rich? It's a program. It is a, it's like an engineering program. Yeah, we use that in uh, college. Yeah, oh. yeah. so yeah. like yeah. in yeah. sciences they use it a lot because they can like design prototypes and like, yeah, you, you basically just program any kind of 3D thing, period, yeah. including like models and stuff. I told you guys unironically when we started Stardust, I was gonna like design the Sparrow in CAD. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wanted yeah. to like actually have the Sparrow like look like a spaceship. You use Blender and then you can make- I don't want Blender, but yeah, okay. okay I will make go. this, yeah, great. Anyway, let's continue, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> oh no, so anyway, that's all CAD is, is that it's a 3D modeling program. Um, where and before so what they used to do is they would take clay and they would hand oh, sculpt yeah. just little guys, and then they would lay them down, and then like lay out sprue material so, and cast it all, and then they would have their masters, and then they would cast that in, uh, in pewter or resin. And so now it's very easy to work with. They're designed to be easier to work with. Yeah. Um, they're designed to basically perfectly fit together, as opposed to the clay pieces, um, the clay, or the original clay. And uh, they're kind of like, um, with their new co contrast paints, this sounds like the music from the Donkey Kong uh, it's temple. Called, it's called Proletariat. Temple uh, levels, which the name of the song is. Do you remember uh, Do you remember what the song is called? By David Wise, who we partied with in 2020. One of my favorite memories ever. Do you think so I don't crazy. know this? What is it, Rich? Voices of the okay, Temple. Okay, nice, okay. I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure. You think I don't know this? I wasn't sure, man. I was Do trying you to help my power. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to name a dandy episode. That's why. That's the only reason I know. Oh, because I just recently. That's right, you fucking cheater man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cheater man. Then I call you cheater man. Cheater man. I'm um, a cheater man. So, uh, thank you to all of our channel members. Channel members really help us out a lot. Um. And so let's see if there are any. I don't see any super chats. Thank you, Lady Alexandrana, for a gifted sub. Thank you, Nightly Woe, a thousand bits. Oh my God! Wow! Hey, wow. Thank you so much. Thank I've you. already given some bits, but just like supporting my favorite D&D people. 
You guys got me the funny start DMing. Woohoo! And getting a party together. Woohoo! Nice. I want to know oh, what shit. is your guys' favorite movie? I can't pick just one. No, there's like a um, hundred favorite movies. Uh, this really sounds like Voices of the Temple occasionally when I'm not listening. It really does. It really does. Uh, <laughs> it's these. <laughs> um, it's a banger. Uh, I mean, you know, I have. You know, there's a bunch of different options I could say, right? Like, and 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 different days I'll say different things. Classic example, easy pick, easy snap decision is Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I haven't seen it. I've only seen it once. Really? But oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm I'm on the next movie. <laughs> Another example that I maintained was my favorite. One of my favorite movies of all time was Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh yeah. Which to me, I, I've only seen it once, but it was just such an amazing like it formative was like a joy. experience. Yeah. Uh, I, I I utterly adored it. Um, I adore Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's another great one, which I guess is the winner. It's winning. It's, going, it's winning. It's, it's winning. winning. You have until the end of the There's month still to vote. Time. I had a very lucky month because I've seen almost none of the movies yeah. uh, for our February movie. Wow. Um, with the exception of my suggestion. What are the others? It's... Fantastic Mr. Mr. Fox, Fox, Whiplash, Whiplash, uh, The Breakfast Club, The Breakfast Club, yeah. My Cousin Vinny, My Cousin Vinny, that's me, Big Lebowski, The Big Lebowski, yeah, and The Big Lebowski. So I've seen Big Lebowski and My Cousin Vinny. I haven't seen any three of the other. I've ones. seen. Have we seen The Big Lebowski? I've seen it on TV. I, I saw we saw it on TV. at least in parts. Yeah. I watched it in college. I don't know if I've ever seen it all the way through. I'll yeah. watch it and enjoy it. If it wins, but I will say that I think that uh, a lot of people put it on a higher shelf than it deserves. That to be was on. the Big Lebowski. Well, it's, I agree. it's a cult classic. I agree. Right? It's yeah, a cult classic. So I, I, I couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it. You know, I, yeah, no, it wasn't I, for me. I still think it's an A, but people treat it like it's an A plus. It's like an S S S tier, but it's not a S tier. I think it's I think it's the perfect example of a cult classic. Sorry to offend those of you who love the Big Lebowski. I know you're very passionate. All right, there's two. I don't have to glue anything though yet. It's um, I know it's telling me to assemble. I'm just gonna keep going. My, my answer yeah. to that, this question is: if you give me a genre, I'll give you a different movie for every genre. The but, Witch. Right. So folk horror. Um, uh, Witch. Uh, Three, four, Midsummer. Five. Right. Hereditary, Hereditary. I think is probably one of my favorites. Uh, of all the Lighthouse. Time. Uh, the, those four movies are just fucking excellent. Um, I don't know which of them would be. No, no, Midsummer would be my favorite, even of those four. Um, Better than the witch. That's four. Yeah, you're, you're Midsummer wins. Uh, I know. You said this. You've I know. said this, and I, I, I think for you it would go, Vich, Hereditary, Midsummer before you even get to Midsummer. Like, uh, Midsummer is last in my in that list. I I would put it witch underneath the lighthouse. Yes. Wow. Oh yeah, witch, Hereditary, Lighthouse, Midsummer, easy, easy. So the lighthouse for me. Ooh, I'm getting lucky. I'm finding. Well, I was confused it. until like I start. I thought about it more and I researched it and kind of watched a lot of content about it. And realize how brilliant it is. That's it's kind of fucking what I brilliant. appreciate. I like it more every time I watch it. Is yeah. what I will. Say. The lighthouse. Yeah. The Speaking lighthouse. of which, have you guys seen the fucking screenshots? The the. Oh, looks so of, fucking good. Uh, no, I haven't Will, seen anything yet. Willem Dafoe is so uh, shut like, up. like a crazy fucking vampire hunter. He's yeah. like, <laughs> and no he's like darting around. The him. movie's gonna be incredible. It's in black and white. Oh like, my god, I yeah. can't so fucking wait. We have an Avantress family tradition, where basically whenever Robert Eggers has a movie that comes out. The whole of us will get together yeah. and we will see the movie in theaters uh, together. And uh, we'll be seeing. We'll be the Northman the same thing. did not disappoint. Oh, I, know. Oh. I had such a good time watching the so Northman. That was so fun. Uh, uh, and so I had a horrible work emergency at my soul crushing corporate job both both movie nights. No way. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Well, let's hope that Derek that and I got. Um, got drunk at some at a fucking uh, like an Applebee's or something. No, then. no, no! It wasn't an Applebee's. It was, was a it? Ted's Bulletin. No, Ted's Bulletin. I was with you two, jackasses. Were you? Yes. Were you? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's how drunk we were. That's how that we, was yeah. before the lighthouse. <laughs> no, we got drunk and then went. We got, oh no! We, it was because they had buckets of fucking beer. No, no. We we Holy got shit. started drinking after work before yes. we were getting here, and yes. then we Ubered. You guys met then, me at Ted's Bulletin, and then we and Ubered then, to Ted's Bulletin. Yeah, but didn't they also have beer in? The they did theater? have beer buckets. Yeah, well, well then you can buy buckets of beer, of beer the, at the yeah, theater. Yeah, yeah which is so bad. fun. Yeah. Thank God for Uber. I, I know. Mean, seriously, um, drink responsibly. Uh, and then after that, we went to uh, Matchbox. Oh yeah! Oh god! That was my Good first days. time getting the uh, chicken sandwich. The Nashville hot. Yeah. The Nashville hot sandwich. If you ever have a, uh, if you haven't been to a Matchbox, uh, or if you haven't haven't gotten this dish, dish, get the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. They put an egg spread on it, and it elevates a chicken sandwich into a god tier that shouldn't exist. It shouldn't be possible. Treat yourself. Um, I have a ton of other yourself. horror movies that I could talk about, but uh, agnostic of genre, the best film. Ever made my very most favorite fucking film by a wide margin 
is Akira Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai. It does all of the things. You pick any other genre, and in it, in The Seven Samurai, is packed some element of that. Uh, it is masterfully made at a time when it was extremely challenging to make uh, uh, good films. Um, 1954, 1955, thereabouts. And it just kicks the door down. Uh, I could watch, it's three and a half hours long. I could rewatch it every month without um, what's it. the story? So fucking good. Was that the Kurosawa movie where the reason why Japanese filmmaking yes. and anime has yep. tons of blood yep. is because of a prop malfunction. No, yes. no, that not Seven well, Samurai. No, it's not that movie, but that is, is what you're talking right? about. Uh, yes, yes, it was the uh, the malfunction of the the blood coming out for it wasn't Yojimbo, it wasn't Sanjuro, it wasn't Hidden Fortress. It might have been Rashomon. No, uh, I don't know. It was a pump malfunction. It was a pump malfunction for. Help me out, Chad, if you know. Yeah, I don't know the name of the film. I think it was his version of uh, Macbeth, um, which oh. I cannot remember the he name loved of. It. He loved the effect so much he kept it, and that basically determined we got the internet how right blood I'm was just, done yeah. in a lot of anime and Japanese I'm just going to look it up. I'm just look and American folk. Uh, that's why, um, uh, obviously, uh, Kill Bill, Kill Bill. Blood, was all exactly super right. like blood splurty. Yeah, Throne of Blood. Throne of Blood. Oh, it's the, it's oh, the Macbeth, Macbeth adaptation, that's which pretty is pretty good. good. The thing that's crazy about watching that film isn't the blood spray moment. It's the fact that they shoot real hot live arrows at actors. Oh my god. And the only reason why the actors are surviving is because the actors are wearing, uh, underneath their clothes, wooden, uh, like li like hardwood <laughs> it's shit like that's bullet, just like... Bulletproof vests. It, well, they would, they would just wear planks on their <laughs> yeah. chest and their back. Yeah. And hope that the archer doesn't hit them in the arm, the, the neck, head. the face, the fucking crotch. Jesus right? Christ. And so when you're watching it, you see a person, and these are like... Top build actors. They're, yeah. they're, 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 these aren't the stunt men. You're watching. You're watching. Uh, <laughs> Toshir, Toshira Mufune, yeah. the, the best paid actor in Japan, is running down a hallway and he gets hit by two arrows and three or four of them like actually land in the in the uh, wall next to him and he just keeps running and you're just like, holy fuck! Yeah, that's actually God. crazy. Great question. Was there, was there any super chats that we missed? Uh, I want to make sure we don't miss any super four. chats because it doesn't last forever. Ah. Uh, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make sure that we are getting. Oh the no, we no, we, okay, we got to catch up on the super chats. Okay, okay, that we got that one. We got we're, that we're, one. Yeah, we're catching up here. Uh, okay, we're gonna catch up on super chats. Thank you for to all of our super chatters. Dice Goblin uh, to all. Does everyone have a, approve each other's characters before starting a campaign, or is it all surprise? Yes, we all workshop our characters very collaboratively. All of us are involved in the process. Uh, nothing is a surprise when it comes to our characters' backstories. That's correct. Obviously, there are like deeper, like deeper backstory than just the DM and the p the player knows. The, but the, yeah, there are secrets that are shared between the DM. Uh, as an example, Lethica in Edge of Midnight, her entire backstory and um, her connection to her goddess and all of that Ooh, stuff that's cool. that's... Uh, is shared only by myself and, and uh, the DM and a few minor details Dread that are world building esque uh, with our world builder. Um, but uh, Scrim. nobody else knows yeah, anything. Yeah, Scrim. uh, Scrim's background, uh, that, that's something that uh, Andy and I share. Um, yeah, the, 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 those kinds of moments happen. But the nature of Scrim, his personality, his attitude, his, the way that he is, he's going his to, the way that he's going to be with the party and, and vice versa with all the other party members in Icebound, that's something we discuss as a group all together during our session zero. Rocket B, uh, $10 super chat. Woo! Just wanted to say, I Thank recently you. found your channel and I've never delved deeper into a YouTube channel in my Whoa! life. Thank you guys for being so oh, hilarious, and genuine. It's Thank you. refreshing. Thank, Thank you, Rocket. Thank you so much. That is what we are Amazing. You know, Very kind. And I would hope that everyone who met us at MAGFAS and PAX and Gen Con are like, oh wow, this is not an act. Yeah, I had a lovely conversation with someone in the LAN room oh. at, uh, while I was sitting with Lockless uh, while he was preparing for his. Uh, uh, Torment. Lowy clothes here. And uh, they came up and they introduced themselves and, and they thanked us for being awesome. Oh, and I thanked wonderful. them for being a fan. And it was a, it was a wonderful moment. That's pleasant. Can yeah. it be Magfest already? I know. Jesus Christ. I don't want it to be January again, but it's still. I, 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 we got a lot of months to go before we sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, uh, uh, for fuck's sake, welcome to the Honk Legion. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Honk Legion channel members, y'all are the best. Uh, Lou Hen. I wish I wouldn't didn't cuff the name. Hold on. Lou Hendrickson. Lou Hendrickson. Hey, Lou. How interested slash worried are you about Henry Cavill's upcoming Warhammer projects? Oh. I 
I don't know who's show running it. You know what the answer is? What? And I think we've all kind of adopted this, adopted the stance of the years, and please feel free to disagree, but at least my stance, and I think Mike's gonna agree with this, is that we have become so zen about these things that like we don't get worked up over it anymore. Yep. Like yeah. I hope that it's good. I hope that it's great. If it's not, I won't be surprised. I have yep. zero expectations for these things. Yep. And I like to be pleasantly surprised or unsurprised if it ends up being awful. Yep, it's like I had no expectations about One Piece, and I'm like, holy fucking yeah. shit, this is unbelievable. I saw Arcane, and like literally, I'm like, eh, this is probably gonna be super meh. We'll see how and it I goes. And I sat down, I'm fucking weeping at the end of the fucking thing. Yep. And so I, I think if there's anybody, but it's all gonna come down to the writers, right? At the end of the day, if and maybe Henry has it in his contract where like, like as opposed to The Witcher, where like he actually has creative control. Well, apparently he uh, does. Apparently he has some kind of control. Yeah. And oh so shit. His passion for it should hopefully give the writers and other contributors to the story the room and the freedom necessary to do justice to the story and everything that, that we all love and, and enjoy about that universe and the characters therein. I have some more hope than I would other projects for those reasons. I just am not, and so what I'm not certain about is can you have a mass market Warhammer 40,000 TV show? Absolutely. I think 100% could, could, if, if Game of Thrones, the TV series, had never happened, and you were reading the books right now, and I asked you if it was possible for us to turn George R. R. Martin's novels into a hit television show, even at a worldwide scale, would you say yes? The bigger than The think... Sopranos. Yeah. You know what like, I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just a very heavy universe, is what I will say. Oh, and yeah. So it's one of those things People where love it's... that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. So I am, I'm excited for it, and I very much want Fun. it to be good, selfishly, oh, because yeah. I, while it's not announced, it was stated in a Games Workshop uh, shareholder press release or whatever, that they, they sort of accidentally announced that they're working on Warhammer Fantasy uh, shows. Really? And movies. So they're and all Warhammer across so the board. So yes, all Warhammer across the board. And I think that the success of the 40K one is going to determine the entire yeah. future of I the Warhammer know, which franchise. Which is a lot of scary, Warhammer right? Warhammer fantasy though, man. It's kind of scary. I think the budget you would need would be fucking insane. Yeah, and the it might be too tough. The budget you would need would be fucking insane. We're moving past the budget would be too much moments. We're starting to enter a digital age where all of a sudden it's possible to do... Like, the reason why there hasn't been a Pirates of the Caribbean television show or something at that scale was because you'd have to have a whole fucking fleet of boats and be able to shoot shoot the boats yeah, but on look, a look, digital camera. Davy while... Jones, was that movie was released in 2002, right? right. Three? Right. No, 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 no. Uh, five. 2005. 2005. Yeah. And Davy Jones looks better than most Marvel CGI. Yeah. And they that is working all of those CGI artists to death. <clears throat> Where it's like, it's, I don't know if like the CGI, we need to have like a, a revolution or a renaissance. And oh yeah, it's looking good, man. I don't know. I don't mean to be skeptical. I just, I'm tempering my expectations. Uh, my, my point is that the threshold for neat, for neat, Large scale epic stuff gets lower every year with advances in computer technology. Yeah. I just know that they cut Ghost out of like the last half of Game of Thrones because they had to spend on dragons. And like an undead polar bear was like half the budget. I'm and so. Happy with my two pieces, very quickly to jump back into tutorial mode. Do oh, yeah. I do this before I worry about any of the other steps? Yes, this is how you'll get that. So that's why one's blue and one's gray. This is a double piece that you then connect to four. It was just so, not obvious to me that I needed to glue 38 yeah. to 40. So you glue 38 to 40. Yep. And, glue onto this and then you put 41, but it should be fine, right? Oh, you already did it. Oh, I'm, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not glued. I'm just, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just holding it. So all, and also, always dry right. fit your pieces first. Always make sure that it fits, it's comfortable, and makes sense, and physically will not bump into anything. Um, and that's with, only true for me. Okay, <laughs> okay. one through five. I'm gonna get the head uh, pieces, and then my goal is to basically put the wolf together. I think uh, I, I love it. get those. That's perfect. All right. Um, I think so. I believe that the future. Well, I'm talking less about CGI, but animation. I believe that our hope for animation and CGI animation is France. I think French animation is the future. And I am hoping for like a revolution and an artistic, philosophical revolution. It's coming. That will lead us. We're where right on the, the cusp. Uh, I don't know. We're right on you the cusp. You don't think so? No, the reason why is because how much did Blue Eye Samurai make in the United States? 
animation is so looked down upon as a children's medium yeah. that it doesn't matter how beautiful and perfect it is. Yeah. Because it's not real people, these people are so shallow and so unintellectual yeah. that they refuse to fucking watch it. I don't know if I can Question. Uh, can you show me the glue? Yes. Oh. Is six this so here, and 30 this? Just take it. You just dab onto the piece. Oh, and that's a good question. What I want to say both sides all. So, all yeah, the problem is they look is very all similar. The pieces, but I, I do a think, nice little dollop. I think nice six is this dab. guy. Make sure it would be on yeah, this side. So this is melting the plastic. Right, because he's on that yeah, side. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, this yeah, is yeah. six. I think this is six. So I really need to decide where my connection is. You want to be careful. To me, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? So, do you do one side or both sides? So I'll I'll usually put take one side and I'll like glue the side and I'll pick up the other one. I'll glue the other side and then I'll just hold it together for like twenty seconds. Okay, twenty to thirty seconds. All right, let's glue. Everybody. Okay. No, oh, I didn't. I didn't do this. I believe in you, Derek. Fuck, I believe in me too. This isn't in my Derek. first rodeo, but. Um. So anyway, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe. But like, like, like for me, the Warcraft movie, the fact that you don't do the story of Arthas. Like, like they. What were, the fuck? I think they were very greedy, and it was very much. Oh, we're going to we're build we'll a cinematic the Marvel. We're yeah. going to build a cinematic universe, and we need to start from the very beginning, as opposed to starting and very good place to start. I was gonna, literally just going to say a wise woman once said that the beginning is a very good place to start, but that was a bad joke. Um, I think there were some other were there some other super chats that we missed or no? Uh, I think that's all of them. Um. Yeah, you know, I know that. So you know, we used to do like a lot of when we when we used to have like the more uh, like the voice hangout and all of that stuff. I used to rage about uh, TV stuff. Or rage, it was oh six oh seven, not oh five oh six. Ah, okay, ah, I got. I was ah, off by a year. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Derek, out if age. you've <laughs> never seen one, look up a Polish chicken. They're delightful. Big fan of you guys. You're the reason I got into D and D. Oh, thank, thank you, Canadian you. Spaceman. Any More tips for D and D DM for the first time? Check out the FAQ in our Discord. We have some really good tips. Also, look at yes. Neon Knights and uh, watch Neon Knights. Ivy. I'm not sure if anyone saw a Discord thread. Uh, Avengers and Chill is down for Ep Icebound episode 24. Whenever y'all get time, we'll get into it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my DM tip is uh, don't plan a plot out in advance where you know the ending. If you know the ending, then you're not playing D&D. &D. Plan scenarios and then listen to your character's choices and find the narrative. Getting good at learning how to reveal and surface and guide a narrative uh, through the collaboration and coordination with your players, through the play of the game, through the rolls of the dice is what Dungeons & Dragons is all about. Having a prescriptive journey that has a set end point is not how to play. Uh, Teddy Bear had to dip. Scratching the plastic is giving me styrofoam nails on chalkboard effect. Oh no. Yeah, sorry about that. Yep. If you don't enjoy it, uh, yeah, just. See, what's so funny is that, like you guys know me, the styrofoam thing kills me. This doesn't do, doesn't do yeah, that to me. I've never. The I've styrofoam never heard that. thing absolutely like makes me doubled over, and like this is this to me is pleasant. The squeaky squeak. Yeah, it's yeah, the squeaking of the of the styrofoam drives me nuts. This is like pleasant scraping. It's almost like ASMR. It's a scream. Yeah, scream, it's very, scream. to me, it's, it's ASMR. To me, building miniatures is incredibly therapeutic. All right, I need yeah. the other half of this guy's face, and then I'm gonna start doing some gluing. Okay. Let's fucking rock and roll. I'm feeling real good. I'm looking for piece number seven. Um, I. Oh, there he is. Great question, Lou. What other questions? Uh, with Salt Marsh, you have you all have a pretty gra uh, solid grasp of anatomy and first aid stuff. It comes out in how you describe battles and injuries. Uh, Are any of y'all trained slash educated or something you picked up being nerds? <laughs> well, I, I I I would put trained very loosely in quotation marks. I, I'm an Eagle Scout and I took multiple multiple first aid, emergency prep, all sorts of different merit badges and trainings and all sorts of stuff like that. But trained in that, I don't you know that was a a decade ago or more. I guess I would have had to do it before I turned 18, so 15 years ago. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that information sticks with you. I'm not, like, up to date on it, you know. I just think, in general, our whole group, for the most part, is intellectually curious. That's it. Yeah. I just think we're just intellectually curious yeah. people. I, I think that it's kind of not to say, oh, back in my day, but I think just growing up in the 90s, going from before the age of the Internet to then having the age of the Internet kind of just equipped us. With yeah. a sense of general knowledge yeah. about stuff. General knowledge used to be more of a thing. General knowledge? 
Um, uh, Bulba, is Bosun Haga a striped or spotted hyena? Spotted hyena. So said, I think you dropped that. Uh, I think I mentioned I think you dropped spotted. that, yeah. yeah. Echo, uh, I don't know if you know me, but I'm the. Of course, we know you, Echo. Doing the LOA Star Wars. I'm not a patron, so this is a question oh you've asked before. I'm sorry. Yeah, my question is Are there any LOA Star Wars is character great. conversions that you would change? Also, favorite Star Wars character in general? Uh, Club Shido is my favorite Star Wars character. Uh, no. Um, oh my god. Favorite Star Wars character. To your point about what would I change based on your interpretation, I wouldn't change anything. I, change I think they've been all fucking outstanding. I think we mentioned this on stream. It's really cool to see somebody like. What I love about it is obviously I love seeing fan art, LOA fan art, but I love like it sh the 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 way the choices that you make shows that you understand Star Wars too. Yes, which is very well. In this day and age, is very delightful to it see. It is delightful, uh, and it's and it's really fun to see that combination and seeing how uh, thoughtful and deliberate it is. Um, okay. I'm ready to glow. I'm Ooh, trying. There's to 41. Think. Uh, I, I did have a question. No, check it out. Hold on, Echo. Favorite character. I've got my, if you're watching on stream, I've got my uh, my first undead doggo. It's boring, but I still fucking love Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I, I know. Me, great great too. I, I think pre that's an amazing sequels, character. Pre no, sequels, he, he's just so fucking that's my important. Uh, he's been my favorite, he's been one of my favorite characters. Thank you. Of all time. Thank you. Yeah. Since I, I first watched this. the movie when yeah. I was like four. Fucking hell yeah. Um, And I think the EU novels that I read did a really good job, you know, flushing him out. And oh, like, EU Luke was um, fucking badass. Yeah, exactly. I will say, I... They're versions of this, but I think Count Dooku is an amazing character He's from like the expanded. Agreed. There's a certain novelization where he says like he want he he only likes humans and he wants to kill all the aliens or whatever. That's not canon. I fucking refuse to believe. That. Oh wow. We're like the idea of like I love the idea of the separatists like having good points as opposed to being cartoonishly evil. Right, right. And so I think Count Dooku is really good. As a kid, I always really liked uh, Count Dooku and Jango Fett. Even though I acknowledge that the 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 Attack of the Clones is not a particularly good movie, you know what? It was the right time of my. And the I lives. always I always like Gungans. I don't care who knows it. I always like Boss Gungans. Nass is a I Boss, Boss Nass is a great Nass, man. Against Gungans. Yeah, I didn't um, have anything against Jar Jar. Growing up, my favorite character was Han Solo. Uh, cliche, but I was a huge Han Solo guy. And with the prequels, I really liked Qui Gon in the first one. I, I, I was a big Qui Gon guy. Um, I just didn't get very much out of Qui Gon. I yeah, no, he, he was he was a non character. He's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, he, he's basically a non character. Um, it's the EU that kind of expands and gives like you know, or, or the Clone Wars or whatever that kind of turns these characters from like one note to interesting. Um, I think Ewan McGregor's Obi Wan Kenobi oh. is one of the best, if not the best, character in everything. Agreed. Um, and you know what? I can't believe I thought I, I would ever be saying this in a million fucking years, but Cassian Andor. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Holy shit, I hated that guy. I thought nothing of him in Rogue One. And then the show comes out, and it's like, god damn. This I would is say the cool. entire oh, cast of Andor yeah. is, my favorite, is my favorite, is my favorite oh, my god. Uh, Star Wars character. I, I lost, I lost um, Steam on Star Wars right, yeah. right before Andor me, came me too. Oh my god, me what's too. the name Can of the... Can we get that uh, for Andy, because it's just he's a Baron, first -timer. Baron Harkonnen. Uh, uh, Lucian. Lucian. Is this easier to use than the yes. other one? He is my, brush. He, oh. That is my official so, answer. We also have, just before you get, we yeah. have a super chat Lucian. so that you oh, can deal with it, but I just perfect. want to bring it to your So anyway, it should be obvious, but like basically try to get this only where it's going to meet. Okay. So I was do a, a light coat Why are on. these blue? Like, I'm just curious, like, what that means. It looks like it's just the last piece that was put on is blue. I think it's just information. Yes. It's, it's like, okay. previously you put these on, right. and then you put this on, then you put this on. I'm confident I can handle this. Yes, you got it. If I can't, then um, chat will get to laugh at me. Uh, I think Andor may be one of my favorite Star Wars things ever. I'm saving it for a I think it's my favorite um, Star Wars thing I also ever. like Dash Rendar. And he didn't yeah. die. He didn't die. Dash Rendar is great. Yeah. Um, oh, and Grand Admiral Thrawn, not when Dave Filoni is writing him, is funny. very good. Brian funny. Miller, you guys are awesome. Uh, you make me laugh till I cry. Wuffrup is awesome. Woo! Glad you find. I found you guys. Got to run. Have a good night, Mikey. Can you say Curvy Dave? Doobie curvy Dave. Doobie, doobie, doobie. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Uh, Inky gifted five oh, thank you memberships. So much, Inky. Thanks, Inky. Danielle T with the Honk Legion. Uh, Keeley 42, February 1st is the one year anniversary of Beef Butter. Uh, what That's, should we leave out for dinner? Ever again. I know. We, we know that. 
I know, I, because I Canceled. put it on our official calendar. It's Canceled. on my calendar. Is it really? Yes, oh, wow. it's, a, it's officially a holiday. Uh, what should we Canceled. leave out for Derek when he breaks and enters our homes on beef butter? If you have asked that question, then you don't know the name of the holiday. <laughs> you leave out a tub of beef butter, yeah. obviously. Yeah, if you don't know how to make it, then then the trouble begins. But for those of you who know how to make beef butter, you'll be fine. That's right. Um, Where's the glue? I have no oh, here, uh, I'll, take, I'll take the back glue. Uh, yeah. If you want to switch, take I can try a no, bigger no, no. brush. He, yeah, take that. It's the, very the big. The brush is really nice. But you guys have bigger. I mean, I have little fucking dwarfs, which sucks, right? But I think see. I'm willing to switch. Oh uh, no, 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 this is dwarfs okay. so tiny. You're good. All right. Tiny, um, tiny, tiny dwarfs. Nailey Tuner, uh, since there's shroud over salt marsh fan art and fanfics being made already, do you oh, plan on making uh, fan art reels for the SOS pre-stream? Bloody, uh, bloody loving it so far, lads. So I have not looked since the most recent episode, but I looked the day before we played, I think, and I don't know if I saw any besides the one, the like there's one or two. There's not much, but there's, there's some. A, there's not a ton. So. I think we should wait until we cross a certain threshold. Yes, we that's what I did. We will minutes. though. Right. The answer is and yes, we will. Yeah, I think we need a hundred pieces before. So it really for makes sense to I think we need like forty or fifty. Forty or fifty. Yeah. 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 Okay. For start for Stardust, I uh, obviously we wouldn't have it for the first episode, but then for the second episode, I also didn't have it because we only had like I think nine pieces at the right. time, and then by the next exactly episode, we probably had like forty, um, and so I made one for that. So get cracking, artists. You, I mean, you can draw whatever you, you can want, do whatever you but uh, you can't we, crack we, it. we love, love, love the Shroud uh, fan art. I want fan art of Monty's robot crab. <laughs> Isaac says, hey Andy, I'm working on a series of stick figure wicker pieces of WBTWL. Wild uh, Beyond the Witchlight. Oh, 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 uh, Once Upon a Witchlight. Uh, could you describe each of the PC silhouettes from Torbeck's perspective? <laughs> I think you drew us, right? Yeah, the drawing is actually on the DM board. The drawing that, that Torbeck did canonically in uh, Once Upon a Witchlight is basically how he views his friends. It's in the Discord, right? Uh, so yeah. mods, if you can point them to... I need to take a picture of it and probably put a better picture in there anyway. I don't know if we... You still you took a picture, didn't I you? I think no? they were just screenshots from oh, the stream. So okay. maybe I'll take a picture of it tonight before oh, I leave, yeah. if I can remember. I didn't even fucking follow That's we'll the best that. way to do that, yeah. Um, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Ooh, this glue is potent. Trans flare, if you had a fursona, what species would you be? <laughs> oh. Cat. I, I, <laughs> I would be a... I don't have an answer. <laughs> I, would, I would be a robot platypus. <laughs> I like that. I would be a llama corn. I like that too. Uh, Noodle Poffin, just rewatched the Crooked Moon one shot, and I'm so excited to learn more of the story when it's released. Any plans to write backstory or and one shot novels eventually? Um, no backstory or novels? I can say that there is plan to reveal things like that in adjacent ways, but that's all I can say. Yeah. Um, the delivery vehicle of those kinds of things may surprise and delight you, but <laughs> it's going to be a long time coming. We got to write, write the book first. We have lots of stuff. We got to a do. lot of stuff. Holy in the shit, pipe. we got a lot to do. He stands. Um, could I uh, do, uh, be very careful yeah. with this? I'm doing a whole honk and laugh. Okay, so yeah. I'm so yeah, definitely dip it off and oh, then I, and then I apply. Yeah, 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 it's a big fuck. I, when Richie said it was big, I told you I'm fine. I, I got some beef. You could try this one. Stores. No, I got dragon ogres coming next. What do you do like That's that? That's beefy. That's you know big as like a scene. Dragon ogres from the you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. does that matter? So. What I, what I would do? I just probably need to clean them up a little bit. So like what I usually do is I basically assemble all of them, everything that I'm gonna get ready to paint, and then I'll just take the back of the hobby knife and quickly scrape. So you can over still smooth it out even oh, yeah. if there's like a seam from just gluing two pieces together. Well, this I think maybe a little bit of sprue. Sprue. sprue oh, like. for when there's a seam, we have sprue goo. That's the advantage. Oh, it's like clay. And so it's basically. It fills in the gaps. You take little bits of sprue and you put it in a you, bottle you, of that. You, you it motherfuckers have thought of everything. And it yeah, fills in the gap and then basically it will might run over and then you just scrape off all the excess and it's okay. a gap filler. You don't need a gap fill, but if you're a giant nerd. No, fat, I'm doing that. I'm it's doing fun. That. I gap filled all my trolls and then I stop playing it. Um, and if you <laughs> see that there is a gap, you can almost sometimes, like if it's really small, just put more glue in it because it just melts the plastic. You might be able just to kind of do it that way too. 
Who's a big old goat? Um, All of my guys are big old goats. Big old goat. Working with plastic is way more satisfying than I thought it was going to be. I love it. Uh, I promise I'll stop talk talking about it eventually. I'm super proud of my Gricko cosplay. I made him 100% from scratch. Watch all of Icebound it's and Beneath Wings while making him. Scrim is next. Oh, the exact same sick. energy port energy. Thank you, Fungus Clown. That's Thank so you, exciting. Fungus. Cobalt Blue Waters, odd question. Nothing serious, but is there any scenes or episodes from a movie or show that you can't watch again? For yeah. example, I can't watch the old butterfly SpongeBob episode to this day as the realistic butterfly that pops up horrified me as a child. Oh. I don't know. Like the ring used to be like that for me. Where like <sighs> I couldn't even think about it without being scared for weeks. I don't think I have anything like that. I'm no. with you. I've kind of grown out of that. I'm there were pretty... some things that really fucked me up as a kid that don't bother me anymore. Yeah. Uh, I have oh, three that I can think of. Um, and all of them are do not watch recommendations. This is not an endorsement in any way. Oh, wow. uh, the first is uh, once in your lifetime uh, watch uh, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, I've heard that's hard to watch. That is a hard watch. I've watched it twice. I wanted to revisit it the second time to make sure that it was as horrifying as I want remembered. Is it and scary or no, just I think like it's really it is gross and disturbing and like sick? It's it sad. Is, it and is sad. Horrifying. And you. End the film without hope. In your it's about life. drug abuse, isn't it's it? It's about addiction, yeah, and Jesus. Uh, it's a hard watch. Uh, so that's a film that uh, it's excellent. It's gripping. It's engaging. But holy fuck, is it a hard watch? Uh, next watch uh, is uh, one of the few films ever banned in the United States uh, oh, called Titty Cut Follies, and it is a uh, I'm not gonna look that up. 1960s documentary of what it was actually like in mental asylums at that time in Massachusetts. Oh, wow. And uh, that is a hard, hard watch. Also worthy of contemplation, I was I, I was taking a, a documentary uh, post-production strategy class in college because I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I watched that and a bunch of other really crazy documentaries. There was another one uh, about uh, uh, heroin addiction in China. That was another hard watch. Uh, but I cannot remember the name of that. Those were really tough. And I'm not going to rewatch uh, Titty Cut Follies anytime soon. And the final one uh, is a phenomenal film called Threads, a uh, BBC-based uh, fictional depiction of what a nuclear holocaust would actually be like with uh, consulting scientists and stuff like that, uh, made by the BBC in the 70s or 80s. And it is outstanding. It leaves you hollowed out like yeah. a fucking pumpkin uh, yeah. by the time you finish that film. Um, because it starts off, it's like 10 minutes after the explosion, 10 oh, hours wow. after the explosion, 10 no days thanks. after the expl uh, explosion. Here's when the food supply collapses. 10 months after the explosion. It, it ends 25 years after the explosion, the last scene. Yeah. And it is crazy. Um, yeah, I, I could definitely watch that again. It's a hard watch, but man, it is just hollows you out. I, I, you have to be in the mood to be hollowed out to watch that film. So those are my three, oh fuck. I've heard the same thing about Grave of the Fireflies. I really, really want to watch it, sad. but I know I need to be in the right place to watch that film, because yeah. I've heard it's crazy. I've seen the beginning um, of it. It's really, I mean, just right off the bat, it's like, yeah. holy shit. I'm kind of at a point in my life where like, I don't get any pleasure or joy out of watching these that make me depressed anymore. So I kind of avoid yeah. those right. like the plague. Right. I'm like never in the mindset to watch them, so I just never do. Um. A film that I really enjoy, but I have to be in the right headspace for, uh, it's one of my favorite movies. It would have come up as one of my favorite movies during that earlier conversation. Um, Children of Men. Outstanding fucking movie. That was really depressing, but, too. Oh, fucking hard. Clive I watched Owen, it once, you know? yeah, I don't think yeah. I can watch that again. I don't, uh, that I don't movie need to watch I had to that pause again. in the middle and just cry. Yeah. Um, there's, this, there's a scene in the middle that just fucking got me. If you want a feels-good, happy <laughs> cry movie at the end, watch Sing Street. <laughs> Very yeah. underrated. He Very made a musical good. about it, apparently. Sing Street is amazing. Iron Deficiency <laughs> Maiden. Will you ever make it to the West Coast, specifically Pacific Northwest? Uh, it depends if we get invited uh, by a convention out there. Uh, it's unlikely that we'll just sort of go. But, I mean, PAX Prime is there, so I think it's not out of the realm of possibility. Okay. Now I have to glue the head together here. Uh, Purple Dino. With Beneath Dark Wings finale on the horizon, is there anything that you're particularly proud of or anything you think you, uh, that could have gone differently? Oh, I mean, we've said this a thousand times, but I would completely redo Felix. So, I mean, there's a lot of great there, but it was uh, the second character I ever made. Our party would probably be totally different. Yeah, yeah for but sure. Like, I'd tighten up the uh, beginning. 
Uh, I tightened up the beginning. I'm just very proud of the campaign as a whole. I feel like yeah. it's... Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like some of the... Yeah. I always kind of think of Prime being my megaton build-up and megaton payoffs. But Beneath Dark Wings has some absolutely fucking nuclear... Yeah, I agree. Payoffs. And I'm that sure... I, that I believe that I earned. I, f I and I totally get where you're coming from, like because you probably feel the same way about your own campaign that you wrote as I feel about Felix. But on the flip side, I wouldn't change the damn thing about the campaign. You know what I mean? Like being a player yeah. in it, it's fucking, yeah. it's fucking fantastic. I, I would agree with that. You know what I mean? But like we all are very critical of ourselves, right? Uh, you know, so I get that. Um, I don't know what else I would change. I would love to do Caprice again, uh, minus the irreverent out of world comedy. Right, like a lot of the stuff that he's saying, and a lot of the stuff that he jokes that he made, referenced the real world. Right, it was yes. I like, it was very I would like to yes. suck all very that out, very of, fourth wall out of his, out of his, yeah, no more fourth wall breaking caprice. Um, that way was part of the reason why it was so fun to play in the uh, Crooked Moon one shot, where I got to test out the very, very Elsa College of Whistles, because I got to sort of play caprice, but minus a lot of the randomness, less randomness. I, I'm sure a lot of folks enjoy it, and I enjoyed doing it at the time, and it was goofy, but singing, like, Super Mario Brothers theme songs, because, you know, I, I, I'm ready to move on and do a proper bard. Look at that. That's fair. Good, co good, Whoa, point. Yeah. good point. That's a good model. Wow. It's good looking. Uh, what about stuff you're, you're proud of, though? We didn't cover that. Oh. Uh, I'm proud of what we accomplished as a channel at that point in our yeah. careers of bringing seven of us around a table mm -hmm. and having way more like intense active role play than we had ever had before. Kelsey and I drove hundreds of miles once a month back and once forth from New York City to play and it was awesome. It was fucking great. Yeah, they did that for like four or five months. It was a long time. In a row. It was a lot. Um, I think it paid off. Oh, for sure. I'm very grateful. Um, I like to think that... Uh, spoilers for Beneath Dark Wings. Spoilers for Beneath Dark Wings. Don't uh, like crazy spoilers. Yeah, not crazy spoilers. But I think that, like, what I'm proud of, I think that I included the kind of continuation of Curse of Strahd or the little, you know... The references and the sequel I would agree. aspect, without it being too fan servicey, and that you don't need to watch it in order to enjoy it. I feel like it's still good. Hopefully, if you haven't seen it, um, I know that's pretty tricky to do, but you know, I feel like I did an okay job. What a badass! Oh yeah, look at that shit! Wow, he's howling at the moon. Yeah, and look at look at the way that it's sculpted. You give that sucker the fucking. Um, Slap chop method, it's gonna look fucking gorgeous in, in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, Auntie Salmonita, if we, the fans, made LOA inspired products like acrylic charms, stickers, notebooks, etc., would that be okay? Uh, you can make whatever you want. And if you mean to sell it, uh, we don't have this put together yet, but oh, yeah. if you go, if you look at critical roles like fan content policy, that's pretty close to, I think, our stance of like, you know, if you're selling it at a convention or whatever, like small scale, that's totally fine. Yeah, prints it whatever. only becomes a problem where it's like, a, you know, like a commercial thing, right? Yeah. So, um, go nuts. You were allowed to Vol Hunter make Bun, body speaking policy. of, do you guys uh, <laughs> watch that. Blue Eye Samurai yet? I have not. Uh, no. Reed, Reed said it was God tier. I, the animation is beautiful. I knew, I knew it was French animation the moment I saw it. Um, You know, and I, I really want to see it. Where do you watch this? That's Netflix. on Netflix. Netflix. What's it about? Samurai. A blue eyed samurai. I'm into it. Next question. <laughs> I'm into it. Um. Illy Silly Goose, all of your... Wait, did I fucking do this? Mike, can you read this? Can you read this question? Oh, what? Read the next question. Oh, for fuck. Do y'all accept... For, thank you for the $2 super chat. Do y'all accept fan mail such as boards or pieces? Oh. Uh, yes. We do. We have a P.O. box. Um, we can't promise when we will open it. We can't promise even that we'll if do it we'll on stream. It, if yep. we'll open it on stream. We'll, we'll open them, We'll, we'll open them, yeah. but we, we cannot promise it'll be on stream. We cannot promise, you know, there's no guarantees that we will use whatever is sent. But, you know, if you want to send us something, you're always more than welcome to do that. We have the P.O. box on our Discord. What were you saying about Illy Silly Goose? I yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's in the Twitch. Um, oh. Yeah, if you could read that. I'm just trying to get this 
I see Lo-Fi Lobo. Are you you oh, see this? That. Oh, no, uh, we didn't see that. We're dumb. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Illy Silly, all your campaigns are have a different balance between RP and combat. I was wondering if you each have your own preference for the amount of each. Is there a difference for watching and playing? Also, two sessions caught from BDW. Uh, two sessions from caught up to with BDW. Wow. For Mikey, yes. what the fuck? Well done, by the way, for catching up. Uh, you know, I can't help myself sometimes. It's kind of, you know, it just it is what it is. I like a balance of RP and combat, but I, you know, I, I think generally the answer is whatever serves the narrative. You know, I like both. I like heavy RP. I like heavy combat. I like all, everything in between. Something, something that I think has been true from the beginning with all of us is that we could play four hours of heavy, crunchy combat, or we could have four hours of role play where we yeah. roll a single dice, and we could have a hybrid uh, all the way between those two extreme spectrums, and still the players and the d dungeon masters would still all be happy as pigs as pig shit. Like, it, yeah. we, we uh, I will eventually tire if it's all of one. I like the variety, right? But that variety doesn't mean that I won't go all in on stuff, especially when it serves the narrative. I also think that, like, in general, one of my strengths as a DM is my combat. I feel like I run relatively snappy, interesting, narratively yeah. important combat. Um, so I am happy to have a fucking four hour boss fight. Um, because I, I try to make all of it interesting, engaging, and have it matter, narratively. Um, but you know, I also enjoy the sessions where there aren't any fucking, there's no combat at all. Right. Um, so you know, it, uh, it all depends, man. It's all good. If done well, all of the pillars of D&D &D are all really good. That's a good They can also say. be done very poorly, too. Can the also fucking most suck. difficult pillar for any DM, in my opinion, because of the way fifth edition, uh, fifth edition, fifth edition Sometimes. is, um, yeah, that's true, uh, is written, is designed as a game, is exploration um, without a map. Uh, I well, overla said, overland travel. To clarify, I'm drawing full bust of the Witchlight's PC car a character caricatured by Torbeck. Uh, what would two words Torbeck would use to describe each character? Um, for Gideon, it would be uh, handsome and strong. Oh, wow. For Grico, <laughs> it would be tiny and funny. That's really good. For Mr. Kremi, it would be shrewd and clever. <laughs> Shrewd and trustworthy. <laughs> no, he would not. Extremely trustworthy. Torbeck is no longer disillusioned by the true Mr. Grubby. Um, and then for Frost, it would be... Mr. Grubby would never lie. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. Um, from Torbeck's eyes, he would view Frost. I'm trying to think of the perfect two. Frost, in, in Torbeck's eyes, Frost is stoic. But he's also... Like, caring isn't the right word, but what's another word for, like, caring that fits Frost? Because Frost has this nature about him where, like, Frost is always kind to Torbeck. In That's a way right. that a lot of the other That's characters right. aren't. <laughs> None so, of the other characters. Not a dick. <laughs> yeah, no. What's a good way to say kind, though, but that would fit Frost? Kind, but, like, not that kind. <laughs> endearing. Yeah. Endearing? Endearing's no. a good word. Oh, Indifferent. No. No, he's yeah, not indifferent. Yeah, Fuck you. There was that one time when I misunderstood the scene and I walked up to you and told you that you were a terrible person because <laughs> I thought that Torbeck needed to feel bad in order to like access his uh, his, uh, his <laughs> wow, juice. Why are you being mean to Torbeck? <laughs> yeah, there's one scene where that is crossing the line. Derek didn't have to know the assignment. God, I that's completely missed fun. the fucking plot. Yeah, I don't know the best way to describe it, but there is an element to Frost where you are kinder to Torbeck than the others. At times. Well, that makes me really, really happy. I like Torbeck. I don't know. I, that's a tough one. I can't think of a... Yeah, there's a lot of good words. Dread Queen Cinnamon Roll. In a Muppet shenanigans campaign, which of your characters would you pick to play in a world as a Muppet? Briggsy, no fucking... Like, I, I will not... Well, I guess I will elaborate. <laughs> will not entertain. Him being having... I mean... I think long-snouted puppets are amazing. Yeah. You could have so much fun with his, like, removable chunk. Uh, in puppet form, and holy you have. fuck! You and have? I, I have, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, Gary Goodberry, no further questions. Uh, probably Scrim would make a great Muppet. Oh yeah, Scrim would be a fantastic Muppet. He'd be a really good Muppet. 
You know uh, what? I'm going to go with Frost. Because I could see him as uh, the uh, very, like, giving him a very serious face and playing him even more straight man. Right. Uh, like the fucking uh, eagle character whose name I'm... Sam Eagle. Sam Eagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam Eagle. I, I would, I would, I would Sam name. Eagle Frog. Frost. Frog. Good old frog. Forg. Old where's, uh, where's the... I need some of them, them gym jams. I got another leg to put on. To surf. <laughs> Good old to surf. Funny as Holy fuck, shit. dude. Holy shit. I, I will say, uh, I'm glad we're doing the right thing, but I've been missing Witchlight, like, so fucking bad, because I haven't played Witchlight since... It's been a hot minute. you played, like, one episode in the past, like, five months. Yeah, I am dying to get back to yeah. Frost and the Feywild. Holy well, it's shit. a good thing, because Mace messaged me. He's still... Or at least as of, like... 30 minutes ago, he was still at work, so... Oh, wow. Shit. He would have been fucked either way. Rough day. Yeah. Um, favorite... This Ragnaros. is from Ragnaros. Favorite armies, if any, in Warhammer Fantasy or 40k? I mean, I'm going entirely off of lore, but I'm super hyped about his love. Uh, the only reason I'm playing the uh, Chaos um, Warriors is because I was born a Chaos Man... <laughs> Uh, I will die, Chaos Man. Corn I love specifically. Corn Weirdly. so much. <laughs> you just don't seem like a corn guy to me. I don't know. It's weird. Um, Maybe nine year old Derek was a corn, corn man. Corn and corn alone day. <laughs> That's very That's funny. actually hilarious. That's corn and funny. corn alone day is Derek's favorite day. I love corn and corn alone day. Um, corn for the corn god. What I love about the. Uh, I love all of the armies thematically. Uh, they're all great. I, I think they're all very well done. Um, I love. Um, Beastmen, and I love Dark Elves. Those are my two armies I'll be playing in the Old World, at least to start. I'm going to start with the Beastmen army first, and then if I have the time, I will be uh, completing. I have uh, a bunch of models for a Dark Elf army. Uh, they're my two favorite, and I will probably also be painting up a uh, Orcs and Goblins army as well, f with a focus on trolls, because I enjoy the, the troll aspect there. And they are releasing a Troll Horde army uh, in a couple months. He stands! There we go! Yeah. Bring me my blue windbreaker! <laughs> I also like the lizard men. I think that's very fun. Uh, dwarfs for me, all the way. And then 40k, space oh. dwarfs, all the way. <laughs> 40k, um, I like the harlequins. And I like uh, gene stealer cults. Oh, the, those are my favorite, uh, my favorite armies. I, I always liked, for 40k, I built space marines, but... I love the Tyranid because they remind me of, you know, uh, the Zerg from, uh, from what you call it. And I also yeah. like the Tau because they remind me of the Protoss from, uh, oh, yeah. from StarCraft. So That's was exactly a, was where huge, they got both of those, yeah, uh, I was a huge StarCraft, StarCraft guy, so obviously I was a big fan of Tyranids and Tau. Um, but I never actually got to play with those models, really, or build oh, any shit. of them. Um, I built Little Pride Rock that my guy's supposed to stand on. Oh, nice. So my question, here's what I was thinking, Rich. And I guess the question is that, like, we don't have the bases yet. Well, uh, let's look at the rules. Because what I would do is I would actually glue Pride Rock to the base and then glue him to the base You're of Pride Rock than I am, if I was going to go in that order. Bad. You know what I mean? Instead of yeah. trying to glue glue Pride Rock to my, my, my wolf and then put them all on the base. That's just my two cents. I don't know how you feel uh, about it. Um, Jamie, can you pull up vampire counts? <laughs> I, I prefer, uh, when it comes to uh, Space Marines, I prefer the Chaos Marines, I think in general. As a rule, and I really enjoy um, the Emperor's Children. Oh. I enjoy Alpha Legion's color scheme. Um, what is the? What is like the? There's a vampire. It's not Chaos Marine. They're evil Space Marines that are vampires. Blood Legion. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to like yeah. be able to pull that out of nowhere. Anyway. You aren't for some cool kidding stuff. about how good these are. Holy oh fuck. yeah, buy invest. The, yes. Invest in the quality clippers because this god hand is twenty five by fifty millimeter. Damn. I don't. We'll they should to be order some of those. Yeah, we'll okay. have to order some of those. All right. Well, then I probably won't do any more with this particular model. Yeah, I think that's all you need. I, that's how I, I. I don't want to try to glue him to this and then. No, get it I would. The I would. I would paint it. Separate. I'd rather get them. Yeah. I subassemble when it comes to the bases. Or I like put to it paint all together. Guys, yeah. and then I put them on. They do have to do the bases and put them on. Okay. You can do it either way. Yeah. Um, but if you want to do anything kind of fancy with the bases, it's a little easier to These like make so the base separately. 
God, okay. It's so long I'm gonna use the restroom and then I'm gonna keep going. Oh, this guy's got his own little pride rock too. He's got a second little pride rock. Oh, yeah, okay. Are All there right. any rules for like the alpha? Are they different? Actually, I don't know. He's called the champion. Yeah. I just don't yeah, every know. Every unit has a champion. I'd have yeah. to look at the rules themselves here. Uh, he's the Doom Wolf. Oh, it's a Doom Wolf. Yeah. Glass. Doom Wolf. Any unit may upgrade one model to a Doom Wolf, which champion. is the champion of the unit. Okay. 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 Pretty cool. Okay. Uh, the Doom Wolf has an extra attack. Same stat line otherwise. And uh, isn't there a general rule for having a champion? Yeah, they do, like leadership uh, and stuff. I'll be right back. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep cranking on these. Uh, keep cranking. I am sub. I'm also. I'm, I'm batching. So basically, I built all. I got all the bodies going. Then what I normally do is I build the champion, the uh, the musician, and the standard bearer. Those three units in a uh, those the models in a unit is called having full command, uh, and I want to basically have that. And so when I once I build the uh, champion, the uh, musician, and the standard bearer, I will then uh, basically kind of batch build all of the other um, miniatures. So you can see I've gotten to body, arms, and weapon. I just need heads on. Uh, um, so I need a couple more. Have some headless goatmen with axes. Uh, I have two more that I need arms and a weapon for. And then that's it. And then I need heads, and then I'll be done with all my best of gore. Come on. It was the best of gore, it was the worst of gore. Uh, for fuck... What was it? For fuck... I'm trying to see your full name. For fuck's sake. Five dollars super chat, thank you so much. Uh, is there a character you played before streaming slash videos when we never met that you missed playing as? What were they like? Yes, I do. Uh, it was not before we started streaming, but it was an off... It was a home game. Our only home campaign that never was streamed in any way. Uh, I played Boomy. Oh, Booming uh, Peak. Booming Peak. His nickname was Boomy, and he was a tabaxi monk. A snow leopard tabaxi. A snow leopard tabaxi monk. Uh, Which is actually what uh, Golden Lotus was. With oh, his, And everyone thought right. she was a white tiger. Yeah. But she was a snow leopard. Was this for the... Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh... Campaign that was a like a modified 3.5 Red Handed Doom. Red yeah. Handed Doom. Yeah. yeah. I didn't and know so, if we could name it. I knew. I remembered the name. I oh, I just fucking okay, whatever. Um, and so I I took a lot of inspiration from the Pandaren and uh, and Wow. Boomy. So yeah, Boomy. I knew exactly who you were talking Peak. about. Boomy uh, Peak. Andy played. Um, uh, oh God. Uh, so Victor Brindley Dane. Brindley, Brindley Dane. Dane. Brinley Dane. Brinley Dane. God, what a great name. Yeah, really good. Fuck, I gotta reuse that at some point. That actually could be my fucking, depending on uh, what I roll, a Wolf yeah. character. No, 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 I, that could be your character for uh, St. Saint, Saint Jude. He's more of a paladin. I was gonna, I do, I could play a paladin as my second character, but I think I want a cleric if we're gonna do Band of Brothers cleric shit. Let's all have clerics to start and paladins as our backup. We gotta, we I will get, avenge all the clerics. I, yeah, exactly. I love that. 68, 68, 67, and 69. Nice. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's 67. Man, you are a batchy man. Yep. I'm batching it out. Can someone help me look for my Especially pauldron? Especially for big units like this. Uh, your cauldron? Your pauldron. 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 There, there, there's, there's a oh. tiny little dwarf pauldron. Did he escape? He just, when did he escape? Uh, I don't know, like 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. So it wasn't oh, last night. That's, check the, that's check fucking the... gone. It's gonna be, it's caught in the spruce somewhere. Say check underneath Shake the them out, shake them out, shake them out. It had glue on it, too. Oh, this bomber is gonna be so fucking sick, bro. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that Is that next. a little bulge right there, or is that his arm? This? This is his arm. Oh. I need tweezers to hold these fucking oh. things. Did it knock under the, like, under I, this? Do you have, uh, like, holders? Because these are fucking tiny parts. No. Can you just get Actually, your glue on your hand, or what? Yeah, I kinda, oh, let's get it on the finger. I'll basically pick it up as daintily as possible. And then I'll just touch it to it until it can hold and sit there, and then I press very gingerly. Maybe it fell on the ground and I didn't know. It's notice. possible. Of all things. 67. Okay, so I'm gonna set this guy aside. He's gonna chill up there. Everybody can admire him as he howls at the moon. Ivy Myron. Yeah. Rock at the moon. Howl at the moon is also a uh Isn't that a uh, uh, a karaoke joint? Yes. In uh where is it? Is it Ocean City? Yeah, it is in Ocean City, yeah. Or or is, is it, it somewhere else that we go? Howl of the Moon is a joint. I've always heard about it, I've never been. Yeah. Is it in Bethesda? That's Maybe. the that's the barking dog. The barking dog, okay. 
Wow, that came together beautifully. Oh, well, there's 70. I'm just like finding all the pieces in the wrong order, but that's okay. Did they give me extra pauldrons? I feel like they have to. They give you so many I extra I don't think so. I, have, I, think they, I think they gave me the exact number oh of pauldrons. Oh my god, your Samwise is gonna be so upset with you. Just don't tell him. Yeah, just don't oh, tell him. Oh, wait. No, these are the pauldrons of the Iron Drakes. I can't use their rune. Yeah, you can't use their rune. That's, that, that would be. It's a dueling piano that's, bar? That's heresy. That would be fucking heresy. It's the, it's the, it's the, the Horus Horus heresy. heresy. Yes, yeah. Howl at the Moon is a dueling piano bar. Yeah, that's that's a, right. It's, it's very much like Bobby McKee's. That's what Wishy Wassy said. That's right. That's right. I couldn't remember if it was karaoke or if it was. Holy fuck. How many hmm. points is a Chaos Chosen, I wonder? Ooh. All right, so that's 70. What did I just say that was? I'll tell you. 70? 70. <clears throat> so ex Duke. Richard, can you read what ex Duke said? As far as missing, like, not ha uh, using the wrong room. It's a grudge! <laughs> Get in the book! <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely going in the book. It's it's going fire. in the book. God, a frickin' Iron Breaker using an Iron Drake that pauldron? Hell no. That is a grudge. I need 65? No. I don't need 65. Uh... Chosen. Nam Shabek says, as you continue watching these guys, you're able to tell the differences between Rich and Mike's voice. I will say, I have known Richie my entire life, 16. literally, and there will be times where I will be listening to current and old content, yep. and I'm, I have no idea if it's me or Richie talking. I don't think that will ever... I don't blame you. Unless that one of us I'm has sorry, that, that thing. Sucks. You know the, a pirate software, that Thor guy? Yeah. yeah. Unless what that thing happens to one of us. What, that, so his voice him? is so deep because his voice changed about... I think he either said it was five or eight years he ago. He was like his voice 35, and all of a sudden he went through like a second puberty. And his voice what? is like hella, yeah. hella deep now. Yeah. Oh my god. And apparently it's something that can like happen. Oh, um, he, he said he's no. he said he's good, he's all checked out, it's not like there's anything wrong with him, but he's... My he's like, I'm actually gonna go through reverse, and my voice is gonna get high, I'm like Mickey Mouse. Hey! Hey guys! Welcome to 60, Shroud over Salt Marsh. Yeah! Uh -huh. 67. That'd be a real swell! Join us on this haunted voyage. Oh. Can you check no. all your shit, Mike? It might be amongst your gores. Amongst the gores is my <laughs> romance novel. Oh, did I make it's actually a very dark mistake? Uh no no no, I think I'm okay. No, 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 no. I think I'm alright. I think I'm alright. Nobody panic. You, you think it would like would have panicking. Would have like snapped. It like shot this way. Oh, oh no. Oh shit. And it had glue on it? Yeah. It had glue. Oh, oh no, it could have fused anything. Oh no, I made a mistake. Could have fused anything, Rich. I know. Could be in like my the undercarriage of my gores, or my ungores, or my best of gores. Not the undercarriage. <laughs> or my bull gores. 68. 67, 68. This is the problem. This guy shouldn't Folks. have been cut out. What have I done? You can just, you know, keep him oh, no. somewhere safe. I'll never find him, though. I don't know what number he is. You know what I mean? Like, isn't that going to be a problem? You can just, I mean, you, they, they do a pretty good job like representing what it looks like. Oh no, I have to just throw the whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> Start over. Um, what have oh, I, I was done? So close to. Oh, did, he, did it jump in here? Maybe. They have. This is when everything starts to fall apart, folks. Things fall apart. The Dow Wolf. Labeling your shit. The Dow Wolf. Ragnaros asks. Have y'all ever used any other TTRPG game rules? City of Mist, Shadow Art, and Fate. We've played Woofrup, Warhammer Fantasy World uh, I played. I love Pirate Borg. Check out Limithron.com. Limithron.com. Our friend Luke writes it and does all of the art. And if you. So if you look up Limithron, um, I feel like I can tell the story. I don't think it's a secret where Luke started being an artist during COVID in 2020. Yeah, it's insane. Less than four years ago, he started practicing art. And now if you look at fucking Pirate Borg, that's all of his art. So it is never too fucking late. And he's like, he's, he's our age, a little older than us, I think. So, um. It's never too fucking late should be um, in our uh, like visual art. It really should be. It's never too fucking late. It's never too fucking oh, late. Oh, Hill Dilly 719 Ah, oh, cool. I saw you guys playing Kill Team at Gen Con. Cool. Oh, the hello. You get to play War Cry. Um, I... <laughs> I think Andy got sniped for 8 million damage. Uh, Reed, Reed is a dirty yellow-bellied bastard, and uh, he played like a coward. And, uh... 
it wasn't until I led my uh, my my champion out into the fields of battle like a real champion would do like real champion. that I was told that if my champion died, uh, I instantly lost the game. And his he had just had some shitty little sniper that was hidden behind a building. Yeah, I had that same faction. One Derek, and I had my the, dude. Derek Green and I had the same faction, so we played a mono match or a uh, 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 mirror match. I still have those minis. Oh yeah, I need to bring those. Yeah. Um. They were the spider faction. Those are also slaves to darkness. So you can, so they're chaos tired. warriors. I was so tired. Before. I was playing like the chosen of Hashut. So oh, worship the dark, yeah. like Babylonian cow, a bull basically god. Moloch. Uh, yes, basically, basically Moloch, Moloch that the chaos dwarves worship. Um, and I was against Mace, and I was like destroying his force, but he did a good job protecting his like main barbarian king. And then my champion went up against his, and then he just like. Basically, did three attacks and chopped my head off. Yeah. And oh, sick. Like at the very end, he had like one guy left. Yeah. I had like six guys, but because he could like mock Garami. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, it was uh, so I, fun. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I so much fun. prefer the game style of Warhammer or even Age of Sigmar to something like Kill Team or. Uh, I like war games. War I, I, I want to like yeah. put armies against each other, you know? I mean, I still had a ton of fun. Um, I still loved it. But I want to play. Fucking Mordheim. That's what I want to play. Oh, me too. Mordheim me too. looks like so much fucking fun. One, two, three, so, four. I just uh, made 70. I, there are a number of one-shot systems that I want to play. There are a number of systems that I would love to play. Um, but the system that I've... I'm moving on from whatever this is. Um, yeah, it's a little intense. That yeah, was a little intense. <laughs> I was getting uh, nauseous. <laughs> but the uh, one RPG that I've gotten a chance to play that I would love to uh, tackle again is Lancer, where <laughs> oh my god, oh yeah, you, talk about if this. you want to play a mech yeah, robot seriously. of any variety, if you want to play a Gundam or you want to play like a armored core jock uh, USA robot Pacific Rim style, or if you want to play, you can Figure play any mech that you want. This is to, eleven, and it feels so customizable to be able to make the mech. Um, it's a beautiful system. It's so crunchy. Chat. Later tonight, when I say I can't remember what number this piece 11. is, it's 11. 11. Please, someone in chat, remind me. No one reminded. Tell them it's a different piece. This is what I like to call the Andy sticky note. I just rely on chat to remind me of things. Yep. It's 11. 1 1. 11. I, ma I, I made a mistake because it was next to the piece that I needed to chop out, and I went too quick and I chopped out the wrong piece. So now I know. It's 11. Don't tell him. Help me. Please. You guys with your new sprues, I don't have any numbers. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'll look, you, I just look at it and figure it out. Good for you, man. You learn it. You, you, get, you, get, you get a hand of it, uh, the hang of that. Is the Babadook on your shirt? Oh, I don't know. It's a wizard. <laughs> Our mom got <laughs> Look at that. that looks I don't like know what's on horrific, it. Okay. It looks like a cross yeah. between the Quiznos -like mascot hey, and the Babadook. <laughs> they got a chili bar! <laughs> wow. Remember the period of time when we were still captive to te cable television and we absolutely had to listen to the most annoying fucking uh, commercials on the planet? Yep. Because that's the only way that they could That compete. was an amazing commercial. It was an amazing time. Okay, now Cookies I need and 72 Cookies and 73. And cream. I... Berries and cream. Berries and cream. Chat. Berries and cream. <laughs> if you want to send us anything, if you could send us the full line of episode one collectible cups and their toppers, from Pizza Hut, no. Taco Bell, and KFC. Don't, don't I, that, that is what I want. I have all the Batman Forever glass cups from Taco Bell. <laughs> That's Bell. fucking incredible. I have all of them. <laughs> I still have them. None of them were I just want to drink Kidman. out of a Watto cup. I don't know why they too didn't much have a Nicole Kidman glass. That would have been the one that everyone wanted because that's Nicole Kidman's hottest movie by a wide margin. Excuse me? <laughs> her hottest movie. Yeah, it's her sexiest film. Wow. I don't even know what to say, Derek. This is really hot takes with Derek. Hot takes. Hot dicks. Hot, ones. Hot, hot, dicks. Dicks hot, hot dicks. dicks with Derek. Hot dicks with Derek. Hot dicks with Derek. Hot dicks. Okay, I need to. I need to like. I need to. You gotta find your guy, Sherlock Holmes. Seventy-two shit. and seventy-three. Um. There we go. Seventy-three. So you know, it's one of those things where we're just. Vi oh, I figured it out. Chat. 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 Uh. Um. Chat. Can we ban this guy? <laughs> Let's be like a streamer. Or like a streamer. Yeah! It's, it's not in this quadrant. 73. I'm looking for 72. Maybe it's in this quadrant. Let me check. Oh, I got it. I got it. It's Guys, funny. my best of gores are gonna be the best of them. Bane? 
Oh man, we've got some Warhammer. 72. Um, Elisa Ligu says that you seem to have an incredible understanding of creatures and monsters. I'm interested in what you would classify Hector Mancrev as. A cryptid? If so, there's a possibility of him being in the Green Mirror later project. Um, I think Hector Mancrev will return. Ba 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 ba. I think. Ba, 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 but not. I think cryptid is the Avenger Sans' favorite word. Yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think cryptid. Um, is Avantress Vam's favorite word. It is um, a good cryptid. All right, I have my whole cryptid, second cryptid. dire wolf uh, chopped out. I, I think technically, by definition, he is a cryptid. Yeah. Because he's a, a, a folklore creature that the, the Toa thought didn't exist. Yeah. And he did. I don't know, man. That's funny as fuck. He's, he's a combination of the silence from uh, Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Who, Who. Yeah. and uh, crab fun. and a man. <laughs> and the crab people from South Park. Right. Crab people. Crab people. Taste like crab. Talk like, <laughs> Talk people. like people. Crab people. Crab people. All right, now I'm going to clean these guys up. Fuck. Something gooey. So, give me something gooey. Give me something gooey. Give me something gooey. Give me something That would be crazy if it, like, food. It might be gone. How no, it's not possible? gone. It's not gone. I mean, do we check the floor real good? Because that's going to be a whole nother thing. Like, if it fell in between all that shit, you know? Yeah. Rich, have you considered the Dwarfen Realms? In the Dwarfen Realms. That's where it may have gone, is all I'm saying. Sometimes when you drop things, they just spontaneously implode upon themselves. Yeah, no. And I they're gone forever. I think it's just gone forever. It happens. It's like me and my socks. I, I mean, I so Rose. clearly saw it shoot right over this direction. It's so gotta I, be then. Get up then. No, no, it's gotta yeah. be around. It's just like, you know, it, it's just, they're tiny little pieces, and they're when there's this much what gray plastic like? on the table, it's hard to miss one It's piece. just a little, like, concave shoulder pauldron. A little concave soldier pauldron. <laughs> Soldier cauldron. That is like my shoulder. Shoulder pauldron. That is my ska band. <laughs> little concave shoulder pauldron. Who else would... I feel like that would be a different genre of oh, music. Oh, would it not? I don't think ska fits that. Uh, maybe not. I don't know ska very well. I just know it because... <laughs> Magfest has a lot of ska fans. So I just... I see it at Magfest. You guys said you saw a ska tune there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was there. there. Mm -hmm. I didn't run into him. Yeah, Jerry, he's fucking... Uh, he did a whole thing um, at the jam clinic. Oh, uh, that's tight. Is it a clinic where they? I'm gonna play lift music this up. I have a feeling that's under here. Yeah, they... the jam clinic is where they basically anybody Fuck. can drop in and jam, and uh, you mean, know. Not the food, though. Excuse me. Not the food. <laughs> Derek is making a pun. I'm not making a pun. I'm asking it was the a best legitimate agor. question. It was the best agor. It was the I worst agor. I didn't know if they agor. were talking about jam or jam. All right, that's legit. What is the difference? One is the thing that you do with musical instruments and people. And another is a preserve, a variety of fruit and or vegetables. CK Rabble asks, uh, what is your go-to music slash, oh, to write slash create to? Oh. Oh. I cannot write for Dungeons and Dragons to, uh, or like fantasy writing or creative writing like that if there are lyrics in the music. I say I'm a big lo-fi guy when I really have to concentrate because I don't want to be distracted by the music, but I want just something on in the background. I like lo-fi. When I have to do, like, finances or uh, hard work work, I ha I literally put on, like, the SimCity soundtrack and other city building soundtracks, uh, which put me in the mood for, like, building and coding and stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to creative stuff, I put on a thematic soundtrack that has no lyrics. If I'm driving, that's when the lyrics show up. That's when I'll get out the power stuff. When it comes to creativity, I will listen to like video game music or, you know, soundtracks that evoke the theme of what I'm writing or creating. That's pretty critical for me. Yep. Man. This is coming together. This You're your first chaos so is chosen. Well, do I want 55, 54, 53? 55 looks pretty 
like a hideous man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are playing Wars of Chaos. <laughs> That's them by definition. <laughs> okay, yeah, hideous man. <laughs> hideous oh, man. Hideous man. You're playing hideous man. The army. I would tell them to put a helmet on, but these horns are going to get in the way. You know. <laughs> You're playing Hideous Men the Army. I can't wait. I thought that was Beastmen. No, I'm badass beasts. Let me let me see. Let me see. I think mean, they're kind of ugly. Kind of cool. Yeah, that's a much handsomer man. Yeah. <laughs> Must have to play ugly people the army. You are literally playing you ugly men the army. Everybody wearing some fucking. You can swap to elves no. if you want. No. No, this is, this is a nightmare. Everybody's wearing fucking bags over their heads. That is literally ugly people. It's called a helmet. No, it's not. <laughs> Jeremiah, why don't you go worship chaos some more? Brush your teeth. Yeah. The best part about them is that the helmets aren't for their protection. It's yeah. for our protection. Yeah. <laughs> They're very, <laughs> very considerate. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Oh, oh, shit. Holy shit. Uh, uh, what book would you like to see uh, Muppets do? What book? What book would I like yeah, to like, see Yeah, like Treasure do? Island. Oh, or... The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would fucking work really well. Yeah. That would work extremely well. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Oh, oh shit. Uh, Les Miserables. That fucking good. Oh, Les Miserables, Les Miserables would be fucking, fucking fantastic. Amazing. All right, Les Miserables, yeah. um, the book, not the musical. Yeah, of course. Um, Brave New World. Oh, what God. A, can you imagine <laughs> how fucking awful Animal the ending farm. would be? Come on, Miss Piggy. Animal <laughs> Just do more drugs about it. <laughs> oh. yeah, Muppet orgies and shit. Yeah. Oh, oh, Muppets Jesus. are equal, but some are more equal than others. <laughs> it's just Gonzo having hung himself at the end, turning northwest to north. <laughs> God, that's dark. <laughs> Alright, that's how that book fucking ends. Spoiler Spoilers alert. for the end of Brave New World. Yeah, yeah. Read that shit. Yeah. If you've gotten through fucking Holy middle shit. school. Yeah, read fucking Brave New World. It's fucking great. Holy shit. Um, that is funny as fuck, dude. Yeah, they should just do the trifecta. A trilogy where they do Brave New World, 1984, and then Animal, Animal Farm. Farm. Yeah. Animal Farm, yeah. That'd be fucking awesome. I would, I would watch that. I would I'd watch, watch yeah. the shit. Like I would that. love that. It'd be a little dark, but yeah, yeah, I'm down. It'd be really dark. Uh, but it would be, I think, appropriate. They could do it. They would find a way to, to make it light. I, but they also go pretty dark. Like, yeah, uh, they're not afraid of Christmas it. Christmas Carol goes pretty fucking hard. At oh the end. yeah. I mean, they're like they have the whole scene about he's watching all of these people like fight for his stuff because he, like, he didn't have a family to leave it to, and they're just like. Saying what a miserable fuck he was, yeah, and he has to like a process that. And then he turns, he turns to the fucking ghost of future, and he, and he's like, "Please, spirit, please, a, a tiny Tim. He's he's gonna be all right, isn't he?" <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm I'm Michael Kine. <laughs> you probably didn't know that. <laughs> God damn it, Derek. In it, in it. Oh man, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this pauldron. If you're a real Giga Chad will get you some green clay or green, what is it, green? Green stuff. Oh. Green stuff oh. and make the pauldron. It wasn't was your shit! It was right here! It wasn't your fucking I shit! Why it. did you scrape your shit with your hands? I literally looked through you all of it. No, I, I bitch. helped him. I picked up a bunch yeah, of them. We you, did it together. But you can't pick it up. You need to swipe it because it had glue on it, so it was stuck to the well, screw. Well, I've got to get this on immediately. Oh my god. Rich. Rich, rich, rich. I have to use the. Rich, the rich, knife rich. is too dangerous for this one. I have to use. The I'll lose a finger if I room. use the knife. Uh, what movie are. Oh, uh, we saw this. Thank you, Too Beef. That's funny. Uh, or not Too Beef. Mikey! If someone was looking into doing a Sarnax cosplay, what are the vital components for something like that? Lantern. Brown robe! Lantern. Lantern. And the fingernails. You gotta do fingernails. You gotta do fingernails. You, Everything else is optional. your fingernails are not long enough to impede your daily life, <laughs> they are not long <laughs> enough. I will say it again. If your fingernails are not long enough to impede your daily life, they are not long enough. That is the Sarnax gospel. That's excellent. It is as um, Garrick Can you said. mark as complete? In the holy book. I'm gonna get Gary X. Cobalt Blue Waters. Another question for all. Having just finished making a Witchlight animation. Oh. Wow, wonderful. Thank what's you. What's something that you can put together? Uh, what's something that you put together that you're particularly proud of? 
The Crooked the Moon. Crooked <laughs> Pre-order now. <laughs> and the Crooked Moon. Holy shit. .com. The Crooked Moon dot com. Folk, add folk horror to your D&D game. Add folk horror to your D&D game. The Crooked Moon dot com. That. I feel like I did a really good spiritual homage to the shitty YouTuber apology. I feel like I did a pretty good job. For my two videos, my parody, I feel, was pretty funny. I'm proud of both of them. And I used them both to shill. Good. I beat the algorithm. I really, you know, it's like, oh, I do it because, like, oh, God, why do you do this? I do it because it works. If I didn't right. work. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. That's right. Susan YouTube made it this way. <laughs> Take it up with her. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Susan. Thanks a lot, uh, Susan YouTube. <clears throat> Midi Cat. Hey, guys, which Greetings. of your characters do you think would be the most fun to translate into Warhammer versions? Oh. Uh, Marius is a witch was, hunter. That was going to be my first pick. Like, snap off Marius. Or like a blood knight. I'd have to change oh it. Well, right, God. depending on what version of Marius, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. there's definitely a uh, a witch hunter version. Like, pre-vampire Marius would be a witch hunter. Post-vampire Marius would be, like, corrupted by the winds of chaos and, yeah. like, be some sort of a fucking... Could be a blood knight, man. Yeah. Um, I would love to see Sarnax, but instead of Garrix, it's the great plan of the old ones. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I feel like that'd be very. Fun. Sarnax could be a good. Uh, he would be. Witch a, he would be a disciple of Sotek. Yeah, he would. Sarnax yeah. would be a disciple of Sotek, and he would tend the salamanders, and he and would, the spawning pools and the spawning pools and spawn some salamanders, and he would sing benevolent hatchings benevolent day hatchings to all of day. the new skinks and that he would were be born. one of those. He would be. He would be a salamander handler, and he would just get killed instantly if you look at a salamander. Um, that is, I think, what I would do with Sarnax. Uh, Yornir would be a brown wizard. Uh... Yes. Like a hedge witch? Yeah, just, or uh, a uh, uh, yeah, the... The, the Lord of Beasts. Basically, he would be, I think, beyond a hedge witch. I think oh, he, like, he would be a full-blown brown gotcha. wizard, which they call shaman. Um... Like the green wizards or druids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarnax? I think he'd be a skink. I don't think he'd be a Saurus. I agree. He'd be a skink. <clears throat> and skinks are available with the Lustria expansion of Wolfrip. So I could roll a skink. Oh, I shit. bet I could roll. I, I don't know. How would that fucking matter? <laughs> 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 Say it again, Sarnax. My Sigma! My <laughs> Sigma! Lizard man, kill it! <laughs> He's been twisted by chaos! He's our friend. Leave him alone. <laughs> Does the lack of helmet have any mechanical significance? No. No. Okay. Just what badass Although thing. you should probably build a musician and a... Uh, your musician and your champion should have badass helmets. There Is should be rules for how to, to make your champion, how to make your... They don't have standard bearers. Yeah. Are you yeah, kidding? It's, it's they should. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they do. They should all have... They should, yeah. There should be a got, standard got a big, bear. I got a yeah, yeah. It's good, yeah. I think the standard bear, the musician, and the champion should all have helmets. Uh, if I, I were you, like, hey, hey, I think you should all have helmets. If I were you, I would not have a single one that has an ugly, stupid fucking ball. Yeah, pack. please, for the love of God, they should to all have me, helmets. So this guy's dead. <laughs> He's dead! To me, Chosen have crazy fucking you gotta helmets. Have, yeah, Chosen have giant helmets. Otherwise, why are you a Chosen? Guys! I, I, I've, been paid a, I've been paid a lot to be an actor in this TV all show. Right, I don't want to put on my helmet. Where can I, where can I put this bit? Um, Just put it beside everything. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I'll put it in the bit jar, which is over by my on my desk. Oh, uh, we have a bit jar. <laughs> Thanks for the bit jar. Thanks for the biddies. Thanks for the biddies. Thanks for the bit jar. Oh, man. Uh, we have a fun time, folks. Quoth the Raven. If you were to become a cryptic, what would your name be? And what would you be known My for? name would be Derek the Cleric. <laughs> now you guys are just fucking with us. <laughs> no comment. My uh, name Nam Shebek. Friend. Sorry, this is already asked. Andy, do you mean, uh, how do you maintain your Torbeck voice? I lose my voice after a couple hours. Um, no, Torbeck is actually surprisingly not difficult on my larynx. The only time that it was really bad on my larynx was, was one time I played, um, when I was getting over a sinus infection, and that's the only time I felt like, because my voice was already, my throat was already just kind of dry and scratchy. That was the only time that Torbeck's voice was bad on my larynx. It's actually one of the easier voices to do that doesn't like fuck up my voice too bad. Uh, Weirdly enough, I don't know. 
Uh, Black wings, not a question. Uh, it was I will be getting a Crooked Moon hat and put orange spikes on it. Amazing. See you Fuck at yes. Mag next year with Let's Sharpies go. in hand again. I love that. I love um, that. Did the donated chickens make it to the ceiling flock? Not yet. Uh, TBD. Love you guys. It was a blast meeting up and chatting with you. Thank you. It was good seeing you, you as well. You. It was awesome seeing we had you. We a great time. That's two magfists okay. in a row. And, uh, I'm going to assemble my second wolf here. Okay. Uh, because I have... Yeah, you're, a right. you're flying past me. Well, I have a lot less contact points on some of these, and like as I'm kind of cleaning the them up... Points. I don't know, I'm just really taking my time. They're going. Yeah, We're in no rush. You're, yeah, it's, you're in no rush. It's really about how, how... It's about the process. It's not about the end goal. It's about the process of the hobby. That's why they call it the hobby side of the hobby. I never said... Thought that anyone would ever say no rush on this stream, but here we are. That's funny. Uh, Illy Silly Goose says, "Do you find it difficult slash miss playing games off stream? Has it changed the feeling of playing since you started streaming, or has the audience has grown, and it's become your job?" Um, I I would say that I like quote unquote miss playing home games, but like. Probably not in the way that you're intending that question to be. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, uh, how I would answer that similarly is I know that there are a lot of folks that not have sort of you think you are. burnt out of the industry as content creators. And the, the one of the talking points is like, once it became a job, then it lost all joy. Which I don't feel like that. I've I don't never like that felt like that no. in a million no, years. And for me, I love that it's my work. That my productive work yeah. Is this is yeah. what to me? We it do. makes it better. It makes it more yes. fun. Yes, it makes it, sure. makes it it makes it way better. Right? But when I but I do miss it in that like I we were talking about when we played that little Wolfer up one shot. It yep. just hit different. Well, and it's one of it's those things different. where a home game you can just you can be goofy. You can take breaks whenever the fuck you want. You can like get up and go get pot belly in the middle of it if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's it, the the freedom and like some of the jokes we made were right. really funny that right. we couldn't make on stream. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just uh, like. Uh, that's that, funny. It, being having that laid back time as just bros like slinging dice, yeah, and doing silly Eat voices. Bob Belly and yeah. slinging dice, it's just, baby. It just hits a little different. It hits, it's it all it hits different. different. Yeah, it's different. I have a home game uh, that I use to play test ideas and adventures for the Crooked Moon or for Icebound or for really stream and stuff. So I'll like have uh, play test stuff like that. But it really does just feel like a home game. It's a joy to play in those kinds of games just as, as much as it is to play on stream. So I completely agree with everything that the rest of the gang's talking about. It just feels like more of the good same vibes. And you know, we take the role play and the story as serious, like you know, or whether we're into the story and the role play just as much as we are off camera as we oh are my God. off camera. So, Hell yeah. You know. Yeah, that's, I mean, all we do is just turn the cameras on. Like, if if we weren't doing this in front of a bunch of cameras and microphones, it would be the same fucking voices and and epic moments and lore drops and all of that stuff. It would be uh, exactly, exactly the same. Great answers all around, everybody. Great. High five. Oh. We got the, we did a chicken update already. Lego, love it or nah? What's your favorite set? Vintage, retired, or current? What? Um. Oh man. I was in Star Wars very heavily right when they first released the very first Star Wars Lego kit. And that was awesome. Oh. Um, I will say Snowbase was awesome. I loved Snow, or what was it called? Arctic Hoth, Base? Hoth, Hoth. No, 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 that's separate Not from the, Star Wars. Um, I don't know oh, they were like, it was almost like a rescue thing. It was like, kind it, of. it was like a, like, like does science know what I'm talking about? Science and researchers yes, and like rescue like, people it, and shit. Yes, it was like I a, do know what you're talking Arctic about. research station. I do know what you're talking oh, about, yeah. weirdly enough. And you made the little snow vehicles. God, those were cool. You guys are going to laugh at me and think that I'm memeing, but I'm not. I was a huge Bionicle man. I, but no, I was sick as fuck. That yeah. was my like. That shit was sick as fuck. I had a bunch of random Legos stuff that I would build, but I was never into like, oh, this theme of Legos is my thing until fucking Bionicle happened, and I was like, I was all in on the lore of Bionicles, man. Oh yeah. Come on, you little nubby. Um, a lot of people uh, have asked if Toa was referencing Bionicle. That's funny. Yeah. He was oh, answer, that's yes. funny. Yeah, I yeah, would not have put Toa's, those things together. Toa's one of them, and yeah. Kamanui, I think, was one of them, and, you know. Oh, God. Um, good shit. That's funny as hell. Um, I liked the pirates. I was going to say pirates. I'm done. So I think what I'm learning as I'm doing this and putting them together 
is that when I think that it's like this, it's cleaned up, I probably could do a bit more, but like some of it was like some of it was hard to get to. Like when I was doing it, especially on these little guys, it's harder to clean yeah, them up without losing hard. my fingertips. Yeah, so like, let's look at this guy. He's right. actually pretty good. He's not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. So he could, I mean, even while he's put together, you can kind of just like, you know, knock down. I probably much. need to hit him again. Because right. sometimes when the pieces are separate and I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this is probably as good as it's going to get for now. But then I put them together, I'm like, oh. He could probably use and a little bit more love. It doesn't need to be perfect. You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't have to be... Yeah. You don't have to let perfect be the enemy of, of the good, but, like... Sure. It, it, you know, it's your mileage may vary, whatever you're looking for, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. It was the best of gore. Uh, what's best. one show that you could watch over and over again and never get bored of? Mind's Gravity Falls. Oh, that's a good one. Avatar. Yeah, uh, yeah, Avatar Last yeah, Airbender is, really, is up there. Um, Deadwood and Arcane are the obvious ones for me. I, I mean, I've seen Deadwood probably ten times. Yeah, Deadwood and is. I my adore answer. it every single Deadwood time. Is the answer, yeah. I've seen Arcane probably six times, and oh, that was wow. in the span of Holy like shit, dude. you know, probably a year. I really um, enjoyed Breaking Bad, start to finish. That's, that's Did you watch that again, though? Yeah. Like, I watched yeah, it I've, twice. I've, I've rewatched it uh, three, okay. times, three okay. times. I don't know if I need more than twice. Uh, I need I need to rewatch Next Generation. It's been a long while since I've, I've started and done a full every episode one to season ten finale. Um, and I don't know if I could do Deep Space Nine again, but I've been kind of craving it lately. Um, not Voyager. Not unless I did like a highlight reel where I just picked like the best three episodes from each season. There's some shows that I really like. If it's on, I know I can turn it on and I'm gonna laugh. Mm. Canada Hill's one of those. Um, American Dad, weirdly, I think is is just on par better than uh, Family Guy. Uh, Futurama. Um, this is the episode else? about Susan Boyle. Yeah, that was that was awful. That was really stupid. They were trying to do like the whole South Park thing of it being really relevant. They were trying relevant. to make it comment on pop culture, and they realized, oh shit, it takes us a year to make something. Yeah, this isn't really like and, our strong suit. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like he's got the South Park turn around to be like three days or something. Yeah, it's it's, it's less than a week. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, it's insane. Which has got to be unheard of. Like, yeah. I just can't even imagine. Um, and all the cartoon cartoons. Like an episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie would come on, and I yeah. would just fucking it. It still holds up. Um, Chowder, Chow. Oh my god, Mike Chowder. and I watched like the first seven episodes of Chowder the other month, and holy, I was fuck. howling. I was. I, howling. I, I, I don't know tears. Still. It's a cart. It's an old cartoon. It was like kind of like right before um, the era of Adventure Time and regular show. Yeah, it's kind of in this weird in yes. between limbo with Flapjack. Yes, it, it shared the same sort of limbo space that Flapjack did. That's how I feel about Gumball. Anytime Gumball's uh, on, oh, I'm yeah. oh like, my this God. is going to be funny as fuck. I don't know Gumball. Like, I've been, I've Me been neither. Episodes, we, like, every only, time I watch and, it's on at conventions, we watch yep, it and conventions. we watch an episode or two, and I am crying with laughter. Yeah. 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 Where we would watch it and we'd just be like, this is the funniest shit we've ever yeah. seen. Like, how have we not yeah. known about this? So I, I will, I, that's going on my list 100%. I need to watch all of Gumball. It's just huh. God tier comedy. Uh, Chowder, what too. The Amazing World of Gumball. It's just goofy um, animated. But shows. what I love about Gumball specifically is every almost every single character has a different animation style. Yes. So like some of them are hand drawn. Like the main family's hand drawn in a certain way and they're cartoony. But then there's like literally like a claymation guy and like a Muppet guy and like a like a car a cutout paper guy and like they're oh, all yeah, different yeah, animation. Yeah, yeah. They all live in the same world. And it just it makes for some really interesting stuff. But they just the jokes that they get away with are the super yeah, ballsy. Yeah, that's like, oh my god, I can't believe they fucking said that shit. Yeah, they're ballsy as fuck. Um, can you show off my bro? Because uh, my bro is yeah. ready to show off. Oh shit! A chaos chosen. Yeah, not by the head. Not by the head. Yeah, I Got exclude him. him, but. Oh, did we miss all this Twitch stuff? Hold on. Probably. Look at this guy. Oh fuck, nightly woe. If you're still here, uh. I think we may have got this one. Yeah, yeah, we got that, movie. We got that, yeah. Uh, but lo dead. Lo Fi Lobo, we didn't get. Sorry about that. 200 bits. Oh, thank you, Lo Fi. For Richie and Mikey, it was nice seeing you guys at MacFest and PAX. Can't wait to see your next panels. You guys uh, and the whole cast are an amazing inspiration for newer DD players like myself. Oh, I was the guy with you. the mustache. Thank you. Great I know exactly. You. I remember yeah. you uh, at both conventions. 
Uh, and yeah, swing by our next panel, our next con. We're, we're at a bunch of them. Um, did we get this super chat here? Where did it go? Uh, for fuck's oh. sake, do you play any video games like Ark? Uh, Andy plays a little bit of Valheim, I think. It's been a long time, but yes, I play a little Valheim. I played Valheim. it for a weekend. I've never, I've never played Ark. Um, I don't think any of us play Rust. Minecraft is, you know, is, is big Terraria guy. Similar, um, but again, I play Terraria like once a year. Uh, I heard that Pal World that just oh, came out it's is, so hot. I want to like into it, just uh, like art. Apparently, just like, it's uh, like it uh, just dunks on every AAA game that's trying to do. So it yeah. it's basically like exposes how much of an awful apologies if you like fucking Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. They fucking suck. Yeah. They are a terrible, terrible, terrible company. They're lazy. Their game is bu buggy and unoptimized. It's lazy. And Pal World shows up and basically dunks on them really hard. And they tried to sue them but realized they couldn't because they basically like, oh, you know, you it's can't your sue own them IP. because it's similar. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, yeah, it's, um, it's legally distinct. <laughs> yep, it's legally distinct, baby. That's so funny. I love that I, all of these yeah. like more that these smaller studios are coming out and just dunking I on these AAA. I love AAA studios getting fucking dunked on. Yeah, I fucking yeah. love that. That's shit. amazing. Where's thirty eight? That's my love language. <laughs> it's AAA video game studios getting fucking dunked on. Should I make Belaga Iron God? You probably could. Where is thirty eight? He's oh, a big shit. inspiration for Bargram. Oh, oh, thirty nine. Yeah. I fucking dunked on that fool. In, uh, He's got War. ghosts. Oh. He has dwarf ghosts. Um, but yes, I I play. I don't I don't know if it's like Ark at all, but uh, Total War Warhammer I played you, over the holiday break. Illy silly. Do you know or have you heard of Avenue Q? If not, please do. <laughs> I have heard of it. I've heard a lot I've of the music. I've seen it twice on Broadway. <clears throat> That's fucking amazing. I'm so jealous. Um, very, to answer very that good. question, I'll respond by going. I'm not wearing underwear today. No, I'm not wearing underwear today. Not that you probably care much about my underwear. Still, nonetheless, I've got to say that I'm not wearing underwear today. <laughs> Get a job. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes, uh, uh, it is one of my favorite musicals of all time. I believe the first time I ever heard of it, there was a Warcraft Machinima to the Internet is for Porn, which yeah. is from Avenue Oh, yeah, my right. God, you're yeah. right. And it so was. we're talking 2005, maybe four. No, probably five. Maybe five or six. Um, so oh I, I heard God. of it that long ago. I just no, I haven't seen and it. And it's, it's one of those things where, like, Richie and I in high school weren't theater kids, but we were friends with theater kids. Oh, my God. And so oh, that's most how, of our friends were the theater kids. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I think we heard. That's how I heard about it. I believe. Um. So what what happens when this requires the same piece as that? There will be another one. There's going to be a. There'll be another 38. thirty-eight. Yeah. Do you have all your sprues? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they'll probably repeat, just repeat there's the same. A, there's sprue. another one in here somewhere. Another thirty-eight. So I need to put away. Oh God, where did I glue? Did I lube? Oh, I didn't. I, can I don't it. think there's another 38 on this fucking sheet. I kind of don't believe it. Hold on. Hold on. I need to fuck it. There's no fucking... I just gotta get this hand. <clears throat> you know, I need a, a lot of thought work. You know, folks. S-C-H-A-D-E-N-F-R-E-U-D-E. -E. Yeah, good old schadenfreude. Scootin' fruiting. Scootin' Scootin fruiting. I always wanted to see it. You fuck know, you, lady. That. That's what stairs are for. <laughs> God, that musical's so fucking good. I haven't listened to the soundtrack in a long time. I'm probably gonna listen to it on the way home now. Uh, I love that. I wanna yeah. see it. I love that. It's, you guys would like it. it. The humor, I think, is very much up your alley. I think you guys would really, really think it's And it's I great. love puppets so much. It's, it's oh, a fucking crime fucking that I haven't destroyed. seen. The it. puppetry is, is god tier. Yeah, that's amazing. There's no other 38, I swear to god. Uh, Purple Dinosaur, if one were looking to shack hill Avantress, I'm, I'm the great wide world. How would they do it? Okay, hold on. That's too many. Where, where are you looking at? This is a stroke. One word to shackle of Andrus in I'm the Great Wide World. How would they do it? Uh, Answer I had the a fucking stroke. question, Rich. <laughs> Answer the fucking question. Answer. Is Answer this, the question. Is this a trick question? Answer the question. If I don't one know. were looking to kill a man to solve the great wide world. <laughs> if one were looking to check <laughs> in a man to the great wide world, how would they do it? Some people don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's a simple question. <laughs> Oh, Shilavandras! Oh, oh just, my just God! Just share. Oh, just that makes so dying. much more sense. Yeah, of course, it's Shil. I'm the worldwide <laughs> world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, maybe I'm an eyeball, or maybe a two. <laughs> no, fuck you! Yeah, I am. You wouldn't. You do. No me. <laughs> I'm um, the greatest. Yeah, me. Yeah. Fuck you. Just tell your friends. If people <laughs> are, talk, are talking about D and D, just say, "Hey, have you heard about a van?" It's all word of mouth. Word of mouth is how this happens, by a wide uh, margin. Yeah. By a wide margin. One of the best things that you can do to support us. Yeah, patrons important. Merch, all of the yeah, support that our big girls got. Yeah, send clips to your friends. But share clips and share uh, the Discord and just share the love. I think that's been a big game changer for us since we hit kind of critical mass. Where before we had a bunch of dedicated fans, but they didn't, none of them. It's almost like when it's a smaller, when it's not as popular, oh. you're less likely to want to like tell your friends about it. But like, or if oh, you do yeah. tell your friends, they don't care. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, is they this only shit? have 500 subscribers. That's a good point. But yeah. now, word of mouth, like if you look at Critical Role's trajectory, they blew up because of word of mouth. Right, yes. like purely, purely, yep. purely, everyone got their friends into it. That they, those I friends got their friends into it. Role because of any uh, advertisement, or because I found out about the Amazon show, or because I was on Twitch and I just decided to take a chance, is because a friend was like, "Hey, I've been watching this me. fucking show, <laughs> and I want you Don't to start DMing album, for me." Album. And I was like, Bye. "I guess I'll DM for the first time." And I bought the fucking core rule books. hadn't Still hadn't seen Criti uh, Critical Role. Played the first game and then started watching Still Critical, hadn't seen Role. Critical Role. And then I watched all of Campaign One twice, two and a half times, and then all of Prime. Campaign One. Was, God, I, I want to point Campaign something out. Yeah. There's, There's no this guy with his with his tongue in there. Okay. Can you look? Hold on, hold on, hold on. They did this so no cleverly. So, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Where let me see, let me see. if you look at this, it's, it's got this weird, weird fucking thing coming like, off of it. it yeah. When you put I, this together, there's a hole that the is the tongue. Oh. So I slid the tongue over Neath of that weird little fucking thing, and as it sticks out, it's just his tongue. How cool is that? Cad man, you can get really tricky with it. That's so funny. I chose this one. You chose. Yes. Now I can't have any of this. You chose the. Oh, I could have Look at the detail of that boy, bad boy. The champion. So this is Damn. the champion. I built the so champion. So basically, basically, this is the champion. You need to use this if you want to make the champion. Otherwise, I think you take. That means that I don't get a sword, dude. What? I wanted a. <laughs> I wanted a sword, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm fucked. There's only one thirty-eight. No. Hold on. Let me you you look. Let me let me make sure that this is actually cool. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay. Well, I'm on back. Because I've look, I've been looking at this thing for five minutes, and there's 138 here. If you find oh, it, oh, he's supposed to go like. Up I'll give here. you a tomato. A tomato. Uh, picking any character you played out of the other PCs, yours or other players. Who would you like to see in a 1v1 duel? Uh, you've played out of the others? Picking any character you've played. Out of the other PCs, yours or other... Okay, so basically Just out of any broadly, PC, who do you want to see in a 1v1 duel? Yeah. Um, Shepard versus Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> this town ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That's very funny. I'm gonna send you to the nine hells, right where you came from. Oh. Which one of us is the real shepherd? Well, I'm the real shepherd. Yeah, I want to see Scrim versus Booker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's Scrim, funny. Scrim would brutalize Booker. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't oh even God. be close. Yeah. Hey, like my banjo. Booker's like, oh Booker's my like God. a pacifist. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he that would was, wear that Booker like a variant. fucking hat. That was the variant that you chose. Yep, yeah. I chose the variant. Yeah. Okay. No sword, dude, for Derek. That's hilarious. But at least he's not hideous, that we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Thank God he's not hideous. Oh! I get to use piece 11 now! Yay! Yay! Piece 11! Okay, so in the same way, I have to choose whether or not I want a standard bearer or another or a hammer bro. You can just uh, glue onto the same body to the, the standard bearer. But yes, basically you can have a hammer bro, you can have a standard bear, you should have multiple customizations. I'm pretty sure you should be able to attach the sword arms to a variety of different bodies. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna go hammer bro. 
Okay. I'm gonna have an axe bro and I'm gonna have a hammer bro. Everybody. Well, and should we look at the I rule need options? An 18 to 17. <laughs> what do you mean? Should, should we? You're going to want a standard bear. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. You, yeah, you, you definitely want to have a standard bear for sure. Well, let me see if I get another option for a standard bear down the road. I don't think so. No, I don't think no, so. No, no. Okay, you, then no. I'll choose not hammer bro. I'm, Wait, so you have to choose guess, between no, the standard no, bear no, and hammer bro? Yes, so. because I need to create an 1817 body, and I will bet you money that I only have one 18 and one 17. Here's Except, a 17. I'm sure you don't. Here's an 18. An 1817 body? What's not talking about? Yeah, correct. I do not. I only have one 18 and oh, I only have okay. one 17. So I have to choose the standard bearer if I want a standard bearer at all. I think you should have a standard bearer. Unless you really want, don't want a standard bearer. I mean, I don't, I don't have any idea of the mechanical significance of the choices I'm making. A standard bearer basically buffs your leadership, which is very fucking good. Well, let's get working on the 1817, and then we can make. Yeah, you can always make a game time decision. These Vestigore models are a little tricky to assemble because they have great weapons and they hold them like this. So it is a lot. They're okay. It's a fine, it's a fine it's unit. A fine uh, Chloe asked, have you ever answered a scam call in a character voice? No. 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 Oh, that's a great idea. I, well, the, the most that I troll them is I basically, yeah, okay, great. I'll be playing a video game or something else. I'll we'll just, just add them on and yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. And then I'll, you know. An hour will pass. I haven't done that in a while. If, if I was working and I was doing a task, I knew I could stay on the line for a long time. Uh, in my old role, this was like two, three years ago, I would I would answer and I would see how long I could get the scammer to stay on. Yeah, that's, and yeah, my, exactly. my goal was to get them to say fuck you and hang up on me. Yeah, I succeeded I don't, more often than I failed. Believe it or not, I don't get spam calls anymore because my phone automatically screens them. Mm. And I love it because what it'll do is it'll pop up and it'll immediately say, uh, the person you are calling is using an automatic, like, you know, like, uh, automatic answering. May I ask why you're calling? And they immediately hang up every single time. Oh. My, my, nice my pixel does it automatically. Wow. And that's it, really nice. It, yeah, it tell, and it, like, I can have them basically talk into the phone and it, and it will have a transcription of what they're saying. And then I can decide whether or not I want to pick up. I, I just scream my calls. I'm into it. That's, that's fucking amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Fuck. It's pretty I, cool. I Apple, that. get on your shit. They'll, they'll have that in like five or six years, Derek. You know that. <laughs> Jesus, got him. <laughs> got damn. Got him. More like Steve Lazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More like Steve Neat. <laughs> yeah. That was. All right. Oh, all right. Okay. That's rip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. God damn it. We're all going to hell. Yeah, that's that's, that's, not, that's not appropriate to say. Uh, okay, 11. I need 10, obviously. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I got some Vestigor arms. I am so close to being done with this entire unit, folks, that I can move on to the Dragon Ogre. Ooh. Um, Picking any character. Oh, we got this one. Have you ever. I got oh, we yeah. got that one. Uh, what is your most taxing PC voice? And mm. why that one? Uh, Midnight Matthias White. Um, by a wide market. He is hard to do. Yeah. You be a strange creature. Yes, I get down I here. I true. True. You gotta modulate your voice. You gotta go back here. Flapjack, we're going to Candy Island. <laughs> you do this voice for God, eight that's hours. Incredible. And fucking. Oh, Candy Wife. Um, <laughs> that show is fucking incredible. Mitzi's so hard to do because it's just falsetto for four hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna um, be tough. But not as hard as Midnight. Not uh, hard. Oh, Midnight. For me, I'm trying to think. I don't know. There was there was an NPC that I remember you complaining about that would wreck you. Oh. Yeah, NPCs. Oh, know. uh, NPCs uh, is a different story. Guru, Guru, and you Guru know King Krem, and anything where I'm adding a lot of gravel to my voice and I'm making it deep, that just inherently strains my voice because my voice I think is relatively high pitched, um, and I just don't have much gravel to it naturally, so. Uh, it's relatively clean vocals that I have, so anything where I need to address that. For PC, I'm trying to think like what is, like my original Sarnax and my original Barnabas that I tried to do, uh, I was was straining, and then I basically like I upped the, uh, 
is it octaves? What is that? Where I, I raise it's like the, the pitch. Yeah. I change the pitch of the voice. I, to be I higher. think of Sarnax more than I think of Barnabas in terms of difficulty, only because I remember the episode where you were recovering from, I think, actual pneumonia. Yeah, uh, laryngitis. Laryngitis. When we fought Bobolai Saga. Spoilers for Curse of Straw. <laughs> Actually, I, they all uh, die because they go into my spiritual weapon. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to die! <laughs> they, you don't get to regenerate. They die of onus. I died from onus. <laughs> <laughs> I chose that name just for you, Mikey. I think well, I said that, but... What was it where, like, uh, in, in Kung Pao Under the Fist? And the dog farted and then he died! <laughs> 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 It really doesn't take much to entertain us. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. No. When, it, when no. is someone going to choose that for a monthly? Oh, I'm saving it. I'm You're saving, saving it. it. You're I'm, save it. I'm 100% saving it. You're no, saving I, it? I, I, I. We had to skip the uh, the cow, the cow fight scene, though. That is. Or, like, try to spice it up. It's horrifying. That's the. Horrifying. Uh, that's one of those you can't movies. Skip. No skips. I mean, I guess that's true. You have to skip it because it didn't. You it didn't know, age well. It didn't age well, and it was like kind of like, oh, ha ha ha, The Matrix. Like it was very, it's very dated. It is ha 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 the Matrix. Yeah, the a scene. lot of, lot of, lot of movies. Even, even the uh, Conquer was like, ha I mean, I guess it was all ha ha movie references. That's the whole point of the, of the game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, which one of the Witchlight crew do you think would be easiest to trick into betraying the group? Well, all of them. I mean, you wouldn't have to trick tr Kremmy. Yeah. He would just do it if there was a good enough reason. Uh, I'm Gideon too. And Gideon could be tricked. I think. Yeah. I don't see Kremmy ever really being tricked. No, no, no. No, you're no, right. Trick. I, I thought you meant just to get them to do it. Uh, I think Gricko would be very easily tricked. Yeah. Uh, I, Probably. Torbeck would fall for it too. Yeah, Torbeck and, and Gricko <laughs> would be only like Frost is the person who's <laughs> very endearing. <laughs> Torbeck isn't smart enough to realize that he's being tricked, but he wouldn't. You know, it would have to be a good trick. He's not smart enough, but like he wouldn't. You know, I don't know. He would be on guard of like not hurting his friends. I don't know. I think that I think that Frost could be manipulated into it if it was a, a purely social encounter, right? If uh, there, there there would be ways. <sighs> I think Kremi could trick Frost into doing things, for sure. I agree. We should test that theory. Um, I mean, the original Call of Feywild, didn't, didn't we have that game for like 10 sessions where I always, I kept like owing you money because oh, of yeah. like, a, like a contract or some shit? Yeah, that was amazing. That was a really funny time. That was, I forgot about that shit, holy fuck. 14, I found 14 and you find 13. Have you guys listened to the Book of Mormon musical? I have not. No. I have also seen that off-Broadway. Uh, and it was amazing. It was unbelievable. I would love to watch it. I really it. want to see it. Yeah, it's one of those things where so many of the musicals, I, unless I go and see it live, I don't get into it. So, like, I, yeah. want, I want to go see a show. <clears throat> I generally won't listen to the soundtrack. Uh, I mean, certain ones I will, but like, I'll need to see it first. There were, um, yeah, and there so was a time in my life. I just have missed... I missed a lot of them when they've come around. What's crazy is that I, I was always really big into going to see shows when I was in high school and early college and stuff. But then when we lived in New York City, I didn't see a single show. That's crazy. Didn't yeah. have money. There yeah. was a time yeah. in my yeah. life when I could sit down and just have a musical like album and play it from start to finish and get as much as I needed out of the the, the music and the lyrics. Yep. I don't do that anymore. That was high school, Derek, very much. Um, why don't we run the Shroud Over Salt Marsh trailer? Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, if you have um, considered joining our Patreon, do it. Do if, it. If you have the time to download the finished version. We finally have the completed version. Oh. It's in the folder. It's in the draw. Should we save that for Monday, though? Should we save it's that? Up to you. Oh, yeah, let's save it for Monday. We'll save that for Monday. We, the, the final version has a lot of quality of life improvements. That will make it 13. considerably better. I'm very proud of it. Considerably yeah, let's, better. Let's, let's, let's save that for Monday okay. to give people something to tune into. Okay. So enjoy. Uh, yeah, you've seen the slides on the screen. It's all for Salt Marsh. We probably should have mentioned them at the beginning. Anyway, here it is.
18, 19, 20. There it is. There it is. Shroud over Salt Marsh. Become a patron today. Become a patron at a dolphin, Pearl Dolphin tier, and you can enjoy a brand new weekly campaign. Uh, it's a DM lot of fun. DM by Mike. DM by Party's me. very fun. Me. Me. And it me. is, the party does a great job. The characters they've assembled is are awesome. I, I'm really having fun. I am having so much well. fun. Me as well. The combat is deadly. We use some some, uh, some house rulings or, or optional rulings from the DMG. Um, yeah, that's right. Some house ruling. Um, no twists makes it especially deadly for uh, an adventures campaign. Which ones are from the DMG? Massive damage. Really? It's from the DMG. Healing, healing search. search. I knew about it's healing. From the DMG. I just uh, suddenly. Um, I didn't know. What else is from the DMG, folks? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, the way we do crits should absolutely be in the DMG. The way we do crits, that's a I popular homebrew. I, I own all of it online. Uh, apparently it's a very popular homebrew to basically do the potion thing, where obviously you have the rapid quaffing to j consume a health potion, yeah. but if you use your full action to do it, it heals the full damage. Uh, the full I like that a lot. I like, I like that, that quite, quite a bit. Oh, yeah, jinx, 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 jinx. You can always just snag <clears throat> you mid-gluing, you know? Yeah, mid-gluing. Uh, so check it out. Patreon, uh, Pearl Dolphin tier and higher. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Some uh, nautical. It's, it's been a blast. Some salty beans. Been a, been a, been a, a real blast. It's been a real blast. I love nautical shit. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit. So, can I do this? Shows. Um, yeah, we're going to like, so I'm going to be spending a lot of time. I'll probably be, be doing just impromptu miniature building and painting streams. Cause I have, if I want to have my, the old world goals, I need to build and assemble three different armies, which is a shit ton of models. It's a lot of, mm -hmm. it's a lot of models. It's a lot of models, but this is going to be a hobby that I'm going to be having for years. So, you know, starting with the Beastman. Uh, and then... I think I'm going to just shove it right in here. Yep, yep. And then hopefully we'll have some fun old world content. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we will. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Look at this fucking headless goatman. <laughs> I imagine they sound like Tusken Raiders. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, oh, way no, that's way better. That's way better than <laughs> that's what I fucking better. did. Holy Jesus shit, that was days. really good. Um, which one of the, which one, uh, how, am I not clearing these? I guess I'm not clearing these. Okay, I need to assemble how many heads. One, two, three, four. Uh, shout out to you, not a question, but I saw a painted, oh, Hank Hill, Space Marine miniature not long oh. ago. That's funny. God well, dang it, like Booty. What a goddamn That Chaos Marine ain't right. <laughs> that's heresy. Whoa! <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Really Whoa. good. Whoa. Um, what did y'all have for dinner or lunch? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I had a meatball Derek sub had a and meatball onion sub. rings. Derek like, yeah, it smelled ah, so fucking good, dude. Uh, Derek loves a meatball Derek and I uh, were working. Uh, he got over here at noon, and we, just, we were working before we set up the stream, and it smelled so fucking good. Dude. Chuckles. <laughs> chuckles, chuckles. I love... Um... I I had a great time meeting so many folks at Magfest. That's what I'll say. <laughs> is, that, is that what you'll say, right? Mm -hmm. I had a, uh -huh. good, uh -huh. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I had a good, 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 good time. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was awesome. I need a twenty. Uh, natural. How much do you plan your campaigns? I know Derek said he's planned all of Ice Pattern. He isn't planning on changing it. Do you ever fully plan your campaign or have a loose plan? Yes. Change major things because of your characters. Also, fun fact: my friend is too long watch list, uh, too long of a watch list, and may never watch. But I'm forcing them to play the Creed Moon when I get it. Well, thank you. Let's go. Appreciate that. I, um, for me, I will hold true to the general nature and the outline. Right, but I am always surprised by the players. There are always things that I don't intend that I learn and discover as it's going on, and things that I can, you know, it's when you improvise, then you improvise more and more and more and more, and you get something very organic, the gardening style. Uh, but I also like to build that within an architecture, within a framework, within oh a. Uh, I'm just a fucking god. Well done, Andy. I just, I'm so. Another dialogue completed? <laughs> no, I'm almost. 
I'm, I'm just, just I'm really I'm good. really good with a knife. Let me just I'm I, not. I have I'm this, clumsy. I have this surgical precision with this fucking thing and it I just dex, feels man. so fucking good. I dex. <sighs> God. I feel similarly. It might be the god hand, but I feel similarly. <laughs> the god hand. I, uh... Right the gauges. Never mind. Uh, All right. Feeling good about this guy. Right of the gauges. Feeling good on a Wednesday. Krabby, can we trust him? <clears throat> Rachel, sure is quiet around here. Oh, yeah, what the fuck? Come on. Sure is boring around here. Yeah, sure I is. wonder what's for dinner. I'm so hungry I can eat an outro. <laughs> well, excuse me, princess. Zelda. It sure is quiet around here. Zelda, where is she? Link, this piece is what all true warriors try for. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You guys have lost the plot. This piece is what all true warriors try for. The squad alive. We are off. Oh boy, the squad alive, we are off. Gwonum is the greatest Zelda character, yeah, really is. and no one can tell me otherwise. People are like, who the fuck is Gwonum? A legendary Zelda character. Everything I see, I must devour. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gwonum. <laughs> I think I gotta... Never mind. That was looking funny. This fun. song is nice, we're to listen to it. Uh, if you mean just the music we've been listening to, I think it's White Bat Audio. Yes, this is Subway Chase. You can oh, find yeah. White Bat Casey. Ad, Carl Casey. Carl Casey. Carl Casey. Uh, and it's from uh, his album called... The soundtrack of YouTube is White Bat Audio. Uh, Carl, I think, lets any YouTuber use his, uh, his stuff uh, as long as you just credit him in the description. And so I watch a ton of Warhammer videos and so All you hear is White Bat. There's tons of White Bat. Yeah. Um, tons white, of White Bat. White Bat Audio and Kevin McLeod. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, MacLeod is actually how you pronounce that. No, yeah, uh -huh. MacLeod. Is that true? Sure. Yeah, no, I I've played like Star Wars Legends before. I know how to spell MacLeod. I'm, hold, I'm holding a lead. <laughs> Star Fox MacLeod. Um, speaking of MacLeod and a fox in space, you know, uh, I, uh, don't uh, uh, Frederick started. Fox, went to Mac. I saw him at a fucking kava. In National Harbor what during MAGFest a couple years ago. Yeah, we both saw him. And I was too chicken shit to say hi. That was back when I'm like, I, I would have, now I would have gone up and said, hey, I love your shit. It's awesome to meet you. But I just like, oh yeah, look. There if he this is, is going to be a tough one. There he is. Uh, I have to glue this little fuck to this shit. little fuck. Oh That's my, gonna be well, a there's one. at least like a notch in there a is. There is. A, there's a spot for you it. You little but... fuck dire wolf. This is tough. Uh, what's the song that Sarnax hums on the regular, Mike? Or should I answer for you? Uh, you answer for me. Come wayward souls from over the garden wall. Yep. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the, um, the Barney theme song. Benevolent but. Hatchings Day to you. I sang that for Andy's birthday. You did. I said I, I, I wished him a happy birthday with a benevolent hat per his request. That's nice. Uh, what did you first write when you were creating? You were busy your... playing um, Seven Wonders. <laughs> oh God! You son of a bitch! <laughs> you son of a bitch! That was the worst game. <laughs> And the fact that you keep saying that, I just wanted to <laughs> gut you. I'll tell you. I know. There's a lot of gutting feelings going on I know. in that moment. I'm very gutting. Um, <clears throat> when you first started record, your first we campaign, were playing Dominion, <laughs> and they kept coming over to me like, "How Seven Wonders on purpose?" <laughs> just to piss me off, and it was our shit. <laughs> Anyways, please continue your story, Rich. Now I'm asking you, what was the first thing you wrote when you started your first campaign? Uh, the. <laughs> like SpongeBob. Uh, I still have my, my very first session prep page. I should bring it out at some point and do a show and tell. And I uh, created the back a very, too. very simple dungeon uh, because my Whoa. twist was the way the campaign was started was that they'd all been sentenced to death and they'd been taken to the prison of a wizard yeah, a mage's tower yeah and yeah. He, he was going to because they've been sentenced to death promise death but of course uh through his arcane uh evil research and so they have to escape the jail they have they can go up and experience his workshop and his laboratory and all of that sort of thing or they can go down into the sewers and i had this really fun idea that they could find a statue with a candle and 
uh, by taking the candle, it would allow them to go into this like acid uh, uh, river uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the in the sewer, and it, it like walking into the actual acid, it would like keep it at bay. Um, this guy's got a ponytail. Uh, like uh, like a fifteen foot radius or something like that. But of course, that takes out one of your. If you release the candle, it goes out, and the acid would submerge around you, and I would create a combat scenario in that situation. Um, the whole thing was going to lead up to an Orcus reveal. That was going to be my primary antagonist for the entire campaign. There you go. Orcus, Orcus, Orcus <laughs> is my favorite one shot we've ever done. <laughs> Orcus, Orcus. Orcus, Orcus. Orcus, Orcus. Orcus, Orcus. Uh, Prince of Undead, Prince of Undead. <laughs> I will say. What do Andy's and Mike's shirts say? The oh. fifth? I actually don't know. I don't know. My, sh- says. my shirt says Weenie Hut Juniors. <laughs> Uh, speaking of SpongeBob, what uh, I don't know. this was my official yeah. WoW raiding T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. For that our, was his uniform. Our, our, ra- our raid uh, group was called Wing Hut Junior. Uh, we were the B team, the B yeah, squad. We were the B squad. Uh, Mike says Professor Wizards did undetectable invisibility cloak. <laughs> something, no. something, something. No, it says it says I'm the horrific abomination <laughs> of a Quiznos <laughs> Muppet and the Babadook. We yeah. like Dungeon Times. They got a pepper <laughs> Favorite N64 slash PS1 titles. Uh, oh my God! Favorite N64 titles. Final Fantasy Air Hack has or what was it? <laughs> air, go- air guys, air or air guys, geez, air guys. Yeah, good old air geezers. Fucking Christ! Does anyone remember that? It was that so fucking... rare. It was so rare. Yep. We had the only copy that you could find was at the local blockbuster. Yep. And we rented it, and I had to beat the whole thing. My favorite PS1 title of all time is Monster Rancher. Oh, I that loved was good. Monster Rancher. Was I only good. ever rented it. Yeah, I owned. I, it was one I got for Christmas one year, and I played the shit. Out of that game, yeah. Uh, and then for N sixty four, I have to really think about that. I got an N sixty four at a weird time in my life. My parents had just gotten divorced, and my dad bought it for me. I think he was going through that. I'm gonna buy my kids love phase, you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, but we, I'm kidding. But we had some really good times God, in my dad's so apartment after school, uh, where we would play snowboard kids, banjo kids. Oh, I love yeah. snowboard kids. Um, Cool borders. <laughs> and, and I think that those were Great probably like game. I'm trying to think like what's the most nostalgic for me for N64. I mean everyone knows my answer is like technically Banjo Kazooie, but like as far as other non uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Conquer's I'm Bad Fur Day I think has to be my answer. Snowboard Kids is yeah. fucking unbelievable. Um I love Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, um, I mean amazing. They actually in Super Smash Bros. 64 remix, where they've expanded it into like a fan mod, they have a snowboard kid stage. They with a giant snowman in the hat. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's really, really cool. Um what else? We got a pepper bar. God, um the, PS1. PS1 Metal I Gear, got it late. Metal Gear Solid, a tactical espionage seven. action, the first one, Final Fantasy Seven. Uh oh, obviously. I have an answer. And I'll think about other more rare, ridiculous uh, PS1 wall walls. Yeah, the greatest I'm PS- to pick stuff that's not so obvious. The greatest PSX game of all time, PS1 game. You all gonna know it. Say it with me. Three, two, one. Cool Chocobo order. Racing. Wow. Oh, good Chocobo answer. Chocobo Racing was actually, and maybe because I was a Final Fantasy fanboy at the time, I fucking loved the shit yeah. out of Chocobo Race. It was like a joy. All of the characters had really fun little vehicles. Like the Black Mage rode a flying carpet, and Fat Chocobo had a tricycle, and Bahamut uh, flew on, I think it was Bahamut, flew on wings, and Behemoth was there, and there was a bunch of summons, and the Goblin, there was a Goblin, it was in a minecart. It was fun and charming. Um, but I miss a lot of the PlayStation games because I got it late because I we only got it for Final Fantasy VII. That's right. So it was kind of we had to play catch up. I uh, I should really just get out my old library of PS1 games and go through it at some point because there's a lot of really weird shit in there. Um, like there's a there, it's not Mech Warrior, but it was like Mech Warrior. Armored Core or something along those lines. Yeah. You could like program the the. You could program. Oh my the god! Fucking mess. That reminds me of a of a PS one game. It's literally what you're talking about, but it was all polygon. You could strafe, move this way, turn, rotate. They were all polygon tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they yeah. had different speeds that they could move. Blast. Yes. Oh, that was an arcade game. They made that was an arcade game too, right? Blast Maybe. Core. 
No, it no, didn't no, have no, corn no. in the title. Hold on, now I need to. Yeah, you're you're I gotta, unlocking. I gotta unlocking Google you. It came for free with my PlayStation. Yep. My favorite yep. PlayStation game ever. Let's all say it with me. It's actually three, two, one. Gex. Enter the Gecko. The greatest. Oh. Uh, greatest. Yeah, I was never. I was never a Crash Bandicoot guy. He's got a ponytail. I was never a Spyro guy. Oh, you know what was an old school? Uh, here's a here's a fucking uh, call out. Does anyone remember the game Return Fire? No. Top top down tank fights. Well, it was fucking outstanding. Return Fire is is my answer. Holy shit. Uh, was it like Command and Conquer? It was an arena style tank game where you couldn't go anywhere and blow the other guy up, and like you could play against you know. Was it Assault Rigs? That doesn't sound right. It's got a pepper bone. It wasn't assault rigs. You know that looks like it, but I would have never, ever in a million years said that that was the title. Assault I think you're right. Rigs. I think you're right. I, this is what I was thinking of. It was very Tron esque. Have we ever started? Cyber sled? Hold on. Cyber sled. It's got to be. It's cyber sled. Is a hundred percent. It's cyber sled. Was that yep. an arcade game? Yep. Holy shit, I remember this game. It's Cyber Sled. I remember the fucking cover, because the cover was so PS1, it hurt. Yeah. Yes. yes! Cyber Sled. The cover has like nothing to do I, with the game. No, it no, is, it's, no like, it's like a Tron person. It's the weirdest like, shit on the being planet. Being sucked into the internet. Never um, would have remembered that in a million years. So for uh, N64, very quickly, GoldenEye, Super Smash, and Super Mario 60, uh, Kart 64, all fucking classic, the original Super Mario World. Great. Uh, but my pick is going to be Rush <coughs> 2. The second Rush game for N64, oh. not because of any of the races, but because there is a stunt mode uh, uh, track where you could drive in any direction, and they had a really bizarre scoring system for doing tricks, where you'd hit ramps and stuff, and maybe you would do a flip or two, or you'd do a barrel roll, and then you'd land. That shit could, was so fun. If you could land and not explode, you would rack up points, and you had 999 yep. seconds to rack up as many points as you wanted. <clears throat> and my friend Roland and I figured out these two little fucking cubes that you could hit at exactly the right angle to get a shitload of fucking points to the point where you're just flying, and you're either going to explode into flames or maybe <laughs> land it, but we could rack up 100, 150, 200 points all in uh, one one trick. Wow. And that was outrageous. You can go on YouTube now and still find that people have to use hacks in order to get the score that we got organically and naturally because we were just that badass. Wow. Yeah, and awesome. I will say that we got okay, more rich. than <laughs> more than a thousand credit, uh, 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 more than a thousand points in uh, 999 uh, uh, seconds, uh, which was, so, of course, uh, more points than there were seconds, which was, of course, our goal, because we had all the free time in the world. It was fourth grade. What are you going to do with all that time? I didn't discover uh, Rush until uh, the games. Until San Francisco Rush and Rush 2112 or 2049 or... 2049. The, was, 20, 2049 was that the Blade Runner 20. one? Uh, that was the future e cyber. It was, it was, it was yeah, cyberpunk. It was like a near future, but was it wasn't that also the Blade Runner title twenty forty nine? Could it have been twenty forty nine? I am a hundred percent confident it was twenty forty nine because oh, wow. it was my favorite arcade game. It was period. so much fun. Um, Rush twenty forty nine. Let me see if I'm correct. Survey you says. Oh, you have. Survey says you Rush. San Francisco Rush twenty forty nine. Yep. Yep. Um, that game was fun as fuck. Was did they also do the cruising USA thing where you could double slam the um, uh, pedal in order to go up on two wheels, or was that just cruising? I think it was just cruising. That was, that was cruising. also a green fucking thing. Yeah. There was a skateboarding game for PS One that was really bonkers. Tony Hawk. Not Tony Hawk. Not Tony Hawk. I didn't play Tony Hawk. I, I missed that train. That was completely off my radar. Um, hmm. I was never a big skate guy. So like we had, I think we had either yeah, tried it. No, it wasn't the skate friends it. that had. Yeah. It, it, you were on a skateboard, but it was more like Cruising USA in the sense that you were like going through a really weird obstacle course style, like very linear race, as opposed to a skateboard game where you like go around and do tricks or anything. Like um, good question. Ten eighty. Ten eighty. 1080, 100% 1080, yep, yep. Yeah, 1080, yep. holy shit, that takes me back. I can get another one. I'm gonna keep cooking here. I can, yeah, I can do another. Let him cook. Um, 1817. 18, I found 18. Oh, that that's bad. that's the N64 snowboarding game. I never yeah. played 1080. Oh. I'm talking about a PS1 game. Oh, it wasn't on both? 
It may have been on. Remember Wave, wave oh, Race? Uh, Twisted Metal 2 uh, for PS1. Holy shit, that was a fucking good Twisted game. Twisted Metal 2 was 1 or 2? Was was uh, PS2, wasn't it? Was it was PS1. Oh, well, because Black was the first one on... Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, this dude's like leaping off his back legs. Oh, this one's gonna be bitching. <laughs> He's like, rah! It's like an action attack. God, I fucking love this hobby. It's a mm. fucking. Even if I never roll time. a single die, so, I fucking love this shit. I think a comment from chat. Yes, all of us agree uh, that Perfect Dark is uh, phenomenal. Oh boy, play. I've never played Perfect Dark. But you never played it? I never played so it. So I will take anyone to fucking school in Goldeneye. I, we just didn't play in a uh, very much per Perfect Dark, but I agree that mechanically Perfect Dark is I was, a superior I was pretty sheltered experience. as a kid, and I think that that was one that probably my parents thought was too mature. My uh, same friend, Roland, uh, he um, uh, got every single cheat on GoldenEye 64, uh, including double RCP 90s, which is harder than invincibility. Double RCP 90s? Double RCP 90s means you have to beat caves in under two minutes with on expert. Uh, Jesus. Which is fucking hard, because caves is a lot more random, and uh, they have a lot of grenades and shit. It was very hard. Um, invincibility was tough, facility in less than a minute 15, uh, because the doctor might not show up in the right spot in order for the speedrun to work, and you'd have to reset. Like a mid, like fifty seconds into the entire run. Jesus, so you're talking. You're talking Bond. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I was gonna say I recognize those those level names. I was like, yeah. I, I didn't. I thought you were talking about Perfect Dark first. Um, no, I'm telling a Golden Eye story. Got it. Know, because Roland got every single cheat that was available for N64, and then he got grounded and in trouble, and uh, his parents took Golden Eye from him, and so we couldn't play it for two weeks. And when he asked for it back, they couldn't find it. Oh no. They lost the entire thing. Oh they no. Bought, they bought him a new golden eye because they felt bad. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And he never got double RCP 90 to get it. It was such a hard trick. And yeah. That was always one of those Holy like, shit. fuck. That, um, that's how you fuck your kids up. <laughs> that's funny. I had a very similar story where uh, on the PSP, uh, I was a huge Monster Hunter guy. Huge Monster guy. I played the original Monster Hunter on PlayStation. Oh yeah. Where like, it wasn't even fully translated to English, right? They were like, if you wanted to like, there was like a hacky way you could play online with your friends, but you had to download all of this Japanese stuff and like yep. use tutorials to be like, just click on this thing, just click on this thing, because you can't read Japanese. And uh, uh, when it came to the PSP, obviously I played Monster Hunter everywhere, and I got to the one of the Monster Hunter games on PSP, I got to the very last mission where you have to fight like multiple monsters in a, in a tiny arena, and you only have th you, only, you only ever have three yep. lives. Yep. And it's it's a challenge because you gotta basically whittle one down without getting killed by the other, and like you know you're juggling killing multiple monsters once. I started the mission, and I didn't bring mega potions with me, and I was like, uh -uh. And I was like, fuck, like I'm just gonna try it, you know, no big deal. If I if I get closer, if I pass it without mega potions, that'll be like an amazing thing. And I killed one of the monsters, and I got the other monster limping, which meant that it was close to dead, and I failed. And I was like, oh man, that was like a good try, no big deal. Like, I'll boot it up later uh, when I have them, you know, and I'll remember to bring Mega Potion this time. Like, I've got it, I've got the mission on lock, you know? We were on a school band trip to, to Disney World, and uh, my PSP got stolen. <gasps> oh. Yeah. And it was my by, God. it was by, uh, it was by imagine. hotel staff. Because, because all, like, all of our rooms got thefted of a bunch of shit. And what's crazy is like, I was bummed they stole my place, my PSP, and it like, they, like the hotel reimbursed us or whatever. But like, what's fucked is that if they had known that I had brought my magic cards on, on that trip, it would have been infinitely more thousands of dollars worth of like stuff yeah. than just the, but they stole all the electronics. They, they like, wow. the, whoever went through our rooms just took all the electronics, thinking that they'd, so anyway, I never beat that mission. It was the final mission of that Monster Hunter game. I could have done it, but I didn't do it. So that was like when um, Rogue Squadron, maybe the second one, but I think it was the first one. I was trying to get a gold medal on every single fucking mission. Oh, wow. And I was so close. I think I had like one or two missions to go. My mom and dad had a dinner party with their friends and they had two sons. And so we brought the game over and we had like put it in or whatever. And then I think I had went upstairs or something to eat pizza or who knows oh, what. No, I came no. back down and they deleted my save file. Oh, yeah. fuck, bro. Yep. 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 Never played it again. Jesus. Never played it again. Yep. A deleted save file will fuck you up. I yeah. will tell you. It's fucked up. Oh, my God. That was another great N64 game that I'm going to mention. Uh, Eternal Darkness. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Eternal Darkness was. That sounds familiar. That's oh. GameCube, or did they really? Oh, that was GameCube. GameCube. Yeah. Yeah. That was GameCube. But still, apparently, it's one of the greatest games ever made. Um, What's the premise? Apparently. I have no idea. An undead legionnaire from Rome, some undead Roman it's guy. Like, it's like it's three like... different periods of time. Oh, right. Yeah, and, and you use three different characters. And a madness mechanic. Oh, never played it, but I've heard um, it. It was really fun. Uh, it, the reason why I thought of it is because um, when, if you have a save game where your madness was too high, you could load the game and the save file would appear to be deleted. And then wow, and like, and it was like fuck, fuck, with, fuck you. with you through the fourth wall. What? Um, <laughs> and and it had one of the best jump scares of any game I've ever played. Uh, the, there was a uh, like a classic like walk up to the bathtub moment. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It fucking I uh, with the exception of the first time I played Resident Evil, which was the first horror game that I ever played in the middle of a fucking like midnight sleepover on PS One when it first came out, and I had fucking nightmares for weeks. That exception, that was the biggest jump scare I ever got from the game. Holy shit, it was good. Wow. <sighs> Great. Uh, Barry of the Bees, have any of you guys something on a D4? I just did it, now my no. foot is bleeding. No, actually. I uh, had no idea. that, uh, Or rather, I've never done that. I had no idea to what Kino Saga said. Eternal Darkness caught me to call it the Fool or Virginia P. Lovecraft. Yeah. I had no idea that it was a Lovecraft yeah, game until a couple very, years ago. It's very cosmic horror. And I, yeah. didn't, it, I didn't know that at the time because I didn't know what cosmic horror was. But sure. It was... Terrific. Antarctica is the only continent that doesn't have ants. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the Kingdom Hearts series? Never played. Not even one. Not First one it. was good. Uh, I, well, well, I think what I should say is that you have to imagine being a 11 or 12 year old kid, maybe 13. It was magic. And they announced you fucking love Final Fantasy. You just devoured 7, 8, 9, and 10. Yeah. You love it. And you love Disney. You grew up with the fucking Renaissance. You've been to fucking all Disney. All the old World. stuff, all the all Disney. And they announce that they're gonna make a Disney fucking uh King uh not King Final, Arts, Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy crossover. Yeah. It like it was literally a fucking wet dream. It was unbelievable. It came yeah. out, the game was so fucking magical. And seeing all of the references. And then two comes out, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Like all of these OCs get invented. I'm like, I don't care about any of this. Yeah. I want to see Final Fantasy and and Disney characters. Yeah. It, was, it was supposed to be a crossover, and then what's his name wanted to make no, it as his own fucking crazy. It was ass always thing. it was always kind of had that like extra flair, but did, I think it lost the like, magic. No pun intended. There were so many Final yeah. Fantasy characters in the first one. 21, 20 and the second one, there weren't that many, right? And then there were yeah. none in the third one. Because he got fucked on Final Fantasy 15. He's like, fuck Final Fantasy. Yeah, they so canceled Battle have... or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's the plot is nonsensical. And oh. yeah. But the first one's magical. This motherfucker has an arrow in his back haunch. Oh, shit. Yeah, shit. Like, he's like, I'm not. He was hunted and killed. He's man. like, I'm not. Yeah, I can't quit is what he said. He's like, I'm going to still kill some people. Derek, I just love that you're a Dark Tower fan and you had a BFF called Roland. <laughs> that is very um, funny. So the fun fact, uh, two fun facts. First, um, he spells his with a W, which is weird. What? And second of all, oh, oh. Uh, it's like it's Rowland. R Rowland, yeah. Like yeah. row, like yeah. to row about yeah, yeah, yeah. Rowland. Uh, so sometimes I call him Row Earth or Row Fire and it's very funny. Um, That's very And funny. then... Uh, He's the reason why Roland's character name is what it is in Icebound, because I figured if he ever, ever fucking watched it, he'd be horrified what I did to his name. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, would you ever play a Call of Cthulhu one-shot? Hell yeah. 100%? Yeah, we've talked yeah. about We'd it love for to. many years. Uh, have any of you played Bravely Default on the 3DS? Andy has. Many I'll times. never forget. Many times. I'll never forget. It was Katsukon yep. 20... It was a while ago. 17? It was right when it dropped. Maybe 2016. It was the day it released. And I think you, maybe there was a GameStop in National Harbor at the time? It, well, it was in Oxen Hill. Oxen Hill. Yes, I, yes. Had, I had to have Kelsey drive me away. That's right. And the thing was, I didn't even get it on release day because everybody at Katsugan was playing it. And I was like, I want this fucking game. That's right. And I That's wanted right. to bring it to Katsugan because I knew everyone was going to play it. It had all this interconnected, like you want to play with other people. Yep. And I, so like, I think Saturday morning, I was like, Kelsey, please. Yeah. Please, Kelsey, take me to GameStop. Take me to GameStop. Kelsey, please. And she did. I love that fucking game. The ending sucks ass, but the game is fucking god tier. 99% of that game is, is god tier. They got three dire wolves done already? Yeah, I'm almost done my fourth. Yeah. Uh, He's sprinting. He's sprinting. Let's go. 
They're pretty. These are guys are pretty straight. What are your thoughts on Fable and Dragon Age? Fable supposed to be specifically the God-tier. first couple uh, for Dragon. Never Age. played Fable, but it's supposed to be. I fucking played the amazing. Bioware DS Sonic the Hedgehog role playing game. So here's what I'll say. Uh, I was very much looking forward to Fable because I was a, a black and white fan. Oh yeah, and black yeah, and white yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, black and white was fucking amazing. Uh, and Peter Molyneux is this visionary, and he has these crazy ideas. And when he was pitching Fable, he, he literally he he was was promising the fucking world. Yeah. He said he was gonna make that thing literally yeah, I like. I remember. I got scared. Like like. I read an article and I was like, nope. <laughs> a game that still has never been accomplished. Yeah. The shit that that he's that he promised back then. <laughs> Many such cases. And it came out, <laughs> and there were some cool elements that I liked. And there was the interesting morality aspect that would change you very like black and white. Um, but it totally failed on every single one of his promises. Oh, I'm thinking of a different game. Oh. I'm thinking of Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud was apparently very good. Yeah, never yeah. mind, keep going. I just, I realized I'm thinking of a different game. Uh, Dragon Age, to me, felt so painfully generic as a I never, fantasy property. I never, played, I never played Dragon Age. That I would see, I'm a, I was a huge fantasy guy. And I would see it, and it was like, the characters were like, the king, and the knight, and the, like, politician. The and dragon. And the, it's just sort of like, it didn't grip wow, me. Um, Inquisition was supposed to be very fun. Everybody played the shit yeah, out of that. Yeah, I, I mean, again, people I loved it. People it. love those games. Uh, you know, same with Mass Effect, right? People love all those Bioware games, and, like, for me, the, the IPs have never really gripped me in a way that other... Games at the time. Yeah, and what's one of those things for me is where I always acknowledge that there are just some video game companies that are just not for me. Bethesda is one of those games. Bioware. Bioware is one of those games. Yeah. It's just those games where I'm like, it's just what the design Bioware? aesthetic. It's oh, the fuck. It's Baldur's the, Gate. The vision. Never Winter Nights. Um, Bioware is the original Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Baldur's Gate one and two. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder that. Um, Kotor. I said the Old Republic. Uh, Mass Effect. Um, I enjoyed Mass Effect. Jade Empire. Oh, hey, that was pretty good, actually. Mass Effect was a lot of fun. KOTOR is beloved, and they, I had no yeah. idea they used D&D 3.5 for their system. Could never get into it. Uh, have you guys played any Legends of Zelda games? If so, which ones? I played everything up until Skyward Sword. Uh, wait, Skyward Sword after uh, Twilight, Twilight Princess? Princess. After. Then I haven't played Twilight Princess. That's why I stopped playing. I played. I was a. I was a diehard. I played every fucking Zelda game forever. So the NES, SNES, yeah. and Super. And Nintendo. then I stopped playing when it was Twilight Princess because that was the Wii, and the Wii was my brother's, as I've mentioned oh, many yeah. times on this stream. Twilight Princess was also where I stopped. I heard it's good though. And then I, I hear got it was good the Switch, too. and I have tried Twilight playing Princess Breath of the Wild twice. And every time I get past the tutorial level, I look around and go. I watched Mikey play a lot of Breath of the Wild because I was living with you at the time. That's right. Yeah. We had I fun. played a lot of Breath of the Wild. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I loved. I loved Ocarina of Time through Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. Hated Skyward Sword. Hated Skyward Sword, and I got to uh, Breath of the Wild late. It was very fun. The mechanics were very enthralling. But um, it felt, I kind of realized towards the end of that the story, because it was so sandbox, was a little all over the place, and the world felt empty. And I then I stopped playing. Um, but it was very fun mechanically to kind of go around and do whatever you want. It was fun, and then I kind of realized, oh, like, I'm kind of over it now. Yeah. Right? It didn't grip me to finish it. To be fair, I, I think that both... Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are like, you all right? Yikes. Sorry. Are like objectively really good games. Yeah. They don't feel like Zelda games to me. And I know yes. that that's the point. Yes. That's the point. That was their intention. I think that's great. So that's I always great. tell people that my favorite Zelda game of all time is Okami. <laughs> where I played Okami on the Wii. It was originally for the PlayStation 2. And I think for that that's style great. of Zelda action adventure game, it, no, no Zelda game ex- except except for uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask gripped me close to as much as Okami did. It was an amazing game, amazing story, amazing graphics, I never amazing that. music. That's it's it, it, it is 
Okami is I love what you've done. fucking we're, we're believable. We're making so many enemies tonight. Hey, you know. We always do. You're asking we these have hot yeah. takes. Yeah, I have hot takes, you know. And I'm never saying anything that's not for me, I'm never saying is bad. No, and that's what I'm saying. I think I think that like, like all the thing we just mentioned, like, you know, Breath of the Wild and all that shit, like, I think it's objectively very yes. good. Yeah. I just think that they're not Zelda games in the... the I'm old. We're old. We're fucking boomers, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Like, um, and and right. I, I, I always attributed it to because basically it was Kamiya from uh, Platinum Games. He was the, the game runner on Okami. And um, like he was very much a, a creative person who is a, has a vision. Oh, and meanwhile, I think that it kind of it's oh, easy for Nintendo that's... games to kind of be kind of kind of lose their touch. What was the other game you were thinking of that was not Fable? Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud. Have you heard of the word of the game folklore? No. It's a game that our buddy Goose absolutely fucking loves. Oh, really? Yeah. And it seemed PS3? really interesting. Yeah. It was basically, you were kind of like a summoner, and there were different worlds of the afterlife. They were all kind of folklore. different styles of folklore. Huh. And each of your moves was attributed to a little creature or a, a character from the folklore. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right. Help me interpret this. Yeah. So from what I can tell, what I need to do is create all of this before I attach. The Alice card. Madness Returns. I remember those. That was like oh, a dark, yeah. really dark fairy yes. tale esque yep. stuff. I, I remember. Never played want. them. Never Basically, played them. The Wasn't that like McFarland? Then the banner and the spawn guy, or no? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Together to make or, uh, that would check out. So I should yeah, do I forget. All of these steps Something like that. I the arm. Oh wait, hold on. The standard bearer doesn't have the flag. So you, oh, you can choose either the flag or the chaos symbol. That's what you, you can choose what your standard is. And so is. then when you have the chaos symbol, you can choose any of these guys to go in the center of. Well, obviously I'm So yeah, corn. it's, it's, yeah, if you want to have a corn on uh, John Smith says, I think you all would get a kick out of Mork Borg and how insane some of the character options are. We absolutely would because we've played a lot of Borg likes. I've played a lot of uh, pirate, well, not a lot of, but I played pirate Borg. I love pirate Borg. We are um, familiar with the genre. I've wanted to play Mork Borg, uh, Cyborg, uh, Ragnarok. We have. Um, I, I'm really interested in Ragnarok and Cyborg. I yeah. would love to try Morkborg because it's the original, right? Yeah. yeah but yeah. we, I have not played the original Morkborg. Um, but yes, we're familiar with it. Uh, awesome stuff for sure. A lot of great stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I can put I can put the corn onto the the KP guy. I think. Let me, let me let's find out. Oh yeah. Just, it's basically just all about the customization. This yeah. guy's got an arrow. So in his basically, haunch, it's the idea of there, like. You know, if you're going to if you're going to have a uh, an army that mostly uses a certain mark of chaos, you can like you know f theme it. However, none of the like. other chaos gods can tempt me. Twenty three, twenty two. You have my soul. <laughs> twenty three and twenty two. Um, you know, corn is for the big beefy boys. Twenty three. Make sure I get this. Zinch gets flaming attacks. The right side up would be charming. Nurgle is defensive. Does and corn get frenzy? What frenzy? Yeah, corn gets up frenzy. I yeah, believe. so that fits. Which is right. Yeah, Perfect. and the great thing about miniatures is that if you think it looks cool and you like it, it fits. Twenty-three, right? twenty-two. That's what I love about miniatures is that basically, like, even if something breaks, you can fix it. If you know you want to fucking kit bash, you can. Twenty-two. Yeah, explain kit bash. What does that mean? Kit bashing. Oh, yeah. I've seen someone Actually, say that in chat. You can explain kit bashing better than I can. Kit bashing is um, just today. I was at the War Hammer store picking up our old world stuff, and um, the store not owner, but the store lead, the store manager. All War Hammer stores have a single employee. Kind of nuts. Um, <clears throat> That's true. He was showing me his kit bashed Swaven. Is what he called them. What? Or uh, Spaven, sorry. Spaven. Space Skaven. Oh, people what? love Space Skaven. So 40K oh my God. Skaven. Yes. And they were kit bashed. And what he did was he found leagues of Votan bodies, which are these space dwarves. He found Skaven heads from AOS. He took a bunch of random guns from like orcs and space marines and sort of like a hodgepodge. And he glued them all together and used a little bit of green stuff to no way basically make his own models that didn't exist before. That's kit bashing. Where oh, you're basically you're taking some, something that doesn't exist by combining pieces and different uh, bits together. Is he to able to play it. with them, or like how do you pick rules to do that? I, I think it was just like a fun hobby okay. project. So more of a building showing yes. off thing yes. than a use and play. 
But I, I imagine like if we did that, we would just pick rules to play them by. Well, and there's plenty of stuff in this rule book where you you would, to truly represent it, you would need to get bash it. Interesting. Where there are mount options for characters that don't have models on that specific mount. Uh, so if you wanted to like say, hey, I want to be, you know, this guy on a unicorn, well, they don't have that guy on a unicorn. You would need to basically either just say, hey, this guy counts as being on a unicorn, even though he's on a horse. Right, right. Or kit you, you kitbash it. That's and, amazing. And make it, yeah. Thank you for explaining. Holy shit. Um, oh, I'm going to have swap a different body. What do we got I here? I should have been a surgeon. I should have been a surgeon. <laughs> Thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog 2? I'm partial Sonic Adventure 2 battle myself. Oh my I god. I love Sonic Adventure 2 I battle. I just saw a TikTok about the drowning sound of the Chow, where when oh they god. fall in the water, they start drowning. And it's you can talking. go save them, and like nothing bad happens. They eventually make it out of the water, but like. They're just like in distress, though. The, yeah, the, the, the Chow Gardens were so. I fucking love Sonic Adventure. Was that Dreamcast? Yes. Yep. I was gonna say, I, I remember they, they the Chow, it on, like on having. The a, it had like a little. The, uh, the, the, the. Oh, Jesus. My brain's not working. The save card, like, would go yep. yes. in the fucking controller, but it had, like, an, an LED screen. It had a screen, screen on it. Yep. And it basically became a Tamagotchi. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's what they did for, uh, was it Fina's little guy? Fina's little familiar in Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia. Oh, he was, like, no a little Tamagotchi. Way. He would, like, leave the game and go to your battery pack <sighs> on your in the middle of your controller. Yeah, and he would, uh, like, tell Sega you. Sega was really trying to make that a thing. And yeah. It didn't work. He would, like, warn you when, like, secrets were nearby, or, like, items. And if you didn't have. That battery pack, you missed out on the the extras and stuff. I was so. this close to having a Dreamcast. Oh my god! And I couldn't quite convince Dream my parents to get me the one. The fact that it only existed for like a year, and it had so many fucking god tier games Power Stone. is unbelievable. I mean, I mentioned Power Stone, Power Stone, Power Stone Shenmue, uh, Crazy Taxi, Grandia, Power Stone, Crazy Taxi, um, Jet Set Radio, Jet, Jet, Jet Grind Radio. Radio. Oh my god, Jet Grind Radio. Right? It was Jet Grind Radio, and then, and then Jet, Jet Set, Set Radio, Radio Two on or Future, yeah. Oh, Jesus. What God. we need to do is we need to have like an ultimate console station. Eventually, yeah, when we I'm build sure. our own when we have our studio, fucking studio, yeah. We'll have to have a console station and we can play Power Stone and when we need to settle business debates, we'll play NFL Blitz. Which That's is cool. another great fucking N64 <laughs> game. Holy that was fun. shit, that, that was, was a good fun. game. We played a lot of that. We did play a lot of it. Fucking X Split, man. It's the best fucking play in the game. Oh, is that why they call it XSplit? I don't know why they call anything XSplit except in the game uh, NFL Blitz, the, one of the plays that you could choose was the XSplit. It's because you just have your two guys on the f far ends split like this. Um, it's probably an actual football thing. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But uh, I spent my childhood in Nerd Town instead of watching football, so I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, from that one art kid, do you have any tips to learning and becoming a warlock for D&D? I am making a shark folk warlock for oh. my first campaign and just need advice or tips. Any bit of wisdom. Rich, take away. Swap out the shark for lizard. And there you go. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, warlocks in general just have a badass fucking patron and think about the nature of their deal and their relationship. And that is so much more ammo than any other class gives you in terms of how to role play. That's true. Um, I'll say cleric. Along with cleric, obviously. But like, you know, think about, okay, well, a shark folk, did you dive really deep and a giant eyeball opened and some sort of Cthulhu monster like Nazoth from WoW makes a deal with you? Um, and asks you to be, you know be his servant or I would like to live deliciously. Mm. Like think about that and um, think about what your own warlock's goals are. Right? Is is are do you just want to be an avatar for this being or this creature, um, or do you have your own sort of hopes and dreams and schemes? No schemes. You know, um, Briggsy's relationship with uh, Kalfu is very different than um, Kremi's relationship with. Somedy, uh, and hopefully that comes across. For inspiration, and I'm sure you're choosing shark folk because you like sharks, um, but if you're not familiar with the basking shark, it is one of the most horrifying looking sharks in existence because it keeps its mouth open all the time. Yep. And it just goes around and sucking in its prey 
uh, nightmare void uh, that terrifies me. And, it's prey of plankton. Uh, also, um, I highly recommend when you're role playing this character that you say that's Jossum a lot. Yes. Referencing yes, the that's... 1990s television show Street Sharks. Cartoon for Children, Street Sharks. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Excellent question. Excellent answers. Oh. October, $10 super chat. Thank, Thank you. you. How do you guys feel about fairies? I know some people don't allow them as a character. We love fairies. I think they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, Glitzy was a fairy. Glitzy was a fairy. We usually try to figure out how to make that stuff work with our players. And if you mean like people don't like them from a balance perspective, we don't give a fuck. Like, like balance is so meaningless to us. Um, that a lot we of people don't you allow you on tea and satyrs because of, yeah. not because of flying, obviously, because of their magic resist. Yep. Yep. Because they, it's too strong, and I'm like, bitch. Well. You're the DM, you can challenge them in any way you want. That's what I'm saying. Don't go past the rickety bridge. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> the old rickety bridge. The rickety bridge. Um. What else we got? Thank you for the to the super chat, though. Really appreciate it. Oh, we got that one. I'm gonna play a goblin shark. It's been a while since we've thanked our channel members. Like. Channel members, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Oh, McLovin, five thousand bits. Oh my oh. God, two Woo! minutes ago. Holy hey, brother, hope you're doing well, man. More glad I'm back with everyone after I move. Hope your move was good. Thank you. Welcome glad back. you're back. Good Welcome. to see you. Been ages. McLovin, the Shucks God. Shucks, howdy. Amazing. Shark Tower! Um, what color lightsaber would your lightsaber emit if you were a Jedi or Sith? Oh shit. I always, well, see you guys know better than I do, but I was always partial to the light blue. Like, you know how like sometimes, at least from when I, I had the toys or whatever, like sometimes Luke's saber was green and sometimes it was light blue. Yeah, that was like Anakin's saber, yeah. Anakin and Luke in, in the first- I don't know uh, why they, they, there was a difference between no, green and light blue, but- the first but, one was his father's in the second- in the and Anakin's in, lightsaber in, in the first two his, films are blue. Own, yeah, he makes his own. Return of the green. Jedi, it's his like lightsaber is green. It's like this green. sick, yeah, yeah. icy blue, yeah, and yeah. it looks so fucking badass. I love the green. I'm gonna go with the green, actually. In the Return of the Jedi, Skywalker blade for me. I always like green. I think I, I always like green. I was a, and I know that like in all the side stuff they have like yellow and and orange, purple, purple and, and, and the dark that. saber and the dark saber. But the fuck like, is yeah. a dark saber? I feel like from I from Mando. Yeah, from oh, yeah. I didn't know and, that's and what it's called. Lore. And, and from lore, I didn't know that's what it was called. I'm you not know what? I think I need the the fine tip one for sure. Delicate work. What I'll do is I'll just chop out my whole next wolf and then I'll wait until you're good to go. I just need it for this one little drippy droppy. What time is it? I can get another one done. I like the blue. I can get another one done. I like the blue. 524. Um, good questions. Twitter, Mikey and Richie. I really want to get into Star Wars, but I don't know if you start from the first movie ever released or chronologically. What would y'all recommend? Into, into what? Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars. Uh, watch the original trilogy. That's where you start. I, uh, this is what I would do. Uh, if I was just getting into Star Wars. Oh, it was a huge, huge raid, by the way. What? 70 raid from oh Careful Cantrip. Oh my Cantrip. god, Careful Cantrip. Hey. All, hey. all friends, all friends of Careful Cantrip. All friends of Careful Cantrip. Careful Cantrip. Let's get a shout out. Friends of the Hi. stream. Let's get, get a shout out for Careful Cantrip. For, for the YouTube folks, we're over on Twitch here talking about the raid. Yeah, Thank we got a raid. You. YouTube folks. Let's get a huge shout out. Give them a follow. Okay. Uh, if you're just joining us, we normally play D&D on Wednesdays, but uh, we are now painting miniatures for Warhammer of the Old World. Building. Uh, we're building, not painting. We will be painting. We will be painting, but tonight is a building. And I think we need to figure out what point level we want to start having very small games with. I was gonna ask if I could literally just run Wolves plus Ivyon. No, Ivyon. Well, I mean, technically, I mean, yeah, we could. could. You and I could have a skirmish. I didn't know so if that was like if that was re like what's the bare minimum for points? I would say bare minimum would be like a thousand points. I and saw a battle be... report last night for t at twelve fifty. It was an awesome fucking. And then twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. What would be the Wolves value? Uh, let's look. Jamie, can you pull up the vampire counts? Jamie, pull up the. No problem. So, Rich. um, the unit size is five to twenty. So oh, how many wolves 10. do you have? You 10. have ten. So it, it's a um, oh, eight I points see. a model. So I eight get times eight nine, points, uh, doom wolf. Or eight times ten, and then. But plus then six. you would do the six for the doom wolf. So eighty six would be the, would oh. be would be, and wow, then you, you can take upgrades. Yeah. yeah. So then, how much is Evia? Evia. So yeah, she's gonna be like a, at well, least a hundred. Let's see points. how we're we gonna build her Probably two hundred. Big army. How are we gonna? Oh yeah, no, it's, it's a thousand's a big army. Yeah, two thousand standard. 
Dude, Holy yeah, yeah. Two, no, fuck. No, it's a war game. This is a war game. game. Is a war game. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So if you're you never going to have enough units. So and the vampire cows actually need the most because they're necromancers. Yeah, I know they have like so a bazillion need, so skeletons like there's, and there's shit. one YouTuber who's like, oh, I want to have 500 skeletons. Or yeah. like 500 zombies. Yeah. So just to take her as a count is 160 already. Okay. Right? And then you have, give her all this stuff and then you give her magic items. Like, yeah. She might be 250 on her. Okay. Own. Okay. Or like 300. That's what I kind of thought. I yeah. figured the center, like this. You put her on a board. zombie dragon too for, what, what could you mount it on? I require your experience um, advice yeah. when you're, when you're Also, I, I have done nothing but praise so these molds. I have the ability to this seems like a very poor decision. Here, right? Or yes. that's like yeah. hanging yeah. on my yeah. threads. Because yeah. this guy's like, his like organs are coming out and shit. Like, well, I think the idea, it, what's I, amazing? When I do banners, yeah. I oh, it's a crow. Thing. Just to make it, It's know, a carrion oh, crow. It's, it's, it's tight. That's what it is. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, let's look at the vampire count rules. So technically, in a technical sense, um, you need one plus wizard, so she could be a wizard. The general okay. has to be the wizard, always. And so she, she'd be a vampire count per 1,000 points. Um, you could make her a necromancer, though. You need 25% spent on dire, oh, dire wolves or core. Okay. Yeah, dire wolves. Yeah. All right. Um, so you're saying I might need more dire wolves if, if I... You Because I have to... It depends. It depends. Oh, on, skeleton okay. warriors, zombies, crypt ghouls, bat swarms, and dire wolves. Yeah. I, think, I see. I think that you'd want to run ten to twenty die. I mean, I don't know the fucking meta for vampire counts. Well, I'm but not ba so too basically, concerned about so meta. the idea is that vampire counts they are big. Like, there's only a handful of actual vampire units. They're the generals and the necromancers. Right, right. Everything and else they have is undead shit. And zombies. They can't march. They're very slow, and they have no missile units. So they just you basically have to slowly march your horde of zombie down. And they get like chipped and, away, yeah. and like you're just like the wall. And you summon dead. them yeah. back. And right. so yeah. dire wolves Holy are really shit. good because you can basically send those behind enemy lines to kill war machines, to kill okay. archers, they move to quick. charge. Yeah, they're quick. So that's the idea of basically you send your your dire wolves to go maneuver. Uh, I don't know if they have Vanguard. Um let's I see think if, they, are they, they skirmishers or no? We got Vanguard. Pull Do I up. get any musicians or anything, or is that not a, uh, a thing? For uh, me? Your actual like soldiers. Will. Uh, let's look. Graveguard. Graveguard yeah, yeah. has musicians. So standard they Do they, they have actually have instruments, or is it just a title? Yeah, they all have a drum, or they, they might have. Yeah. They might have a horn. So my guys have horns. Uh, okay. Because like you know they're not going to be like. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Right, right, right. But, Skeleton uh, warriors have full command. Yeah. Zombies have musician, musician and yeah. standard bear. Wow. Yeah. And uh, zombies. That's amazing. My zombies uh, are very musically inclined. Yeah. <laughs> Velvets obviously don't. Spear so, has. Yeah, so I think it's like super blood knights. I can't wait to build some fucking blood knights. Yeah, Holy these shit. guys are like the fucking heavy cav, right? They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. And you can really upgrade the fuck out of them. Um, black knights black are the skeleton knights. versions. Yeah, they're the, they're the whites. Did I pass it? Corpse. The black coach is badass as fuck. Oh, I I remember looking at that. That's sick. Zombie dragon. I mean, God, this is a lot of a lot of good. Answers. I think my dream would be to have a zombie dragon. Like uh, you someday. can get that model. Yeah, someday. Yeah, vampire lord on zombie dragon. That's like you know baseline. Someday. Vlazed. Yeah. Vlazed. Oh, that's um, funny. Vampire lord on zombie yeah, dragon. So like, that's the classic. So I mean, basically, and it's looking like maybe for the va vampire counts. You will want to have your vampire lord on a zombie dragon, totally kitted out to basically make it hard to score the points by killing it. Yeah. And also, vampire counts and tomb kings want to stay alive because basically, whenever the general of any of the undead factions is killed, all of the necromantic power starts to crumble. Yeah. And so you have to start, your army starts crumbling away. Yeah. To yeah. Dust. It starts turning to dust. So That's you need to, badass. You need to make sure that you have some beefy. Uh, Generals, or that you basically have a lot of protection. Yeah, so they're not order. skirmishers, but they're open order. Uh, and they regen on sixes. Yeah, that's. Uh, Reserve. I, I can't wait. To, Vanguard, yeah, they're Vanguard. I okay. can't wait to pick, like, really thematic D6s. Like, like, oh, like yeah. to find some badass they, vampire necromancer They actually D6s. release Soulbrite Grave Lord D6s that are, like, black with red pips and, like, a red vampire dragon. Uh, on the D six, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's it's really amazing. it's really fucking cool. Um, Thank you for the five dollars, Isaac. Watching this while I'm working shit. on my two hundred eighty six deck commander cube. Woo! I have eighty five decks sleeved, and I'm currently building two hundred one other that decks. That is ridiculous, man. That's a lot of decks. That's a lot of cards. That that's a lot is of cardboard. That is actually insane and awesome. Good luck. Oh, do we talk about the Star Wars order? 
Mm. No, oh, so. no. The um, rain came, sorry. We started, we got distracted. Oh, no, uh, just watch the first. I would say watch the first, first six, six in, order. Came, like, in, in order. In order. In, in release order. In release order. So, four, so. five, six, one, two, three. Yep. And then watch the first two seasons of Mando. And Andor. And Andor. And I think that's all that I Don't would watch recommend. Don't watch anything else. Uh, I mean, Clone Wars has a lot of good stuff. Go, go look for well, Clone Wars. But you have to do the whole like that's yeah. that's next level. Yeah. Once you get into Star Wars, there's books, there's other stuff. But like, yeah. I think that's baseline. Um, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Hot takes on the old adventure game genre: memorable moments, frustrating deaths, love seeing adventure. Again. Uh, if you mean point and click adventure games, uh, grabby flats. We grew up on Putt Putt Saves the Zoo. Oh, oh God, yeah, funny. that shit. Um, Putt -Putt Freddy the, the Fish. Zoo. We played a little bit of Pajama Sam. Uh, some of the other Putt Putt games. I'm pretty sure. I More was... recently, I really have gotten into the Monkey Island games, and I fucking adore them. Um, 27, 28. That's how we bonded with Luke from Limithron. I'm a big fan. 27, 28. 27. I enjoy these kinds of streams. I've... Uh, I really enjoy these kinds of streams. I've got so much hand quilting done just chilling and listening to y'all. I'm glad you like it, Bun Bun. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. It's, uh, it is a very fun, uh, I mean, I, you know, for me, I could fucking make minutes. The Shark Warlock's name is Wiggums, uh, making a pact uh, with the being that is his city, that his city's cult worships, if that makes sense. Uh, they'll make note of Jawsome, and what do you, uh... Oh, that's a funny pull. What's your favorite <laughs> animal? My favorite animal. It depends on the context. Great, great horned owl, you know. You can't choose cat. Get the fuck out of here. You always say cat. That's not. You can't choose a pet animal when they ask you what your favorite animal is. I agree with that. I agree with right? that. Right? I think that's reasonable. Long horses. Okay. Long horses. Uh, it's gotta be like a wild animal. I guess it could be a farm animal, maybe. I don't know. Um, farm animal, I think, is okay. Panther. <laughs> to me, <laughs> yeah, dog, sure. dog and cat your seem nightmare. like cop outs to me. <laughs> your nightmare. <laughs> Personally. Favorite an I don't think I can pick just favorite animal of all time. Uh, I am very partial to silverback gorillas. I'm just yeah. a big fan of monkey silverback trouble, gorilla. Man. Yeah, Some I've always loved alligators and crocodiles. The big primates are just beautiful yeah. animals. Yeah. Toucans, beavers. One day you'll defeat an orangutan. Rhinos, you know, platypuses. Play an orangutan folk oh in God. some sort of a barbarian. <laughs> oh yeah, like an orangutan Cows. barbarian. If we ever do like a Zootopia style campaign, yeah, you gotta you gotta do a great ape of some kind. Yeah, like a fucking badass. You can be Lanky Kong. That's funny as <laughs> fuck. What's your favorite concert you saw at Mag? My friends and I keep quoting the Shred Adventure to each oh other. Oh my God, um, Shred Adventure with, set was like. Unironically, one of the best showmanship sets that we saw they did hands fucking down. Great. Tournament arc is probably, the, arc best probably the best concert. Like it's ever. one of the best. It could have been better than Cuphead, but it was. It's one of the best. It's top three Magfest yeah, shows I've ever seen. For sure. Tournament arc it's was the, unbelievable. It's the top two for sure, and I don't know if it's better than Cuphead or not. Like that was such a special experience. Cuphead is so unique. No, no, it was, it was one. Tournament arc. Tournament I, arc on Thursday of Magfest was the best. Was better. Was better. Well, ah, wow. uh, see. I don't think you. I don't know if you can. I, I wasn't even there for no, Cuphead. I think it's different <laughs> because the big band arc, the big band stuff is really good. But but tournament arc did. They had jazz. They had rock and roll. They had metal. They, they had were vocals. The, well, they were the equivalent of the, of the perfect super group. Yes, it yeah. was everybody yes. we've ever seen at Magfest in a yep. super group of an unbelievable. Like it was just unreal. It, uh, Insane in the rain was there. Derek was like talking. Oh, we looking through these players. Oh yeah, they play play Magfest. They yeah. play Magfest. Insane in the rain was probably in over half of all concerts yeah. that was on the well, main stage. Fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I would say yeah, I would say without question. Um, tournament arc by a massive yeah. margin. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the the lady who sang 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 a snake eater was there, and she performed oh. at yeah. nine thirty in the morning. What a thrill! What that's what 9 she performed. Nine thirty in the morning, they slaughter. She was actually on the panel, and she's like, "They fucking scheduled me for nine oh, like, bummer. Yeah, I'm like. So she wasn't even on the main stage at the Belvedere. I, no, she was just in, the, in a panel room or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's I don't know. ridiculous. Yeah, that's why we didn't see him on the schedule. Get yeah. your shit together, Mag. Yeah. Anyway. Where, where was the Sonic Orchestra? I don't know. I, I looked all over. Anyway, maybe we just weren't. We also didn't look. It was, yeah. Um, I give my life. Yeah, he's still used. Do you have any recommendations for someone? <laughs> someone interested in getting into video games? Who Sometimes didn't you dine on a tree frog. Grow up uh, playing did, at all. They did three Persona songs. 
and I've never played. Persona. I don't know how you I'm recommend. Music for Persona is awesome. It's so it's good. so fun. It's so fun. How do you recommend getting Did someone into video games? Jesus, that's a tough one. Um, I would say uh, depends. Animal Crossing. I, I was literally going to say Animal Crossing. Um, Pokemon. I would actually, Rain. I would I actually know. what their say, interests are. Yeah, it depends on what your interests are. Um. I would start with a smattering of different genres, right? Like, throw some classic Super Mario their way and see if they enjoy platformers. Try a strategy game. Give them civilization. Uh, try a role-playing game of some variety. Uh, uh, throw Witcher 3 and Baldur's Gate in their fucking face and see how that goes down. Uh, give them... Uh, puzzle games and and just, just gaming is has such a wide breadth of things that you could possibly be or do in it. Uh, it, it, it you're, you're bound to find something, you know. And it, it also it's it's a time commitment thing, right? Like, do they want to play a pickup game where they can sit down and, and have a good gaming experience in 15 to 45 minutes, or are they the kind of gamer who's going to fall in love with something where they just want to have a chill, casual six to eight hour Minecraft session where you're just knocking down blocks and putting stuff up and you create your own goals and you get to be creative with that bit of friction that Minecraft creates because you have to get from one resource to the next and and there's the survivability of having to survive <gasps> the nights and if you're as long as you're not in peace from what it's there's a, so oh. a full unit of 10 best fully assembled wow best with full command that is one unit of 10 oh ungores full command that is God, one unit so... of gores full command and then one unit of best okay. full command 30 i have 30 up? units completely built Jesus. wow time to break out the That's my, my goddamn mind every chaos day. ogres, and then once I uh, build my chaos ogres and my great gray shaman, I will have finished my vanguard box piece of chaos. Well done. Good job, Mike. I'm Gotta give it up. Thank, you for, Thank uh, you for the raid. T Jenny ninety five. Welcome, welcome, welcome. T Jenny, thanks, anonymous gifter. Welcome, for welcome, welcome. That serb. You know what I could go for? I could go for a wet, wet, wet. Ew. Sub, a wet mm. Italian sub. These little the wolf legs are, are wearing on me, though. I'm gonna be honest. These wolf, little guys wolf are leg. tough. They're tough. Yeah, the little fiddly bits are real I tough. Mean, this is like, it's like. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta breathe. You gotta set yourself. Gotta You're good. You have you have 20 decks, Andy. I know. You I got know, this. Know. You got this. Dark Rodi says chaos ogres or chaos ogren. Neither. Uh, they are dragon ogres, which do serve chaos, but they are part of the beastman army. Um, in this edition. In this edition. I'm missing in, a leg. 29. And in AOS. They were only moved to oh, Warriors of Chaos, I think, in 8th edition? So that so they have or, more history with beasts. I believe so. I believe so. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Chaos Ogre. 29. Uh, I actually don't know In where I would house. find Chaos Ogres for my army if I wanted to have any. I don't know how the fuck I would find Chaos Ogres. You'd have to get back. They're ancient. I could get back. Or I could just get an ogre, uh, Ogrin from 40k and Age of Sigmar. And, yeah, if uh, you want like more guys with horns. Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very beastman esque. Who doesn't want I guess that's like, true. They look Minotaur esque. That's more like your version of the, of the, Legion, of, uh, the Horned Legion. Yeah, was where the, where the ogres were actually getting horns and, the giants. and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Xerathon and answers. There will be a paint and take a Gary Con. Just saying, let's go. Uh, By the way, if you're just joining us, take. Paint and take. So you, can yeah. paint a so you show up, they give you a mini to paint, and you take it. You know, I might have to sign up for that. Yeah. I wanted uh, to do it at uh, I wanted to do it at Gen Con all these years and I've never been able to. Yeah, I wanted to do we, it at Gen Con too. But. I did it once at Mag Labs, which I miss. Mag Labs, if anyone from Mag Corp is listening, no, they're not. Please bring back Mag Labs. It was so fun and please. I love the paint and take. Every so time you guys sad. wear your fucking Bioshock There's shirts, I'm like, I fucking missed out. Yeah, yeah. Right right now, sitting out. in a big cushy chair. It was with so good. Drinking a, a, a whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Night Fury says, what is the best of Evantress? Uh, well, uh, what is best of Evantress is to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their women. Yep. That yep. is canon now. That's canon. That is canon now. What the hell? Um, so if you're just joining us, uh, Gary Khan will be there for fucking in Wisconsin for 12 days. Wisconsin. Join us in Wisconsin. 
uh, for both Founders and Legends Weekend and Gary Comic. Um, speaking of, the, speaking of, Conan the Barbarian is a great fucking movie. That's one of those ones where like it's really bad ADR, but like the movie's so fun and the music's so good. It's just a classic. It's just so know. fun, and I honestly think and Mako that, um, from fucking Uncle Iroh is Subutai. Uh, yep, Conan the Destroyer. Um, oh wow, the second film is actually I only saw quite it charming. Once, it's quite charming, and I didn't like it. But I, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. The scene. So we watched it uh, again in history class, and we had a, a really cool world history teacher. And so when we were like doing ancient history, he had us watch Conan. And uh, the scene where he fucks the witch, he had to skip. He's like, okay, we're fast forwarding through this. I'm like, no! And it's like a bunch of, there's a bunch of high schoolers probably like, woo! Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's totally pointless beyond like, oh, I want to fuck. That's not true. She says some cryptic future. Yeah, that's like, okay. You will one day be king. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's very funny. They're fucking killing me. That uh, was actually, actually, no, that's pretty dark. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. A little bit of trivia from that movie. <sighs> yeah, don't share with the class. Okay. Dragon Ogres. So, <laughs> this is where I got the idea for Mace to be uh, Shagoth the Blackrock or whatever. Is because oh, a black, yeah. A Blackrock Shagoth is... Uh, I didn't know that. Was, uh, yeah, Shagoths are, uh, was, are, are the supreme Dragon Ogres. They're big Dragon Ogres, and... Black. Oh, and Black Rock is something, something else. Wow. Well, I, I guess I should have. Black Rock that. Mountain, yeah. yeah. Black Rock Mountain, yeah. There's also, I don't know. Um, this looks awesome. I have been missing some big, big fellas. This since. this dire wolf has a carrion crow eating That's from so them. cool! I don't know how the fuck this has stayed on, because it is the tiniest little, like, attachment. Yep. Fucking when thing. You let the that plastic is really strong. Yeah, that's why they have the, like the best models is because they formulated this to be like workable, modelable, but also super sturdy. It's perfect. Yeah, it's 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 insane. I'm so impressed with yep. what's happening in front of me. Yep. Um, Gugu Gyu asks, "What's your opinion on Warhammer: Age of Sigmar?" Most people seem to dislike it. I enjoy it. I think it's a good game. I think that there's a lot of baggage because Games Workshop destroyed a beloved game with 40 years of history be in order to make a high fantasy 40k knockoff. Like, that's was their liter their intention. And I think that the community that built around it and what they eventually did with it's it... It's coming to its own. It's coming to its own. Yeah. I think it's a great game. Um, but for me, my heart and soul... I think a lot of YouTubers are kind of the same thing. Oh, I really liked Age of Sigmar. And other people, I like 40k, but like, oh... World, the old world, I'm going to back to play that now. Uh, my heart is with... Uh, I had no idea all this happened because I've been so out of touch with all of the Warhammer stuff. Yeah. Also, this piece of armor that he has is actually hurting me. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, it can hurt. It's fucking chaos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ow. Okay, time to build some dragon ogres! Torbeck would be a dragon ogre, wouldn't he? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the meaning of the word. <laughs> I don't know the meaning of the word. Um, you, you miss me, yeah, pretty often. Uh, are there any hobbies or skills you'd like to learn? This one is one. Um, I've really fallen off of the bandwagon, uh, the bandwagon, the wagon of um, practicing piano, and I need mm. to get back to regular practice and, and pick that passion up again. That's a good answer. Um, That's I, a great answer. I lost. I lost the plot somewhere in the middle of uh, the Crooked Moon Kickstarter, and I just have had barely touched my feet. Yeah, That's how that. we feel every MAGFest. We're like, we gotta play more instruments. I was instrument. just gonna say, th that has to be my answer. I... It's, it's not learning something new, but basically learning the MAGFest style of jamming. Yeah. We're like, it's, I have all the skills. Learn your pentatonics. Yep. Learn your skills. Learn how to solo. Learn the circle of fifths. Yep. Learn, how to, learn how to solo, learn yep. how to improv. Um, which, to be fair, is not difficult. No, it's, it's doable. It's rudiments. Yep. It's it's repetition. It's practice. It's getting it just drilled into your brain. Yep. Um, I p I played a little bit of bass since we got home, but not much, not much. Um, I haven't touched my guitar since last night. Yeah. Because we didn't do anything with it, so I sat in its case. Nah, there was no no beginner jams this year. And so for me, I um. 
I used to do volunteering for a sobriety group that I really enjoyed. It was like hiking and, and active fitness stuff. Uh, I mostly hosted game nights and I hosted um, I miss those walks, man. And walks. Mm. And it was a lot of fun. And ever since the Crooked Moon, I basically, you know, I'm getting back into this, but I, was, I basically gave up all my hobbies. I gave up my singing lessons. I gave up miniatures. I gave up volunteering. I gave up all of that for the Crooked Moon. Uh, and so I'm sure, yeah, so it's, uh, I'd like to get back into that, frankly. Oh, yeah. I think one of my favorite memories that I have is Mike picking me up at like 4.30 in the yep. morning. Yep. So that we could drive to the, the mall. Yeah. The National Mall. Go for a nice long walk. Literally like four in the morning. And then we hit up that brand new Wawa yep. in DC and yep. got coffee oh, on the way yep. home. Those are the days. Days man. like that are fucking yeah. awesome. And like, cause I we would literally have my, get I to watch the sunrise. Yeah. Over the I, mall. I didn't have my first meeting until like 10 or something, so it was easy for me to make. And I just and didn't you, want to show up to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's similarly special to me? Is our post uh, concert tradition of finding a diner? Oh that's open. my god! Oh, trying to get hit up yeah. Denny's. Trying to hit up a Denny's. And you know, usually two of us have been drinking a little bit, and like it's obviously I'm sober because I'm driving, but I, it's we fine. get some greasy, greasy food. Yeah, and just we have great conversation. It's just eggs like and sausage. Yeah. And, oh yeah. The fucking vibe after a concert. Your ears are still kind of ringing. Yep. Yep. You're just chowing down, and it feels like the best and thing ever. Adrenaline fucking is pumping. You're yeah. wired. You don't want to. Yeah. Fucking sleep, fuck that shit. It is a it's Coward just a vibe sleep man. after a fucking concert, man. It's a vibe. We did it after uh, the midnight. That was the most recent yeah, time we did most that. Most recent because we, we talked to, a lot of, because we took a lot part of the crooked moon the whole time. We went all the way to the Denny's in College Park. Yeah, where oh, we've yeah. been to multiple times. Yeah, thirty Great and question. thirty-one. Uh, uh, we got that one. Do you think it's possible to make a mimic your familiar? Up to your DM if you are interested in that is having a very popular thing in having a mimic companion. Over the years. Uh, not sponsored, but MCDM has a class called the Beast Heart, where you can basically have little creatures, and one of their animal companions is the mimic. Yeah. I, so that that actually might be the most popular homebrew like thing question rule that we've seen. I think in the six years that yeah. we've been streaming, people ask things like Mimics that. Mimics are the very time. popular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just very popular to have a little mimic pet. Um, do you guys have plans for the week between the two Gary Con events? Is it going to be businessy businessmen or other tourist stuff in Lake Geneva? Uh, not tourists. Yes, yes and no. No, definitely more business related. So yeah. we're going to be doing business. Uh, we're going to try to get down to Adepticon. Adepticon. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, fine. We're renting a car. Warhammer. So we, yeah, we 30. may not be around. And I think there's only like two or three days between where there's like nothing going it on. It might only be two-ish. I think yeah. it's like two days, so we were going to go to Adepticon for a day. But uh, we are going to have to... We're, that's going to be a pretty big crunch time for the Crooked Moon, I think, depending. So we'll just need to play And we'll have a lot of work to catch up on that we're not doing because of the cons, right? Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, weird random fact that you know for some reason. Ooh, my favorite. Uh, Cleopatra was born closer to the uh, construction of the first Pizza Hut than she was to the construction of the pyramids. That's a great... That's a great fact. Just to really put into perspective how time works. And how long these empires pre the Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. like lasted. Um, sort of in the same vein, uh, Julius Caesar was not assassinated in the Senate or on the, on the steps of the Senate or any of that. Oh, really? No. He was uh, basically assassinated in a uh, the equivalent of like a conference room at a nice new hotel. I was really hoping you were saying you were gonna say the bathroom, like while I was on no, the shitter. No, he, no uh, way, really. The, the Senate was under construction at the time, and so they tr basically had to hide daggers in a bunch of potential locations where it could be. Damn. And it happened to be at like this new, basically a mall that Holy was shit. built by Pompey. Um, wasn't Pompey beheaded, or is that just from Rome? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. He was a consul of Rome! <laughs> <laughs> God, that oh, show is so fucking show. I don't know how unknown this is or weird, but uh, the guy who invented the Segway died because of a Segway malfunction. Yeah. Drove him off a cliff. No, no way. way. So he would, no, that's not the guy that invented it. That's sure the good. guy that, like, he was the president of the company that bought Segway or something like I that. I thought it was the inventor. Um, Holy fuck. This is a sad fun fact. I think even in dark. 
is that opossums only live for like a year. Oh, shit. Yeah, one shit. to two years. One what? Two years. Yeah. Like their whole lifespan? Their whole, whole life, life is, is like it. one to two years. Yeah. Oh How my fucked God. up is that? A mammal, that's crazy for a mammal. It's very, very that's short crazy. for a mammal. Anyway, I didn't know that. I'm making a Cheshire Cat theme character, but I don't know what class to use. I'm flipping between Rogue or Sorcerer, but I don't know which one to use. Or if you suggest a different class, I'd be more than down. I think Sorcerer's it. fucking great. Wild actually. Magic Sorcerer yeah. would be my recommendation. It's gotta be Magic. Uh, Rogue, Arcane Trickster also. Arcane would be great. Trickster, I think. Because of the stealth, right? Yes, the yeah. stealth. I, mean, I think the Arcane Trickster. Domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, both are great. Uh, what do you guys think of indie music? If you guys want, I posted version one of my song on the creative channel, a Discord account. Um, I think indie is really interesting because I think the meaning has changed so much. Interesting. Indie really meant something specific and different before the internet. Where there were giant record labels and everything else was indie, right? And maybe that's right. still true. Right. Um, Look at that crow. But I think indie music's great, right? Would you say that like the midnight is indie? I have, uh, I have no idea how you define it. No, right? like, I don't think I would. Not anymore. Even small artists generally have a lot of these indie record labels. But if they're indie record label, like, so I've always I, I've I've thought about this a lot of like what does indie mean anymore? But um, are I we mean, an indie record label? I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> kind don't of. Know. I mean, kind of, right? Uh, Zekia virus. Wait, I, I'm gonna answer the question. Oh, because uh, I don't know the definition of indie, but I used to. And uh, one of my favorite bands is Sunset Rub Rubdown. And nobody's ever heard of them. If anyone in chat knows Su Sunset Rubdown and their music, good fucking luck. I like a good Sunset Rubdown. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Uh, me too. And <laughs> uh, the Taroko <laughs> yeah. They they do a lot of crazy, awesome, fun shit. It's just gr very good music. And Thirty-two. I've seen them, and I've seen them live, and they're terrific. Uh, someone said Midnight is Synthwave. Yeah, well, so for sure. I don't think, in at least I've never taken indie to refer to the sonic aesthetic. No, no, no. Of the music. No, I would not. Unless either. when you say indie, you mean like alt? Like alt rock? But even those like, are different. Oh, even that's that? not the Like sloshy thing. from, the from uh, Oh, sloshy! <laughs> the definition's changing. Uh, because exactly if you're talking about alt, I am not at all a fan of alt rock. Yeah. Um, not a fan at all. It depends on your definition. Yeah, to answer your question. 33 and 32. So yeah, these are some newer models, so the, the there's far fewer fucking mold lines. Well done, Games Workshop. Uh, I have 10 headless dwarfs. Headless these are iron breakers. I've decided I that I'm just going to be frustrated painting. And like, even if they... I wanted to try it. Oh, you know what I wanted to show and tell, and I totally forgot until just now? Oh, are you going to do it, Rich? I'm going to do it. 33. I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> Don't pull it out. I'm that. gonna pull it out! No! Don't do it! Oh, uh, Mike, was your first the guy with the spear or the guy with the sword? Remember? Okay. 33. Uh, it was the sword. I thought it was like a club. It's like a, it's like one of those uh, clubs that have to- The chattel with spikes, yeah. yeah, it was that one. That was my first one. And then I tried this one. Is Sunset rubbed down Canadian, Derek? Uh, I think that the lead singer, singer and writer of... Charlord4 is asking, do you mean the Canadian band? I believe that they were Canadian. Well, um, there you one, Somebody one knows the, about your band. My oh, favorite oh, um, indie band is Sloshy. Look them up. I will not. Look them up. You can't make me. You don't me. even really uh, care. Mm. You don't even really care yes. about ya. Uh, they were a Canadian art rock music group from Montreal. Uh, oh, sure. Specifically, the, it was a solo project for Spencer Krug of Wolf Parade, for those of you who knew Wolf Parade. They're, they're a little bit much more well-known. 35, 36, knowledge. 36, I need 35. These were the first minis we ever painted. Oh, nice show and tell for topic, Rich. Do you want to swing the camp, maybe, like, just... Yeah. Oh, around. no, my terrible cold one. How, where the hell did that come from? It's there, it's over there. The terrible cold one. Oh my god, that takes uh, me back, man. So, you can see my dwarves here. It's obviously a sloppy mess. But, uh, the very first miniature that I ever painted was this guy right here. Fantastic. Uh, it is March or April 2006, I think. Yeah. And uh, I had a Dwarf Battalion box. This is the tail end of 6th edition. 
Warhammer Fantasy. I think that looks pretty good for like not knowing what the fuck I'm doing. Um, I got a little cannon here. And so all of these models are now usable in this game. I could put this cannon down on, on, a, on, a, on a, a, an actual base and give him a little crew. I painted a little crew in here. This one of my favorites. Oh my He's got a big barrel. He's bald. Um, it's all those ugly and it, bald men? And it's legal. This was Mike's first mini that he ever painted. Oh yeah. That is a Saurus warrior. That is a from Saurus the, warrior. From the lizard men. And I was a fool and didn't realize that Saurus warriors did not have motley crew, so I painted also one with spears, not realizing that I had to choose one or the other. Wow, you idiot. I know. So you got a spear one here. Yeah, I also did a spear variation. I didn't realize how it worked. And then our buddy Snacks painted a couple Skaven, and oh, he yeah. just, for some reason, he never took them home, and we just kept them. Yeah, look, those are a clan Eshen, Eshen. assassins, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. Clan Eshen. Here's one with like a crazy like dagger sword and a shuriken. Yeah, he's got one bet box of Clan Eshen, I think. And then Mike tried to paint a cold one. Without priming it. Because he didn't prime it. And it, it was like so shit. dark. That's funny. That he couldn't get the green to really show up, like not super dark. Yeah, it's better than I thought. And I the yellow remember, looks, actually. you know, yeah, it looks like shit. It looks like fucking shit. But uh, I think you have a skink here. Yeah, here's your little skink. Yeah. Oh yeah, I actually I painted. Yeah. I painted that skink after uh, the Saurus. I painted a single Thunderer. I don't know why I painted like. I don't know what I was doing. And then I did a warrior with a great weapon. Um, Look at that big old golden beard. Yeah, big old blonde the hair beard. of spun gold. Oh my god, I painted up. I painted a few warriors. I, I had all the primary colors covered. Um, Ooh, just blue and red and green. Uh, and then. We just sort of fell out of it. We didn't really know, like... World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do it. It was really wow. Video games have a, a way of, if you're not careful, consuming all of your other hobbies and everything. Other Time has a way of getting away from you. Yeah. Because of how low effort and energy it is. And it's just easy to get lost in video games. Um... Ragnaros says, love the dwarf Richie for a $5 super chat. Thank, Thank you. you. Zika so virus, $5 super chat. Have you ever thought of making a channel for minis in the Discord so we can see your minis and you can see ours? That's a great idea. Yeah, Do we surprised. not? I, I think that one. we were using we have the a creative, creative channel. We have yeah. a creative channel. And then I was, but the thing one. is that creative has like for, okay, mini painting. But then other tabletop games, do you put the Warhammer stuff there? I don't know. And we run the Discord. I don't know. We can talk about it. I'm open ideas. I don't know. Me too. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. I would, I would not it. mind a mini specific. Me neither. It's because we have a dice specific thing. Well, that's that's here's, what here's what we'll say. Well, we can make a channel. What we often find is that people ask for these channels and then they never get used. Yes. So if it gets, if we make it and it gets used enough, it'll be great. Better. But I, I think what ended up, them. I think what ended up happening is a lot of those channels that we had got melded all into like singular channels because they just weren't used enough. Yep. Yeah. So we'll have to take a look. But yeah, I mean, for now, creative is a great place to put them, uh, and then we'll see if we can get a. Uh, Man, the head. You know, so we get something part. going. The head is the hardest part. Is it? Head's a little difficult. It's because once it sets, that guy's gonna be looking that way for the rest of the <laughs> fucking life. <laughs> see, and that's why. You can yank it here's, off. here's what I'll, here's what I'll I'm, say. I'm yanked. I literally will rip heads no, off. Yeah. Here's why I'm. Here's why I'm crushing these. There's no variation. There's no yes. customization in this. Yes. You it's have no limbs to position nothing. or heads to position. That's right. The limbs that's all right. go in one. They go yeah. one way. Yeah. So I'm able to just cook. That's how war beasts and such usually are. There's you know, but it's uh, infantry. <laughs> you know, looking that way literally for the rest of his fucking life. I hope I do you right. My, my, oh, wow, well, look at this giant Come Mordekaiser on. mace. Holy fuck. Yeah, look this at the guy, size of that yeah, thing. Yeah, this guy is fucking that ready guy to go. Fucks. This guy fucks. He, and he's holding a banner. If he doesn't fuck, then he's leaving yeah. a lot of fucking on the table. I'll tell you. I think it's so cool when your, st your battle standard bear gets killed, you can have someone else in the unit pick it up. Oh, is that true? Or no, a different standard. Maybe not the battle standard. But yeah, your, your guys can pick it All up. Right, which way you want to be looking, bro? What's everyone's favorite moment in Warhammer lore? Um, I, I That's the fuck out of me. I don't know jack shit. There's a lot of really fun stuff. I love the uh, the vampire, the great vampire wars. 
What? Uh, oh yeah, there's like a whole thing. Where Holy there's... shit, that's my favorite moment. <laughs> Do you know anything about the Vampire Wars? I know that there's so, a giant oh, icy polar bear. Boy, I'm a big I fan of you. Big, I'm a big fan of the the Kislev polar bear. I'm a big yeah. fan of the Kislev ice mommy. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of different moments. Uh, what I'll say is I don't know if it's my favorite moment, but very underrated. Uh, I've been looking at for no discernible reason, certainly not Salt Marsh related. I've been uh, devouring the lore <laughs> of say that. the miniature game Dreadfleet. Uh, that Game Wars Workshop made. It's set in the Warhammer uh, world, uh, the world of Warhammer, and it is a naval combat game with beautiful art, beautiful sculpts, great lore, great characters, but the game really sucks, apparently. Uh, um, but I, it. I've been looking into the lore of that and Count Noctilus, and that is has been very fun, and the general vampire coast. Damn. Uh, faction, pirate vampires. What? So, oh, yeah, the whole That's faction. my favorite match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, vampire, vampire, pirate. That's my favorite, favorite part of the Warhammer Forty Thousand War <laughs> just was when Karn uh, the Betrayer betrayed. I'm, a, I'm all about just vampires and ice mommies. Yeah, just, you know, it's hard to beat. Oh, I no, just I want the no, no, no. Please do. No, 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 oh, I need a bag that, that zips. my favorite. Oh. <laughs> yeah, someone said, ah, yes, no connection to Salt Marsh whatsoever. No, 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 no. no. unrelated. No, um, no. I. I love the War of the Beard. You would. Because <laughs> you would, you it's so classic that the elves and the dwarves were just like chill and cool and They gross. were vibing, man. And then it's actually kind of classic and references like real life feuds and shit. Oh, like the Hatfields where, and McCoys or some shit? Yeah, where basically like... Um, uh -oh. Like one of the elves is like, you've got something in your beard, and the dwarves are like, a thousand years of grudges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, <laughs> yeah, like the yeah, elves literally. started the dwarves, literally, and then, and then the dwarves showed up, and they wanted recompense, and they're like, well, fuck you, dwarf, we'll apologize, but we're gonna shave the beard of one of your like cousins. And, and that's like, the worst thing you could ever do to a dwarf. Yeah. And then, so then they did something else, and the elves killed one of the dwarves, and the dwarves killed one of the... And, then and it, it all up, went downhill. And this massive war that basically made the dwarves and the elves, like, hate each other for a time, and just oh generally not like each other, so... Do, is there, like, do we know what the actual slate was? The Or, like, do they yeah, both claim the oh, other yeah. started it, right? There, like, there's a whole timeline of exactly how it all went down. Was it like a down. trade just, dispute or something? Yeah, it was something about something. Like... It's like fucking episode one. Very Phantom Menace, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. hand, you've been really good to me. I'm putting everything away because I don't want to start a third. But look at this fucking guy. Look at this Chad. Look at this Chadorama. Holy shit, he looks fucking great, dude. I'm wow. really, really, really happy with him. Holy shit, He's that so looks good. Fucking fucks. good. That yeah, guy's fucking this guy, this Look guy's at his Mordekaiser, fucks. Fucks. Mordekaiser mace. Look at, look at how, how. Hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 big, yeah, get, let's get the big size of here. And, and get him real close. Get him real fucking close. Yeah, and just get yeah, just jam him up real in there. Real. Let me try. I'm trying to like. There we go. Wow, think, and his rhino about, helmet. Think about being smashed sick. by that guy. I don't want to. You, if you're a normal person, <laughs> every you are liquefying. Is occurring. There's a head on his fucking belt. Can can we compare yeah. him? Can we compare him to a, just a regular dwarf? <laughs> like, like imagine you're a little like dwarf. You're like, like ah, oh, Hey, <laughs> hey, you fuck. <laughs> Oh, oh, let me shit. Yeah, me that's terrifying. Holy shit. I don't know if it's gonna focus. But my, like, my mace is the size of your torso. <laughs> <laughs> Just like gave his head in one blow. Oh, I amazing. am in love with the Warriors of Chaos. I made it so that uh, his uh, corn banner doesn't like perfectly go straight up and down. The little, like, it's like slightly cocked. Yeah. He's looking in this direction for the rest of his life. He's great. Yeah. Meanwhile, here's my standard bear of my Ungor. <laughs> Who are literally the lowest level of, of, being, of being in the Beastmen, who live lives of torment and What's agony. What's my job gonna be? Well, you bear the standard. Hey, 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 hey. That guy <laughs> looks like a pervert. Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's definitely he a looks pervert. A little, I love the model, though. It's oh, yeah, a great no. looking model. I, fucking lo I love the Beastmen, man. I fucking Holy love them. Shit. Wow. That's cool. Um, that where, guy's where should definitely my, a Where should my bros live while we wait to to prime? Because I I've got I'm going to assemble more of these guys on uh, Sunday. Yes. Um. Just leave them here, and we'll find a, a place to. Could, should I put them on the shelf? Yeah. Y uh, the, the model shelf behind you, perhaps. Why don't we put them? Was, ah! 
Oh my god. I just want to make sure this did not drop <laughs> horribly. That's why I'm, I'm worried that they're going to like get knocked over. Put them in this box. Okay, the box of gentle love. Yes, this, this is the box of gentle it. love. Um, do we have anything else? The glue is fantastic. Oh, that yeah. is really, that really That's works. game changer. Beautiful. Basically, I like was hated assembling models when you had the, the little bottle and you'd unscrew it and screw it, and your hands would get every your, your glue get all over yeah, your yeah, hands. Yeah, the glob. Yeah, the, the glob, fucking... and it would get stuck. And like, yeah. oh, we gotta poke it again. The bottles of the fucking. No, you'd have to turn it upside down and yeah. hope that the snot bubble yep. that came out was the correct oh. amount of glue <laughs> yep. every fucking time. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> fucking. Oh, the snot bubble is too big. It's real. Here, I'm no, sorry. you're good. You're, I'm just like I realize I'm not like actually showing anybody anything. Oh. There you go. Sweet. The wolves howl in the night. And you actually see is that uh, your vampire count lady, she has wolf paws wolf for paws. legs. Wolf, wolf. Because she's part of the bloodline. This is an Age of Sigmar only thing. But she's part of the bloodline that basically like, they work like they, they worship like bats and wolves and creatures and rats, creatures of the night, everything that Strahd has. And then they can, they're like, kind of like werewolf vampires. So her having dire wolves is very thematic. Yes. My, my guy doesn't have a name. Oh, you need to name him. Variant. <laughs> <laughs> you already did that joke, Terry. Box. <laughs> That's a very Or <laughs> Variante. <laughs> variante. Um, Let me see, well, let's see what it is, is in Russian, because it's on here in Russian. Where is it? Where did you see Variant? It's right in the middle on the right hand side. No, it's just Variant in Russian, yeah. Is there something funny? No, it's just Variant. Variant. In Russian, it's pronounced Jeff. <laughs> das Variante. Yes, uh, that's a very accurate. Nice job, Dirk. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it was very das Verante. Das Verante. Das you guys are still building stuff. Oh. I'm finishing up this one. I'm finishing and I'm up because we're nearing yeah, midnight. I figure, oh my god, god. Really whenever, midnight? Yeah, whenever you guys are good Holy to go. Shit. Uh, Kelsey probably thinks I'm dead. <laughs> we're just having too much fun. Uh oh. Oh no, I made a mistake. When he's got when he's got the find my phone uh, connection because we do a lot of international travel. So if, if she assumes I'm dead, she at least knows I'm dead here. What is it? The TikTok. <laughs> what is the, amazing? The, holy shit! The TikTok of like, what is he doing when he's not texting you? Or do you know what he? What he do you want to know what he's doing when he's not texting you? Well, look, the direwolf has a little crow on. It. <laughs> oh man, look at that! Oh, look at that! Yeah. Wow. How'd they do that? This glue oh, is a this game is, this changer. Is a, this is a 50 year anniversary joke. Sex can wait yeah. in your pants. This is a 50 year anniversary joke for Dungeons and Dragons, but when Gary Gygax uh, was working on uh, D&D, he was going uh, so frequently to war game and to create the rules, and they were designing the whole thing, and his wife genuinely thought that he was cheating on her. And wow. did the uh, literally the thing that happens in um, uh, Knocked Up, where she drove to and followed him, and burst into the room. Oh, and, and he's playing and, fantasy and football. It was just him playing or fantasy baseball. Yeah, it was, just them, it, it was just them playing a fantasy role playing game. Oh and my god! And she was God. like, "You're not cheating on me." <laughs> <laughs> just D100 table, sweetie. That's funny as fuck. It's a true story. That's right? very Gary funny. Gary Gygax, the cre one of the creators. Uh, there were a few others, to say the least, um, but oh. he's usually the one put at the top of the pyramid for whatever reason. It's, uh, men only want one thing and it's fucking disgusting. Oh, a sick maze! <laughs> 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 look at the standard! Look at the wow! No, I, I, go, I go back to the other meme. Literally me. I, I, I love that, that idea. Mine is more of, they hate how little it takes to make us Yeah, happy. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I fucking love Beastmen! Yeah. Oh shit, these fucking these best of gore, I'm gonna build them with full command! <laughs> this glue is so high quality. Yeah. This I, is I like, don't know if Winnie's watching, but those tacos this morning were fucking unbelievable. I Thank want you so tacos much for those the morning. fucking tacos. I want tacos breakfast tacos morning. or just like you had tacos for she, breakfast? She was just like waking up and she was like, you know what? I'm gonna make some fucking tacos. And she made the taco seasoning fucking from scratch. And wow. she made she she uh, uh, made uh, a black bean like mash with uh, damn, chipotle dude. peppers in it. Okay. And um, uh, lemon, uh, oh shit. Uh, lemon greens topping. And, okay. And uh, hot sauce and cheese. It was fucking banger breakfast. So. Still, I'm still a little on that. God, that sounds good. I'm I am it. so impressed with how 
miniatures have improved in quality oh, it's... when it comes to assembly and just the look and feel of them in the, let me think, 28 years. <laughs> I was I saying, it's, it's probably almost 30 years. <laughs> Wow! Wow! <laughs> in twenty years, that's all it took. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. Yeah. And I, well, yeah. because it was fucking pretty oh, good wow. when I was a 60% kid. Sixty percent of the way done. <laughs> nice. There they are. There they are. They're beautiful. Six of my ten <laughs> dire wolves are done. Eighty-six points you'll have. I need to. Uh, so now I'm, build la I'm lathering up my dragon ogre. Oh, I thought those were Q-tips, but you actually made clay in the shape of Q-tips. I found wooden dowels. Yeah, little, little ones. Really tiny okay. ones. And then I got poster tack. Wooden dowel is my and favorite And uh, for sub-assembly, and basically so I can paint them separately, I have all the heads and shields. I think you should just wear that like a mohawk. <laughs> like, like a dwarf slayer. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna access <laughs> it and it's gonna oh, flick no! it out of <laughs> Never fucking find them. Yeah, they're no! just gone. <laughs> awesome. Um, Jesus, I haven't actually gotten to look at it. I have to text you when I'm alive. I'm gonna pick up one. And just yeah, yeah, go yeah. Ahead, please. Look at these tiny Thanks, little legs. Thanks, gang. No, look at the crow uh, on this guy. Seriously. Oh, the fucking... Look at the crow should, on we, this guy. We should raid somebody. Let's the raid detail's somebody. insane on the crow. Let's raid somebody. YouTube, there's no raid, and it's just, you know, let's see if anyone's playing here. That's such a gooey... Thing. Oh, and the intestines hanging out. I, I just realized how badass these were. Let's see if there's anyone on Warhammer. Players. Yeah, let's see if there's. Let's anyone. see if there's any 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 Warhammer. <laughs> I, I can't see the seams. You did a really good job with the glue. Yeah. So uh, thank you. I I thought about it a lot. I used a little extra glue to see if I could kind of melt the seam you can, together. You can. I know that you guys is. have. I know that we have extra stuff, and I'll probably use that as well. But. Did the the leg come in one piece, or did you also do the paw? Some of them did, some of them didn't. So this some one, of them, I can find one where I did a paw. This one is a paw, I think, right? Let's take the front yeah, right that paw. guy had a paw yeah. separate from the leg. That's crazy. Why would they make the paw separate? I don't know. I don't know. It has to be. It has to do with the molding. It has I'm to sure. Do with the, yeah, the, the mold. Hundred percent, right? Like yeah. there has to be a reason why they did it that way. But like, like one quarter of the legs have to have the paw attached. Weird. Oh, I can well, choose the, the 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 guy that I did first. Variant. His hand <laughs> was in uh, two fingers on one side and three fingers on the right was like a little tiny chunk. Like I had to put his hand yeah, together. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then the mace was two pieces. Yeah, that's weird. Interesting. It's there's a science. I'll tell you. We're gonna raid the Lion Creative or Leon. Leon Creative. creative. I don't, did it work? It did work. Uh, pass on the adventurous love. Go give him a follow. Those of you on Twitch. Yes, on Twitch. On YouTube, YouTube, this is just going to end. Where is yeah. 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 It's yeah. Go to Twitch Spread and the see. love. Yeah, go to Twitch. You have like two seconds to join the raid. Thanks um, for hanging. They're painting some sort of cool like um, like pirate captain on like half and of the And speaking of pirate captain, start over Salt Mars every Monday. Monday. Patreon Monday. Monday. all the way. And, and if you Eastern. are a patron, we'll see you Friday for our movie night. Movie and night. Sunday and Monday. Oh! Holy shit. Yeah, we got a lot of Patreon stuff coming We're up. We're cramming it in. Good night, everybody. Good night, we tomorrow. will see you soon.